Daddy. But ever since we last said goodbye to Lesser Lord Kusanali, we haven't heard anything from her. Oh, we can't just keep waiting around like this. Let's go find Catherine and pick up some work so we can at least keep ourselves busy. Add Astra Avisosk. We meet again, you two. Hi, Catherine. Do you have any commissions for us today? Commissions, huh? Hmm. Let me think. Oh, how about this? Please attend the Academia's Academic Symposium this afternoon and recite a love poem on stage. Uh, wait. Say what now? And if possible, please also use your camera to capture the reaction of the audience upon finishing the poem. Huh? What kind of commission is that? I see. It appears that you're not interested in this commission. In that case, please go to Port Armos and convince the Eremites there to spend some time volunteering at the local orphanage. Hey, that's not any better. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the mercenaries will have some interesting reactions as well. Uh, Paimon's gotta ask. Just who exactly has been submitting these commissions to the Adventurers Guild? Oh, the commissioner? Hmm, well, actually, I just wanted to see the two of you in action. <laughs> Was it so obvious? I was hoping you would actually take one of those commissions. That kind of chance to observe humans doesn't come by often. Ah, so it's Nahida. I just knew Catherine wouldn't crack those kinds of jokes. When did you get into her head? <sighs> From when she said, add Astra Adasosk. So it's been you this whole time? <sighs> Are you done resting up, Nahida? Yes. I've been sleeping ever since we parted ways, and I even had a really, really long dream. It was another dream about the Subzerus Festival, except it was a happy one. In my dream, I was sitting in the middle of a flower terrace, and everyone in Sumeru City was holding hands as they danced in circles around me. They danced round and round, and everyone looked really happy. I also got to sit on a gigantic flower carriage. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, raised me really, really high above the ground. And I was throwing an endless amount of Yalda candies at the children. You know, Nahida, maybe your dream is how the Subzerus Festival really should be. It's meant to be a joyous time where everyone gets together to celebrate your birthday. Huh? Wasn't I describing a really happy dream? Why are you both looking at me like that? Wait... Could this be an example of the emotion known as pity? No, no! We are pitying you! That would only make everything worse. We just don't want you to feel too sad. By the way, have you had a chance to visit Dunyarzad? How's she doing? The Homiyanis haven't allowed any visitors after the festival, so we haven't been able to check on her. Yes, I paid her a visit right after I woke up. She was resting at the time. Her condition is stabilized. However, since Elazar is a manifestation of the withering on the human body, we can only cure it by finding a way to take care of Ermansalt's own withering. But for the moment, our top focus should still be figuring out what the sages are up to and what they're planning. Right. Who knows what'll happen if they manage to pull off another scheme like the Samsara of the Subzerus Festival. So our first priority should be investigating and putting a stop to the sages' activities. As for how we should pull that off, let's discuss it somewhere else. There are too many adventurers around here. Oh, good point. Uh, sorry, adventurers. We're gonna be borrowing Catherine for a little while. Let's continue our chat here. 
Okay, so do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. But for now, I want to hear your thoughts. No way, that's too risky. You mean, it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. We shouldn't involve innocent students in this. A single mistake could completely ruin their lives. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? That's a good point. Spoken like the god of Temeru! I've already tried that, but all the key members of the Academia, even the core of 30 guards, intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. It seems that from the very beginning, they've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. Of course, it could also be because they're weary of me. Have you already caught the Sage's attention? I'm guessing not yet. But this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. In any case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. We're in the dark as of now. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. After all, Every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. Hmm... Are we really out of ideas? Nahida, you're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense, spill the beans already! According to a popular theory from the Vahumana Darshan of the Academia, Rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal. Okay, okay, but aren't you the god of wisdom? You don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously. Well, I've been thinking that if I can't directly possess the leaders, and if I can't get ordinary people involved, then I should find someone who's already involved, but hasn't decided to side with the sages. You're saying we should recruit a spy? Hmm... That does sound like it could work! Oh! Before coming back, we met someone named Al Haytham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the Academia's back. They probably aren't in cahoots. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? Sataria? Paima remembers now! Isn't she the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia? We ran into her basically every time the sub Festival repeated itself. You could even say we're old enemies by now. Paimon still remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm-hmm. They've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sitaria has always stood out from the crowd. She was born in the desert, and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic gifts allowed her special admission into the Academia, and also gave her the opportunity to serve as the Sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert! She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. The star began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light a part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, the star buried her guilt and closed her eyes. From the sound of it, Sitaria's just hung up on the research opportunities here. 
But she doesn't really support the academia. She still feels guilty about not doing more for the desert, right? She's just running away from her problems. Indeed. When they are presented with complex moral issues, many people will simply plug their ears and go with the flow until the problem can't be fixed anymore. She's suppressing a lot of guilt, but before she realized it, she had already become the sage's accomplice. She can't deny her part in their schemes anymore. Right. We must somehow make her face her problems again. That way, not only can we get useful intel from her, but she can also use it as an opportunity to redeem herself. From my past observations, Sitaria will take a day off from the Academia every ten days to do some shopping in the city. Tomorrow afternoon just happens to be a shopping day for her. That'll be our chance. To prepare, let's go check out some of her favorite spots and have a quick chat with a few of the vendors there. This should be Sataria's favorite fortune-telling spot. Uh... So should we ask the fortune-teller about Sataria? No, I already have enough information on Sataria. The most important thing now is for you to pay attention to the vendor's talking style and key characteristics. Talking style and key characteristics? My poor lost lambs. Have you become troubled over your fates? The divine voice of wisdom often echoes between mine ears. If thou be blessed today by the gods, I may be able to show you the way. Huh? Really? Nahida, you've been whispering things to her? Shh! <clears throat> My friend here has some doubts regarding her future. Can we get a fortune reading for her? Hmm... <laughs> of course, of course! In that case... <laughs> uh -huh. It would seem that Harut and Marut are quite wary of you. Perhaps, at some time in the past, you have somehow offended the gods. Mocking the god of Animo, questioning the lord of Geo's financial savviness, and brawling with the god of Electro. Do those count? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Go on, pick an aspect for her to divine. Health prospects. No problem at all. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> The gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. Your life shall continue on for... For... Huh? Many, many tens of thousands of years? Impossible. Harut, Marut, did you two spoil my divination? I've never read a fortune so absurd. Uh, actually, Paimon thinks this is probably the most accurate fortune-telling you've ever done. <clears throat> I admit that the orientation of today's celestial matrix is, uh, suboptimal. As such, there will be no charge. Is that so? Well, that can't be helped. If you were to bring some food offerings for Harut and Marut on your next visit, Perhaps they could help you reverse the wheels of fate. I've never seen Harut and Marut be so wary of anyone. Is this another one of Sataria's favorite stalls? Yep, it belongs to a king. His father helped Sataria a lot when she first moved to Samari City, so she still comes by whenever she has time. When I start talking with him, 
Listen carefully to the details of our conversation. Ah, dear customers. Would you like to look at some pottery? We caught wind of your great craftsmanship, so we specifically came to take a look. Oh, I recognize you. Aren't you Miss Catherine from the Adventurer's Guild? <laughs> Sounds like I'm in for some big business. Speaking of, where did you learn this trade? I suppose you could say it all started with my dad. He's a mason by trade, but I picked up an interest in clay while apprenticing for him. After that, I began making pottery by myself in secret. And I simply changed trades when my works turned out well. Although it's a pity that I'm no longer making much use of the knowledge provided to me by the Akasha. That's nice! You're making a living doing something you love! Hmm... So is your father still working as a mason? Oh no, not anymore. A few years back, he fell from a roof and broke his leg. Since he had already saved enough mora over all these years, he's just enjoying the retired life in Port Ormos nowadays. I see. We wish him peace and happiness in his retirement. I'll have someone in charge of logistics at the guild come by another day for some goods. We'll leave you to it. Take care now. No problem. Rest easy, all our goods are sure to meet your every need. This should be our final stop. Sitaria is always thinking of this restaurant when she's working at the Academia. So she always comes by whenever she's out in the city. Nahida, you've really thought of everything! <laughs> it's my duty to protect Samira's citizens, after all. Hi there. I feel like I've seen you down by the docks before. Huh? Sorry, I don't quite remember. If I recall, you were having a discussion with someone about shipbuilding at the time. Ah, oh, that's right! I've always been really interested in feats of marine engineering. After all, I grew up in Liyue Harbor and spent my entire childhood staring at the ships going in and out of the port. I came to Sumeru to study, but failed to make it into the academia due to my lack of talent. But, I'm still discussing all kinds of problems with different scholars, and I'm continuing to study and perform research from the restaurant's basement. I'm sure I'll get to the academia after their next round of exams. What an admirable spirit for learning! Amazing! Uh, sure, but you'll find hardworking people wherever you go. So this restaurant has a basement as well? Huh, first I've heard of it. That's right. It's not usually open to patrons. Most of the time, employees use it for breaks or to hold private events. I see. Guess that makes sense. Well, good luck with your studies, Miss Chishan. <laughs> Thank you so much. As long as I can make it into the academia as an official student, I'll be happy. So, was that everybody? Mm hmm. Three familiar faces should be enough for Sitaria. Uh, what's the point of all the information we've collected? Nahida, you still haven't told us how you're planning to make Sitaria face her problems. Sitaria is already used to avoiding her problems, so we must find a way to break through her usual sensibilities. I remember that you mentioned that the Aramites in Port Ormos are all making a fuss about the upcoming resurrection of the Scarlet King. Although it's all just a boatload of nonsense, the faith of her homeland may turn out to be Sataria's soft spot. Oh, Paimon gets it now! You want to take advantage of the guilt Sataria feels about her homeland! Although she knows she should return home to help the people of the desert, all she's done is conspire with the sages! Hmm... So, how 
how do we set that up? Well, the Scarlet King is long gone, and Sitari is also too smart to fall for any simple tricks. If we simply engaged her under the guise of the Scarlet King's believers, she would definitely be weary of us, and we may not get anywhere. But, if we were to borrow some of her close acquaintances to talk with her, her reaction would probably be very different. So, you mean you're going to possess those people we just talked to? Yep. Possess them through the Akasha. Imply that they've already converted to the faith of the Scarlet King. And then convey our made-up will of the Scarlet King. As long as everything goes smoothly, we'll get through to Sataria for sure. She'll never guess that we had anything to do with it. Ah, so that's how you're going to use all the info we collected on these people. It's so that you won't slip up and break form. Possessing them will only work if you can manage to pass off as them. Exactly. So, best of luck with impersonating them. Huh? Best of luck? But we don't know how to possess anyone. That's no problem at all. I'll just share all their senses with you once I've possessed them. As long as you're also wearing an Akasha terminal, the effect will basically be as if you've possessed them yourself. Huh. That is pretty convenient. But why does she have to do this? Can't you do it yourself? Although I've been observing humans for a while, I've never been good at imitating them. Hmm. You're not wrong. It's always been painfully obvious whenever you try to pass as Catherine. Uh, if it was at all possible, I would have preferred to leave these people alone. But seeing how things are now, I probably should just accept it and push on. Yeah, don't beat yourself up over it. We're only doing this to help everyone, and we'll only be borrowing them for a little while anyway. All right, then let's give it a go tomorrow afternoon. Oh, here she comes. Satori is here. Let's quietly follow her. Once she starts talking to her acquaintances, we'll find a safe spot to begin possessing them. As for how we'll sway her to our side, I'll leave that to you. I trust you'll know what to say. Paimon's starting to feel kind of nervous. Okay, let's go. Looks like they've already started talking. Let's find a hiding spot and get started. That's right. You really can't force anything when it comes to love. And besides, everyone around me has a very different background and outlook. Uh, are you still listening to me, Nabia? Oh, of course I'm listening. You were talking about troubles with your love life, right? I heard everything you said. Uh, okay then. You just seemed a little distracted for a moment there. Strange. Your cats seem pretty worked up. Is something wrong? I always thought they were quiet, happy kitties. Oh, what are their names again? Ah, oh, that's right. They are just little darlings, aren't they? Harut and Marut. Ahem. <clears throat> so... Which fortune do you want me to read for you today? You must have come for another echo of the Divine Voice of Wisdom. Hmm... I'd like to get another reading on my love prospects, but to be perfectly honest with you, I feel like I've been a real mess recently. A mess? Well... Um, could you do a reading on how long it'll take me to finish my current project at work? I really just want to get it over with. I hear you. No problem at all. Uh, the gods will reveal the truth. Um...
The gods are asking. Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Why haven't I gone... home? Do the gods really know everything I've been thinking about? Sitaria, why don't you just go home? It's a demand now instead of a question. Oh, the gods seem to be truly upset. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I know I failed the gods. Please pass on my most sincere apologies and ask for their divine forgiveness. And, if I may ask, Nabia, is there a specific god who's speaking to you right now? Hmm. What an inconsiderate and naive question. The god who is speaking to me is, of course, the wisest and mightiest of all. The Scarlet King. The S Scarlet King? No wonder he would make such a demand of me. Oh, wait a second. The Scarlet King passed away a long time ago. Even though news of the Scarlet King's resurrection has been spreading like wildfire, it's all just a misinformation campaign from the Academia. How can the Scarlet King still exist in real life? What insolence! I am the Scarlet King's most loyal believer. Do you wish to refute his voice of wisdom? Oh, no, no. As a child of the desert, I am only reveling in his power upon learning that his divine glory has touched even this city. <sighs> I will think very carefully about his demand of me. I'm sorry. I must go now. Uh, wait! She just ran off in a hurry. She looked pretty upset, too. Well done. Sitaria didn't seem to suspect anything amiss. To have something she's been trying desperately to avoid show up out of nowhere and berate her, that must have shaken her to the core. Aw, Nahida. It seems like you understand human emotions really well after all. All I know are some abstract Haribatot theories. In any case, my time with you has shown a lot of them to be utterly useless. I'm still trying to make sense of everything. Anyway, enough of that. Let's hurry and catch up to Sataria. Got a keep now, right on cue. Let's get ready to possess him right away! It's okay. I just got caught up in something. Oh, actually, didn't you ask me to help you look for work? What kind of work were you looking for again? Oh, right. Your old man's craft. How could I forget? Speaking of, how's he doing? Is he feeling any better? Oh, that's good to hear. I have been thinking a lot about him. If I could get some more time off, I'd love to pay him a visit. Actually, while we're talking about him, is he still living in Port Ormos? Yeah, he's been retired there for a while. If you could find the time, please write him a letter. Please pass on that recently, faith in the Scarlet King has taken root in Port Ormos, and has begun to spread across Sumeru. He has a quick temper, and has always been a devout follower of the Denjiro Archon. I don't want him to get into a fight with those Scarlet King believers because of a difference in beliefs. Oh? So, who are you siding with in all of this? The Academia or the Scarlet King? Uh, I... <sighs> I'm so jealous of you. You were born a child of the desert. Yet you chose to betray the Scarlet King. And now you spend all your time with those crooks from the Academia. Akeem, you don't mean you've also become a believer of the Scarlet King? What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise Scarlet King? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? C can't pick a side? Me? 
Whoa! Paimon had no idea you'd be so good at this! You really zeroed in on the issue and put it right in front of her. It might feel a bit overwhelming for Sataria. But once everything is over, I'll be sure to pay her a visit to her mind and explain everything. Anyway, let's keep going. Come on! Satoria's already started talking with Shishan! So, Shishan, have you noticed anything weird in the city lately? Like, as if someone was trying to preach to you about something? Wait, did you just say attic? I thought this place didn't have an attic. Also, don't you usually study in the basement? Uh, well, the restaurant recently added an attic. <laughs> I've been studying there because it has better lighting. <laughs> oh, right. Speaking of strange things, I celebrated the Subzerus Festival so many times that I lost count. That was really weird. Wait, how could you be aware of that? That should be impossible. Nothing in the report indicated anything like that. Are you still failing to realize that the Academia's lowly tricks could never deceive all of Sumeru's citizens? Shishan, uh, uh, don't tell me that you've converted to the Scarlet King as well! What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of the Scarlet King. In reality, shouldn't you be the one who is ashamed? You, who worked side by side with the Academia, and treated people as nothing more than experimental subjects? Please, please stop! Even now, Satari is still trying to run from her problems. She can no longer justify everything to herself. Hey, she's trying to talk to the guards! What should we do? This is the most important part of all. Quick, get ready. Mercenary, you're a member of the Corps of Thirty, correct? Please help me pass a message to the Matra right away. The situation in the city is getting out of control. Please, try to remain calm, miss. Tell me what's happening in the city. Heretics are infiltrating the city, and they've already converted many residents to their side. Heretics? What kind of heresy are you talking about? The Scarlet King! Many people I know have suddenly started believing in him, but he's long dead. It's impossible. Miss Sataria, nothing is impossible. Y you know my name? The Scarlet King is immortal, and all who defy him will one day pay the price. You must face the truth, Sataria. You tread a treacherous path, and the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become, and the deeper you will be ensnared. Child of the Scarlet King, never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise Scarlet King? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of the Scarlet King. Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Seems that no matter where I run, I only keep finding more believers of the Scarlet King. I have to say, this is a familiar feeling. I've also been running from my guilt this whole time. Guilt over my part in the Sage's plans, and from ignoring the letters from the children of my homeland. But no matter how much I may try to ignore or get rid of it, my guilt always comes back. You won't necessarily lose your research opportunities by facing the truth. Besides, did you really want to conduct your research while carrying such heavy feelings of guilt? <sighs> How do you know me so well? Are you truly just a believer of the Scarlet King? Or are you the god himself? 
That's not important. The important thing is to pass judgment on the Academia and its sages, and to correct their mistakes. If you could provide some assistance in this matter, perhaps it could serve as a form of atonement. I've actually never believed in the gods, but I've always believed in serendipity. Your appearance must be a fated opportunity for me to get out of this wretched situation. Please tell me, what can I do for you? <clears throat> How much do you know about the Sage's current activities? I was just one of the designers for the Mast Dream Harvest Scheme, which is what happened around the Subzerus Festival. But I know very little about the full scope of the overall project. I'd assume that only staff with the highest clearance would have access to those confidential documents. I've just been working to meet the Grand Sage's specified requirements. However, there's something that's been really bothering me. I heard that a scholar who was previously expelled has returned to the city, and even the sages are still quite wary of him. To fight against the Academia, we will need to figure out the nature and the purpose of their work. Is there a way for us to get access to the confidential documents you mentioned? It should be possible if we're willing to take some risks. After all, I'm an assistant to the Grand Sage, and I've been working on many tasks outside of the project. One thing, though, I won't be able to transfer the documents to you through the Akasha once I get my hands on them. The Sages have always closely monitored all activities within the Akasha. Um, let me see... Uh, let's use the most primitive method. Send someone to pick up the documents tomorrow evening at the Academia entrance. The Academia entrance? Wouldn't that be too conspicuous? Don't worry about that. I assure you, this won't be a trap. I'm only suggesting this location because it'll draw more scrutiny for me to leave the Academia again. It'll be safest for me to distract the guards long enough to hand you the documents. Alright, I trust you. So, uh, if I were to successfully complete this task, would it mean I've atoned for my wrongdoings? Um, that'll depend on the judgment of the Dendro Archon. The Dendro Archon? That's right. Her people are the ones we have endangered. As the God of Wisdom, she's also the one responsible for judging and guiding the scholars. Maybe it's time for me to find a god to believe in. Just as Nahida predicted, we've managed to bring Sataria to our side! The Traveler's execution was ingenious. She's the one who deserves all the praise. Well, now that we've made plans to meet again tomorrow evening, all we can do is pray for Sataria's mission to go off without a hitch. Pray? But if we're going to pray to the gods, aren't we just praying to you? God of Wisdom and Guardian of the Scholars? Mm -mm. No, no. The truth is the true guardian of scholars. I've always believed that. Anyway, let's meet again tomorrow evening at the Adventurer's Guild. Catherine, we're here! Oh, um... You are the other Catherine, right? That's right. I suppose I'm the other Catherine in your mind. We're on a secret mission tonight, so we need to protect Catherine's identity. Yep, Paimon's right. We cannot fully rule out the chance that the meetup tonight is just a trap. If something were to happen, my existence may be the only trump card we'll be able to play. After all, the Academia should still be unable to confirm the existence of my consciousness in the outside world. Yep, yep, exactly just what Paimon was thinking. Anyway, enough about that. Let's just make sure to be on our guard. Off? What do you feel is off? It's the middle of the night. Of course it's quiet. You're not getting paranoid, are you? No, I think she's right. It really is a lot quieter than usual. If you look around, there seems to be fewer people on the streets. I'm not sure if this is the case for the entire city, though. Huh. Maybe it's just a coincidence. 
Maybe Sataria figured out a way to not only distract the guards, but also to get everyone to go to sleep early, just so we can exchange the documents in peace. I also can't quite figure out why things feel a little off. But now that we're here, let's go ahead and meet her as we planned. Well, regardless, as long as you're here with us, Paimon feels a little safer. be this quiet in front of the academia and that Sataria managed to distract all the guards. triumphant hero returns at last. And to a rather spectacular welcome, even if I do say so myself. You're the outcast, expelled from the academia. Indeed I am. Although these days they tend to call me the Doctor. <laughs> if you're looking for your researcher friend, she has already been taken into confinement. With some basic caution, she could have discovered the listening device on her person. Clearly, she lacks the degree of rigor expected of a true scholar. The people of Samir City! What have you done to them? I simply made some minor adjustments to their Akasha terminals. Now they can deposit information directly into the subconscious. As you can see, all these lovely people now believe this traveler is a hero who has just saved the world. <laughs> My experiment is a success. And now it seems they can no longer hold back their sheer adoration. No, what should we do? These are all just regular people. Leave now. You need to get out of here. What? That guy's a Fatui Harbinger! We can't just leave you here! Nor can I abandon the people of Samaru! You appear to have overridden their mental faculties with your own consciousness. To possess such a powerful mind, you must be... the God of Wisdom. about the doctor. Yeah, now that the doctor's in the picture, we're no longer just dealing with the academia. They're in cahoots with the Fatui. But what are the Fatui after this time? Another Gnosis? Yeah, things would be a lot easier with Nahida's help. Nahida said we'll meet again outside of the city. But we can't 
just keep waiting around, right? Uh, you mean... Oh, right! Wasn't he invited by the sages to work on some project when we were staying with him in the Vidya Forest? That has to be the same project! Even though he turned it down at the time, he might still know something. There's no time to lose. Let's go to Gundarvaville. Hold it right there. A blonde-haired traveler and a floating fairy. We've got you, all right. Take a look around. You've fallen right into our trap. <laughs> Are you mercenaries from the Corps of Thirty? Did you come here to arrest us? Core of 30? We're nothing like those government lapdogs who don't even get scraps for their work. We are an elite brigade that commands the highest commission rate in all of Sumeru. We're here on the orders of a client known only as the Outcast. The Outcast? An Outcast from the Academia? But why wouldn't the doctor just send the Fatui after us? <sighs> Still wasting time on idle chit-chat. We'll shut you up soon enough. Get them! Uh, you're up, Traveler! Following order. It's new wind. Uh -huh. yeah. Wind strike! As one with wind and cloud! Come on out! Riptide! Hey! It isn't over yet! Here comes reinforcements! Yeah. <sighs> that was pretty rough. Is that what elite mercenaries are like? Yeah, looks like we'll have to keep our guards up. But this doctor guy seems like a pretty tough opponent. He knew exactly where to set up an ambush. Did he predict that we would try to find Kainari? Ugh, going up against smart people is tough. Anyway, let's keep going. doing back here? Kale! It's nice to see you again! Are you doing alright? I... <sighs> to be honest, I'm not doing too well. My Elazar has been progressing at a faster rate lately. I'm finding it harder to complete more intricate tasks. As a result, Master Tainari is taking me off the patrol schedule. He will only allow me to stay here and coordinate other people's tasks. Tainari, did he go off on patrol? We're here to talk to him. Oh, Master Tainari? You just left the Avidia Forest a little while ago. He was headed to Party's DI. Huh? He left? What? Isn't Tainari always saying that he never wants to leave the Avidia Forest? He even turned down the Sage's invitation. I thought it was weird too. Master Tainari always prioritizes his work as a forest watcher above everything. He almost never leaves his post. He left in a hurry this time, though. No, I only found out that he left through a message he left behind. He also made sure to delegate all his tasks using a schedule. <sighs> to leave in such a hurry? I guess he had something urgent to take care of. Hmm. Master Tainari originally studied in the Amorta Darshan of the Academia, and part of the eye is something like the Amorta's research base. Many rare shrubs and grasses have been planted there for research. 
I know that before you became a Forest Watcher, Master Tainari once spent a long time conducting research at Party's DI. A research base, huh? Gotta wonder what kind of research Tainari just decided to work on all of a sudden. Oh, we don't have a lot of time, so let's go look for him at Party's DI. Uh, don't worry, I'm fine. I'm used to living with Elazar by now. If you run into Master Tainari, Please send him my regards. Got it. Will do. See you later, Kale. Okay, we were so worried about you. Hey, this was supposed to be a touching reunion, but you're ruining the moment. Actually, it's very smart of the Traveler to be wary of me right now. After all, the Doctor has shown that his technology can apparently even control human minds. Plus, it's not like you could have known what happened after we split up and I was facing the Doctor by myself. Even a pool of stagnant water after a torrential storm can occasionally pass as a patch of sky. Hmm. Paimon feels like only the real Nahida could come up with such an obscure analogy. Huh? But I wasn't trying to win your trust or anything. All I wanted was to clarify my point. Well, we understand that point now. Please, Nahida, tell us more about what happened. Are those poor people all right? When you left, I was still in the middle of restoring everyone's minds. Thankfully, when the doctor mentioned depositing information into the subconscious, he didn't mean engraving information into their minds. Instead, he did something closer to creating hallucinations. That was still within my power to fix. Luckily, I managed to finish my restorations and mind jump away from him, just as he was about to capture me. Whew. What a relief. The doctor sure pulled out some hidden cards, but good thing we had Nahida with us. I wouldn't be relieved just yet. I gave away my true identity when I restored everyone's minds, which means we've lost another one of our trump cards. Also... The Doctor is already an expert at modifying Akasha Terminals. Maybe it's only a matter of time until he captures my consciousness inside the Akasha. Would that mean you'd no longer be able to jump between minds? Then how do we stop him? He's still at the Academia, so it's possible he already started messing with the Akasha. Ugh, it feels like he's toying with us. What a nasty piece of work. Plus, the Doctor's combat ability alone is apparently enough to make him worthy of being number two of the Fatui! We shouldn't give up hope just yet. Let's try to find another way to attack this problem. Actually, Nahida, how did you know we were trying to get to Party's DI? Have you been waiting for us? Yes, I have. I can see the Traveler's elemental energy, so I deduced your destination by looking at the direction you were moving in. You didn't come here for sightseeing, right? Did you find any leads? We're looking for a scholar we know. His name is Tainari, and the sages once tried to reach out to him. Why don't you come inside with us and see what we can find? Okay. Let's just hope we won't get him into trouble. Traveler? It is you! Ah! The voice! It's Hapasia! Ah, oh, what a pleasant surprise! It's so nice to see the two of you again. Who's this? She's a scholar we met in the Avidia Forest. When we last saw each other, she was still training in the... Uh... What's it called? Satyavada Life? Oh, I see. That's right, we're old friends. Uh, you've come at just the right time. 
Ever since I've come here, hardly anyone has even talked to me. Papasia, you're way too excited about this. Actually, for you to leave the Avidia Forest means... Oh, you're not in training anymore? Wait, no. Did you already finish your training and reach Pari Porna life? <laughs> what do you think? My consciousness has already managed to make contact with the Divine. Ooh. You did it? Congratulations! <laughs> it's so exhilarating to share this sublime joy with others at long last! When my consciousness made contact with the gods... Ah, uh, what a supreme and unparalleled experience that was! That sounds incredible! Oh, alright. Actually, please wait. I haven't forgotten my promise to you. Remember? I promised to help you understand what you saw from Ermansoul once I gained deeper insights. My current self has not only gained true insight, but I can even help you establish a direct connection to the consciousness of the Divine. You... you can do that? I've never heard of anything like that, but... If you want to give it a try, I'll do my best to protect your consciousness during the process. Hold on. I brought some spirit borneal with me. This is still a crucial part of the ceremony. Uh, we're using that incense again? All right now. Hold my hand. I'll help you establish a pathway to connect your consciousness. Okay. Ready? It took three betrayals for me to finally understand. The world is just an elaborate tapestry of lies. My fury will never be quelled. The first to betray me was a god, my creator, my mother. Valuing strength above all, she saw no worth in me and I was discarded. The second was a human, my family, my friend. Consumed by fear, he saw me as an abomination. The third was one exactly like me. A hope for the future. A fledgling barely out of the nest. Powerless before his mortality, he broke his promise to me. Humans, they can't be trusted. And the gods fill me with pure loathing. So I said good riddance. <laughs> I denounced the world and laugh in its face. <laughs> My chest will never again be defiled by worldly filth. I will scrub away every last trace of human emotion. Then it will be empty, a blank slate, and ready to receive a supreme gnosis, brimming with pure divinity. <laughs> <laughs> there is no need to fear. The pain will be brief. Your era is coming to an end. Sublime emotion! 
Alas, shame. If only... If only that which beats within my chest wasn't a filthy mortal heart. Oh, great and merciful God! Please grant me forgiveness and salvation! Do you understand now? I'm afraid this is no peri in a life, but rather... Ah! You! Why are you so mean to me? Why is everyone hiding from me? I found divine wisdom. Shouldn't I receive praise and honor? Haven't I uncovered that light in the darkness? Papaya? That's how I always thought everything should be. Wait... Have I... Already lost my mind? The Traveler's back? Nahida was controlling your body for a while. It seemed like she jumped over to you as an emergency measure right before the Catherine puppet was destroyed. After that, Kainari heard the commotion and came over. He helped us defeat the mercenaries and then he ran with us all the way here. What? You swapped places? You mean your consciousness also went into Nahida's body? Wait, then where is Nahida's consciousness? Where is she now? I never imagined that an individual's consciousness could be transferred around like this. Had I not seen it with my own eyes, I would have never believed it. I don't think this can be achieved with current human technology. Also, while we were running, the consciousness in your body told me to pass on a message. She said, The doctor has found a way to trap my consciousness. So I can't journey with you anymore. But even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. <gasps> oh no! He is trapped in the sanctuary of Sora's Donna for good this time! Was that message all she left for us? It's pretty vague. Oh, that makes sense! Since the doctor captured her, she won't be able to say anything without him knowing! She's being extra careful. Even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. Huh. Paimon knows the moon illusions and lies are from that alchemical divination at the Subzeru's festival. Didn't Nahida use a starlight analogy before? It had something to do with Sataria. 
Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Huh. Do you think that Hida was telling us to go find help in the desert? But she isn't with us anymore. Uh, think we'll be okay? Paimon, you said Sanctuary of Suristana. Does this mean that this Nahida you're talking about, the consciousness who was occupying the Traveler's body, is the Dendro Archon? Uh, your guess is correct, but the situation's a bit complicated, so it's really hard for us to explain right now. That's all right. A scholar's curiosity doesn't need to be appeased right away. As for the complicated nature of the situation, safe to say I have witnessed that for myself. I've spent some time with you, and it looks like the Dendro Archon's also on your side, so... I trust you. Thank you, Tainari! Oh, actually, we came here to ask you a question. What do you know about the project that the Sages have been working on? Ah, that... While I was indeed invited to join that project, the Sages were always secretive about its scope and goals, so I eventually declined. All I know is that that project has something to do with the restoration of Ermansoul. Huh? Did you see something when you were in Nahida's body? What? Do you have any evidence? Hmm. Hmm. So that's what happened. That explains why Hypatia's symptoms were different from those of the other scholars who went mad. It's because she made contact with the consciousness of a new god who is still in the process of being born. Tainari, did you leave the Avidia forest because of Hypatia? I did. I noticed Hypatia's mental anomalies, but since her symptoms were rather atypical, I secretly took her to Pardee's DI and began searching for a way to return her to her normal self. If I didn't take action, Hypatia would have already been taken by the Matra to the desert, doomed to a life of exile at Aru Village. Now that you mention it, I knew the Academia has never thought particularly highly of Lesser Lord Kusanali, but... But I still didn't expect them to do something as arrogant as creating a new god. Looks like I made the right decision by not accepting their invitation. The Doctor and the Balladeer. We have two Fatui Harbingers in Sumeru. Sounds like we're in for a bad time. From your description, I don't think they've completed their project. There may still be room for us to intervene. But then... What is the connection between creating a new god and restoring Ermansoul? Yeah, it feels like we're still nowhere close to figuring out the Sage's goals. Right, we've pretty much gone over everything we need to know, so we should head out. How about you, Tainari? What are you going to do? I'll stay here for now. I still want to try a few more things to help Papasia. If you're planning to go into the desert, start by heading for Caravan Rabat. That'll be your fastest route. Come find me here if there's anything else I can do to help. May the Spirit of Wisdom go with you. Thanks, Tainari. Hopefully Hapasia will feel better soon. We're off then. here. So, just past this wall is the desert, huh? Oh, wow. Paima remembers hearing people call this the Wall of Samiel. It's made to block sandstorms from the outside. Oh, if it's this tall, it's gotta be the divine work of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, right? Enough gawking. Come on, follow me. Huh?
Over here. Oh, he's went that way! Let's hurry up and follow him. Wonder what he's up to. Where did she go? Ugh, how did we lose them? They were just here a second ago. More Aramite mercenaries? Who are they working for this time? Ugh, anyway, Traveler, it seems like we were being followed again. You were too careless. You should have noticed those hopeless amateurs trailing you a long time ago. There's no need to thank me. I've never cared to keep track of personal favors. All I did was correct a mistake I happened to come across. It's a habit I developed at the Academia. You really gave Paimon a scare, Al Haytham. We never thought we'd run into you here. Last time we met at Poor Ormos, didn't you say you were going back to the Academia? <gasps> Wait, don't tell Paimon that you're here to take us back on their orders. Oh. So you've already landed yourselves on the Academia's hit list. <laughs> I can't say that I didn't expect it. However, had I wished to turn you over to the Academia, don't you think you'd already be the Eremite's honored guests by now? Oh, right. Um, you do have a point. <laughs> I have no interest in running errands for that project. As a scholar, I've always belonged to the camp that promotes researcher autonomy. <sighs> and these days... You're more fascinating than anything the Sages can offer. Hmm, not quite. To tell you the truth, I'm still investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Unfortunately, I've run into some difficulties. Everyone says the capsule originated in the desert and was eventually moved to Port Ormos. If I am to get to the bottom of this, I must understand how the capsule first came to be. Which brings me back to you, and why you're so interesting. The leader of Ainul Ahmar used the Divine Knowledge Capsule right in front of you, and upon seeing him, your expression became perplexed, and you were lost in thought for quite some time. To have that kind of reaction, I think you must have realized something. Are you interested at all in sharing what you've been hiding from me? Oh, hey, Thum. You really have a ridiculous eye for detail. What kind of person even notices or remembers stuff like that? So that's your answer. <laughs> well, I do work for the Academia after all. So considering that, it is indeed wise to keep your cards close to your chest. But that does prove you do have some undisclosed information about the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Am I right? <sighs> no matter. Rather than simply learning the answers from you, I'd still prefer to investigate on my own. Speaking of, you two are also headed to the desert? That's right! We have the same plan as you! But we don't really have any concrete goals at the moment. Then I'd suggest starting with Aru Village. It's the largest settlement in the desert, so it'll probably have more resources and intel than anywhere else. Well, would you like to head there together? It's always better to travel with someone you know. Let's go! Before us lies Aru Village, the safe haven of the desert folk. Whoa, this landscape is really something else. What a cool place! Let's go check it out!
sign. <laughs> Unless my memory fails me, we have barely spoken two words to each other before now at the Academia. Would you care to enlighten me as to when and how I invited the General Mahamacha's wrath? Oh, Haytham. Do not think you can escape my judgment just because you managed to escape my attack. <laughs> judgment? So that's how you'd characterize your actions here, is it? Or would elimination perhaps be a more accurate description? Had I used my full strength, not even this traveler would have been able to stop me. Though styled like an assassination, I sought only to ensure that my target would be unable to flee or resist. Standard practice for the Matra, as well you know. Seemed to me more like your own personal touch. Uh, who, who is that, Alhatham? Did you call him General Mahamatra? Yes. General Mahamatra Sino. Head of all the Matra at the Academia. He's a formidable hunter, and the ultimate nightmare for any who have committed academic crimes. You seem to have placed a lot of trust in all Haytham, to the point of blocking an attack for him. If I were you, I'd never choose to side with him. I wouldn't believe a single word that comes out of his mouth. I have been pursuing this scribe for a long time. I urge you, stand back and do not seek to defend him any longer. Otherwise, there will be consequences. Has Alhatham done something wrong? Hyman doesn't think he's as bad as you've made him out to be. I won't waste my breath explaining things. Alhatham, I saw it during our fight. Take it out. The Divine Knowledge Capsule you're hiding on your person. Unless you want me to retrieve it for myself. Hmm. <laughs> Very perceptive of you. Nothing escapes Amatra's senses. Wait! The Divine Knowledge Capsule? Didn't it fall into the Matra's hands in Port Ormos? No wonder you speak with such confidence, Sino. But I must admit... I'm very curious. What does this capsule mean to you? And why, as General Mahamatra of the Academia, are you all alone in the desert? As far as I'm aware, the other Matra have been speculating about your disappearance. Have you been given a mission that's, let's say, morally dubious? If I was the real target of your mission, what was stopping you from simply using your authority and resources to judge me within the walls of the Academia? I should have known you'd be difficult to deal with. You two! Ugh. What should we do, Traveler? Paimon feels like we can't trust either of them! Ahem. <clears throat> well, look at you two, acting all tough and self-righteous over there. Wait, do you? Great! Finally, someone that we can trust! You gotta help us out here, otherwise these two are gonna start fighting again! Yeah, sure looks that way. Two giants from the Academia duking it out once and for all. Not something you get to see every day, that's for sure. Listen, I know you academic types love to fill up your big brains with self-righteous morality and lord your empty rules and virtues over each other. But how dare you bring your petty disputes into the safe haven of Aru Village? It seems like someone's gonna have to beat some sense into your thick skulls until you finally learn to respect these grounds. <sighs> hey, did either of you hear a word I just said? Another sandstorm? What's up with these recently? Hey! All of you, over here, quickly! We have to take cover! Someone's calling for us! Oh, this wind is too strong! Let's get over there! That sounded like Candace. Ah, come on, you two! Jeez, are all of you academia folks such hard work? Move it! Alright, stop yelling. 
Sardines with three people who want to tear each other limb from limb? <laughs> sure, why not? Sounds fun. Uh, the air is so thick and heavy. Paimon can hardly keep floating anymore. My sincere apologies, everyone. This is the home of our village chief. I will have to ask you to make do with this small room until the sandstorm dies down. Please, let me introduce myself. I am Candace, protector of Aru Village. Savior has come at last! Nice to meet you, Candace. The name's Paimon. Thank you so much for helping us. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. It's only right to help each other when the weather gets rough. Wow. She's so gentle and caring. Like a nice older sister. I'm like those guys over there. All right. Now that we're all better acquainted, we should return to the topic at hand. As a guardian charged with the responsibility to protect my fellow villagers from harm, I was observing your conflict from afar, even before the sandstorm started. And now that you have set foot within our village itself, it is all the more my responsibility to make absolutely sure that you pose no threat whatsoever to us. So please, have an honest and sincere conversation with one another, and put your hostile feelings to rest. If anyone dares to start anything again while they are under this roof, I will not hesitate to send them out for some quality time with the creatures of the Sandstorm. Oh! Uh, on second thought, Paimon may have misjudged Candace's character. Hm. And that goes for you too, Miss Dia. Do I make myself clear? <sighs> All right, we got it, Candace. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, which of you will begin? I was supposed to be a mediator, but uh, I might have gotten a little too involved just now. Anyway, one of those two should probably start talking. Wait, that was you trying to be a mediator? <sighs> I have nothing to hide, so there's no shame in explaining myself. While all Haytham wasn't wrong about the other Matra not knowing my whereabouts, it's not because I've been assigned a morally dubious mission. Rather, I've chosen to exile myself. Huh? Exile yourself? A little while ago, I discovered that there was data missing in the Academia's project planning and development files. What little they did report clearly did not match the project's actual progress. As General Mahamatra, I had the responsibility and authority to request an audit. However, to my surprise, the person responsible for the erroneous data was none other than Grand Sage Azar himself. I tried to investigate the issue myself before submitting a formal audit request, but I soon found that all leads and potential pieces of incriminating evidence were carefully concealed from me. I began to realize that they were cautious of me from the very beginning. Unsurprisingly, the Grand Sage rejected my audit request as soon as the submission reached his desk. He even said to me, The power of the General Mahamatra is granted by the Sages. You have no right to judge us. Hmm. So they really are up to no good. I realized then that to the Grand Sage, the Matra are nothing more than tools for the Sages, to assert and maintain their control over knowledge. The vows that we took, the principles that we strive to uphold, they are meaningless to the Academia of today. I believed it would be wise to flee the Academia before the Sages had a chance to take action against me. This way, they can no longer see nor predict my actions. I will never give up on this investigation. There's no need for someone else to give me power or authority. 
Once I find the truth, I will administer judgment by my own name. Sino seems to have the same goal as us. We're all investigating the sages. Plus, now that he's no longer the General Mahamatra, he somehow feels a lot less scary. Well, Sino, if that's your story, then why did you see all Haytham as a target? When I was investigating the matter in the academia, I overheard a conversation between all Haytham and a sage. The sages asked you to investigate a blonde-haired traveler. Do you dispute this, all Haytham? Like many parts of the project, this assignment was undocumented. Now throw in your suspicious behavior with the Divine Knowledge Capsule, and I think we deserve an explanation. Hmm. Yes. I was indeed tasked with investigating the Traveler. I hate them! After all, the promised reward was so great that hardly any scholar could have refused. The Sage told me, once you've completed this assignment, I can give you a glimpse of divine knowledge. A most enticing offer. Unfortunately, those academics don't know me at all. Their words contained one key piece of information, namely that divine knowledge indeed exists. That gave me all I needed to know. From my perspective, the sages are far from trustworthy. Think about it. Isn't it a little strange they're so willing to share divine knowledge with anyone, even as a reward? So, I began my own investigation following the lead of the divine knowledge capsule. In the end, I realized my wisdom in committing to this rather than collaborating with the sages. Had I been less guarded, I probably would have ended up like that Ainul Ahmar mercenary, incapable of remaining sane for long enough to hold a conversation. You mean... That the sages originally planned to dispose of you, using one of those capsules that drive people insane? I'd already given up on the assignment by then. I only told the Academia I was waiting in Port Ormos for you to appear so they wouldn't suspect anything. So it came as quite a surprise when I encountered my erstwhile target while investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Criminals do love to talk about coincidences. Even though I ran into the Traveler by chance, I had no intention of providing assistance to the Academia. Also, you should remember, you were the ones who decided to follow me and strike up a conversation after I left that tavern. That's true. Oh, Haytham helped us out at Caravan Rebot as well. Maybe he's telling the truth. I'm willing to apologize, if that's worth anything to you. I took the Divine Knowledge Capsule behind your back because I judged its existence to be a significant risk. I felt that it would be best for no one to interact with it before it had been properly studied. <laughs> After all, curiosity often proves to be the most dangerous thing in this land. You should be well aware, Scribe Al-Haytham, that curiosity can also lead you to danger and suspicion. Answer me this. Did the Sages share any information about their project with you? Have I not made myself clear? You and I are both distrusted by the Academia. Do you really think they would tell me anything? Fine. Although you haven't completely proven your innocence, I won't regard you as an enemy, for now. As you wish. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm glad to see you two clearing up your misunderstandings. And now you, Dia. I believe it's your turn. Oh, sorry. Whatever the boys were talking about must have been so boring that I spaced out. Ahem. <clears throat> My situation is pretty straightforward. My employer, Dunyarzad of the Homiyani family, is friends with the Traveler and is currently recovering from her illness at home. I had nothing going on, so I decided to return to Aru Village for a visit. I was actually looking forward to a pretty exciting time getting back together with everyone here. But then I saw these two random guys in the middle of a pointless argument. It ticked me off, and things went downhill from there. Is that all? Well, I will admit that definitely sounds like your style. In that case, welcome back, dear. That's more like it. I missed you all so much, Candace. Whoa! What was that sound? No 
need to worry. Now that you're no longer at each other's throats, please make yourselves at home. I'll take a quick trip outside to clear out some of those creatures in the sandstorm. C creatures In the sandstorm? Uh, are you sure you don't want some backup? Fighting in a sandstorm is not for the faint-hearted. Anyone without extensive training in these conditions is at a disadvantage. You needn't worry. Yeah, just leave them to Candace. <laughs> Don't worry, she's as tough as they come. The winds died down. That means the sandstorm's over, right? Candace still isn't back yet, though. Is she alright? Maybe we should go out and check on her. When you put it that way, even I'm starting to feel a little worried. All right, let's go. We've been here long enough, and the boys are as chatty as the floor. Yes. They just keep coming in waves. I've lost count of how many I've defeated. Before I realized it, even the sandstorm had stopped. Ah! Here comes another wave! <laughs> Leave this round to us. I got interrupted earlier, but now I have something to take my anger out on. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've seen the flame main in action. I'll leave these to you, then. I'll be sure to put on a good show. <laughs> Let's go! Into the wind! I'm out of here! Here comes another wave! When are they ever gonna let up? Born my night! See? Pyre, pyre, hand by fire! <sighs> the creatures stopped appearing. Was that the last of them? What we fought just now was probably the aftermath of the sandstorm. So we should be safe for the time being. Well fought, everyone. No injuries, I hope. Ah, my apologies. I haven't had a chance to greet you yet. I had my hands full taking care of the village's elderly and children. I am the chief of Aru Village. Everyone usually calls me Uncle Anpu. Sir, I am also originally from the desert, but I have not been back for some time now. May I ask if such sandstorms are common? I can't say they've always been common, uh, but recently the storms have become increasingly severe and frequent. Besides sandstorms, we also occasionally get earthquakes. Uh, according to an investigator who stayed in the village a while ago, these unusual natural phenomena are related to the withering of Ermensul. Hmm. Another effect of Ermensul's weathering. So, Ermensul's withering causes withering zones in the forest, and sandstorms and earthquakes here in the desert? Everything in the natural world is inextricably connected to Ermensul. These regional symptoms can indeed be a reflection of Ermensul's present state. <sighs> Everyone in Aru Village needs to take good care of themselves. Uh, speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single village keeper since I got here? Village Keeper? Who are they? Village guards like Candace? Does your curiosity know no bounds? Village Keeper is how Aru Village refers to mad scholars exiled here by the Academia. Most of them are scholars who lost their sanity 
after a period of training in the Avidia forest. The Academia believes that their crazed mutterings may have a negative effect on the psyches of other scholars. So, they're forcibly exiled to the desert. Though if you ask me, it's all a boatload of nonsense. Alas, that's exactly what we've been trying to investigate. One by one, the village keepers have been mysteriously disappearing without a trace. But no one in the village has ever seen them leave. If you're planning to stay around the village for the next few days, I'd appreciate it if you could keep an eye out for them. I've had encounters with those people in the past. I'll see what I can do to help. The Matra are the ones responsible for their exile. Now that you're no longer with them, are you trying to alleviate your guilt and atone for your past sins? <laughs> I'm fascinated by how you think. Mock me if you will, but if you are guilty, I will eliminate you, regardless of my position or identity. Oh, you're the former General Mahamatra. You must be an expert in these kinds of investigations. Thank you for your help. Is it because you're reminded of Hapasia? Oh, these poor scholars. First they lose their sanity, now this! We need to help get them back home safe and sound. But, uh, is it really a good idea to tag along with Sino? You seem like you really don't trust him. I'll be grateful for the assistance. No doubt you will do a better job than some of my former subordinates. Let's start by finding a spot to share what we know so far. Although I've sent myself into exile, I'm still doing essentially the same things as before. Do you still have any questions for me before we start our investigation? One of my former subordinates told me that this title has its origins in a strange incident. The Academia has long exiled mad scholars to Aru Village. A mysterious phenomenon exists here. When mad scholars first arrive, they are as incoherent and deranged as before. But, after spending some time here, they invariably begin to calm down. Initially, the people of Aru Village greatly resented having to take in the Mad Scholars. But a strange incident one night changed that. Aru Village was struck by the strongest earthquake in living memory. Seeing buildings on the verge of collapse all around him, the then chief of the village was preparing to take everyone to safety. Suddenly, he noticed a mad scholar crouching in a corner, caressing the ground with his hands. A soft, green light radiated from him, like a divine glow against the backdrop of night. Despite the powerful tremors that ripped through the ground that night, all the houses remained upright, almost as if they had grown roots reaching deep into the ground. In the end, not a single building collapsed, and no one was hurt. After that, the people of Aru Village treated the mad scholars with greater kindness, and began to refer to them as the village keepers. The soft green light? A mad scholar protecting Aru Village? Hmm. What do you make of it, Traveler? Paimon thinks so too. Actually, Sino, do you know if any of the mad scholars continued to wear their Akasha terminals at Aru Village? In theory, they would continue wearing them so the Academia could still monitor their activities. With that said, the main Akasha system would no longer have any interaction with them. Oh, no wonder! Everything makes sense then! Add in the fact that they calmed down, it was probably Nahida who calmed them. If you are able to draw a conclusion from this one story alone, then it appears you possess much more information than I do. So, what do you make of the story? Really? Lesser Lord Kusanali? Hmm. What? You don't believe us? Lesser Lord Kusanali was definitely using the Akasha to give her power to the Mad Scholars! No, it's not so much that I don't believe you. 
I'm just struck by your reasoning. Lesser Lord Kusanali, the current Dendro Archon. Is she really active in Sumeru? The Academia has always placed far greater importance on the late Greater Lord Rukadevata. They've more or less ignored Lesser Lord Kusanali, and I've never had any reason to doubt their views. In addition, I've never heard any stories about Lesser Lord Kusanali and her deeds. To me, she might as well have been a god that never existed. No way! Mahira definitely exists! She's a... How should Paimon put it? She's a good Archon who's kind and wise. Even if she says weird stuff sometimes. I've spent many years interrogating criminals. So I can easily tell when someone is lying. Good! Then you should know that we're telling the truth! That look in your eyes... <laughs> I've never seen that from a liar. You two really must have met Lesser Lord Kusanali. How can this be? To think... Our Archon has been amongst us this entire time. Alright, now it's our turn to put our skills to good use for this investigation. But easier said than done, especially since we don't have any leads. Hmm. Maybe we can start by knocking on some doors. Excuse me, are you here to help me find my grandpa? Huh? Who are you? By the sounds of it, a resident of this village. My name is Isak. You'll help me find my grandpa, right? Is your grandpa a mad scholar? Hey, don't say that. Grandpa is just grandpa. Why do you have to call him that? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. <sighs> the person you're referring to is not a local. Yet you are. Why do you call him Grandpa? Grandpa is just Grandpa. He's my family. I, I heard everything you said to the village chief. Please, you gotta take me with you. I, I wanna find my Grandpa. I, I swear I'll help. I won't be a nuisance. Ah, so you're the one who was eavesdropping on us around the village chief's house. I was planning to go out and take care of whoever it was, but I had a vague feeling that they didn't harbor any ill intent. Whoa! Oh, I even wasn't kidding about Matra having sharp senses. Sino, he's just a kid! All he wants is to find his grandpa! Let's find a way to help him! Sorry, I was only listening in because I wanted to know where grandpa went. Honest. If you don't believe me, you can ask Miss Candace. All right. But first, let's confirm the facts with Candace. Sino is super vigilant. Is this what all the Matra are like? Ah, oh, you're back already. We just wanted to confirm something with you. Do you know a boy by the name of Isak? <laughs> I had a feeling he'd go looking for you. Huh? You knew this would happen? Yes. Although he tried his best to stay hidden, I still noticed him eavesdropping outside the window. He really wants to get his grandfather back. Isak's parents were both Aramite mercenaries who rarely returned to the village after finding employment in the city. He was raised by his grandfather. Unfortunately, it was only a few years before his grandpa passed away. Isak was still very young at the time, so various families in the village took turns caring for him so he could survive. Later, an elderly mad scholar arrived at the village. Isak thought the scholar bore a striking resemblance to his grandfather, and thus often spied on the man. However, the scholar was unkempt in appearance and incoherent in speech. Although Isak referred to the man as his grandpa, he was afraid and didn't dare to approach him. One summer night, the oft mumbling and bumbling grandpa suddenly calmed down and seemed to become more lucid. 
He even noticed Isak hiding in the distance. So Grandpa walked up to Isak and patted him on the head. He even took Isak to the entrance of the village, where he patiently taught the boy the names of the stars and accompanied Isak until he fell asleep. The next morning, Isak woke up and wanted to go find his grandpa again, only to realize his grandpa no longer recognized him. However, even so, Grandpa retained his calm expression. It's said that those who saw the scholar claimed he no longer appeared to be crazy, but appeared to be living in his own world, almost as if he were sleepwalking. Isak was thrilled that his grandpa was able to find peace and would follow him all the time asking him things like, Grandpa, want me to take you somewhere fun? Or, Grandpa, could you tell me stories about the stars again? All this somehow just makes Paimon feel really sad. It seems like they both deserve so much better. Perhaps. Nearly everyone who lives in the desert has some form of hardship or regret. But even so, we must still continue on with our lives. It's also my reason for fighting. I must continue to protect this land. Hmm. Maybe the people have always had a considerate god watching over them. Huh? What did you say, Sino? No, nothing. As long as Esau keeps his word and doesn't get in our way, we can take him along. Perhaps you are more compassionate than I gave you credit for. Please accept my thanks on Esau's behalf, Sino. Hey, Isak! Oh, it's you guys! We've cleared everything up! Let's go find your grandpa! Really? Wow! Thank you so much! Yeah! Alright. Let's ask the local residents some questions first. Village keepers? Oh, let me think. When I was eating dinner the other day, I saw one of them by the side of the road, muttering away and eating mushrooms and tree roots. They shouldn't go around eating that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Um, did you notice anything else? Anything else? Hmm. No, I think that's all I have to tell you. Sorry. The scholars that have gone missing, have you seen them? Ah, those eyes, those fierce eyes, you, you look like a real fighter. Don't change the subject. R right, you were asking about the vi I mean, the mad scholars. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. But honestly... I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, they've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. Do you also think Grandpa and the others are good people? Grandpa? Oh, hello there. It's little Isak. You mean that nice man who looks like your grandpa's long-lost twin, right? <laughs> he was actually the one who protected my house. I saw it with my own eyes. He happened to be staying near my house that day and was doing something with his hands on the ground. It still feels pretty surreal now that I think back on it. Did someone teach them how to do that? Well, whatever the case, I'll always be thankful to him and whoever taught him to look out for others. I'm pretty sure that if I ever went mad, I wouldn't be able to do anything like that. 
gotcha. Thank you. Grandpa recently? You know, the one who likes to sit and space out near the village entrance. Oh, well, if it isn't Isak. Oh, your grandpa, huh? Hmm, it's been a while. The last time I saw him, he was pacing out by the road as usual. I went and asked him if he'd like any of the food I had prepared, despite my wife's protests. Like many people, she's really quite terrified of them. <sighs> and speaking of my wife, she's still always complaining about how I don't make enough Mora. I might explain why she's always mad at me. Oh, thank you. Thank you for taking care of him. <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing. Hey, you're looking for him, right? Did he go for a walk and get lost? Yeah. Ooh, that's no good. Well, once you found him, Come by my place again, and I'll cook a little something for the both of you. I've known you since you were very young. So as far as I'm concerned, you're family. Please feel free to come by any time. Wow, what a nice guy! Okay, thank you, sir. Huh? Don't say anything for now. Hmm. Isak, stay here. Let's head over there. Stay quiet as you move. Listen, see if you can make out what they're saying. Have you heard? The mighty Scarlet King, the sovereign of our faith, will soon return to this world. Yes, of course I have. The Scarlet King is the one and only true ruler of this land. I've never believed in any other gods. Still, you say he's coming back, but... It sure doesn't feel like life's about to change around here anytime soon. What's your proof? Haven't you noticed? The village has been getting more deranged scholars than ever. Delavar was saying that many people also went insane just before the fall of the Scarlet King civilization in ancient times. We don't quite know why, but it seems like there's some sort of connection between insanity and the Scarlet King. Isn't it a sign of the Scarlet King's power that all the mad scholars have disappeared? If you ask me, they must have been chosen as the final sacrifice for the Scarlet King's resurrection. Huh. Now that you say it, that does make some sense. <laughs> does this mean our lives are finally going to take a turn for the better? Exactly. Those city folks will get what's coming to them. Now, repeat everything you've just said from the very beginning. Huh? Who are you? Uh, where did you come from? My patience is running thin. You heard what I asked. Yeah, B bro, this guy's something else. Just look at his eyes. One wrong move, and he's gonna flay us alive. Let's not get on his bad side, okay? I am no match for this guy. Oh, okay, good sir. W what is it you would like to know? Tell me about the Scarlet King's resurrection. Well, I... I only know a few things from hearsay. I went for a drink the other day and heard others talking about a rumor that the Mad Men will disappear, and that the Scarlet King will return to this land. I'm not making this up, I swear! <sighs> hey, go on, keep talking. It's true. It's all true, sir. We desert folk have had more than enough of those people at the Academia. They keep sending us all their mad scholars and won't let us have a good life. Would you want to live like this if you were in our place? The Radicals were even more thrilled than me when they heard the news. We're all praying for the Scarlet King's speedy return. Delavar also said that once the Scarlet King returns to our side, it's only a matter of time before we conquer the land on the other side of the wall. They're all willing to serve under the Scarlet King and fight for a share of the glory. Is that so? Uh, seems like he still wants to know more. Keep talking. Ah, uh, got it. I, uh, at first, 
I told myself it was just the drink talking, but then all the mad scholars vanished without a trace, just as the rumors said. P please don't beat me up just for mentioning these rumors. I if I'm guilty, then everyone else around here is also guilty. I'm just saying what the others said. The people here really like the Scarlet King, but dislike the Dendro Archon. Where is this radical person you talked about? I haven't run into him over the past few days, so he probably hasn't been around the village. What about you, man? Have you seen him at all? Uh, no, uh, not at all. We wouldn't dare lie to you. He's really not here right now. Sounds like you're not too close with the radicals. Uh, no, uh, of course not. All we know are their names. I have many ways to stop you from talking. And many others to stop you from sending warning messages. So you'd best just stay home and hope I don't hear of you trying to contact anybody. Don't do anything until I've gotten to the bottom of this. Try something foolish, and even Candace won't be able to protect you. Yes, yes, got it. We'll do just as you say. <sighs> That's scared by on half to death. Sino is pretty terrifying. Hmm. He didn't try to reassure us at all. It's like he's used to hearing that. Oh, Paimon bets lots of people have told him that before. I heard that. <laughs> Sorry. It's part of being a Matra. The rumor we heard just now seems like a strong lead. But we need to check a few more places. Very well. Isaac! Uh, I am here! Where's your grandpa's house? Well, I can take you there. Just follow me! Join the Aramites and embrace a wonderful new life. Grandpa? Oh, he likes to be alone. Uh, sometimes he stares at the sky in a daze, and other times he just pokes at the ground with his fingers. Every now and then, he yells out at the top of his lungs, so a lot of people are really scared of him. But he's a good person, really. I know he is. I swear, he, he's just like my real grandpa. Grandpa usually stays. There sure isn't much here. No. Incense. Ah, please don't say it's the same one as before. But are you okay? Are you getting dizzy or need to lie down? There's a scent that you can sense, but I can't. A certain traveler here once passed out from that smell. Thankfully, Tainari saved the day! And then he gave us a long lecture to explain all about how it worked. So, you know Tainari. Huh? You know him too? Are you two friends? Yes. Hmm. Now that I concentrate, I can also make out the scent of incense. Wait, surely Tainari didn't lecture you, too? No. No need. Did you first encounter this scent at Tainari's house? In the forest. From a scholar. Hmm. Here it is. Take a look right here. Uh, Paimon doesn't see anything. 
Although the traces have been completely buried in the sand, there are footprints here. From the size and shape, they belong to an adult male. This pattern is a common one from this area. Local shoes. This was probably someone from the village. The scent is quite faint, but still extant. The footprints head in the direction of the door. But who would come looking for Grandpa? He doesn't have any friends. We'd have to ask whoever lured him away with the incense. Huh? So you can lure someone away with just a scent? Hey! What's wrong with liking good food? Everyone's got something they love in life! Exactly. Most scholars are fond of incense, since the smell supposedly helps them clear their minds and discover new knowledge. Even deep within the clutches of madness, they still yearn for their knowledge-seeking days, and will follow the scent whenever it presents itself. No... Grandpa... So, someone's taking advantage of their weakness? Huh... Still, why would anyone want to abduct all the scholars? Are the rumors really true? Could the disappearance of all the mad scholars have something to do with the radicals? It's highly likely. Please, you have to save my grandpa. Grandpa's never done anything wrong. Please help him. Sounds like we'd better help get him back. Don't you worry, Isak. We won't let whoever took him get away with it. Let's head to Aru Village and inform Candace and the others about what we learned here. After that... We'll set off to find the scholars. Right. The darker fabric definitely looks a lot better. That'd be my choice, too. We're back, Candace! We've got a lot to tell you! Ah, welcome back. <laughs> Sounds like everyone's friends already. Oh, Dia's here, too! You bet! So, everything goes smoothly? Reasonably. Hmm? I'll hate them didn't go with you? We haven't seen him at all! Huh. I saw him around the village entrance earlier and figured he was investigating with you. I guess he must have gone off on his own. Did you find out anything useful? I see. So someone used a kind of incense to lead the exiled scholars away from the village. The resurrection of the Scarlet King? First I've heard of it. Far as I know, the kind of incense you just mentioned is only popular beyond the wall. Scholars are fond of it, but as you can see, there aren't many scholars still studying around these parts. No seller would be able to make a profit here. Not to mention making incense is a labor-intensive process. You won't see anybody in the desert with the patience to make or sell something that requires that kind of effort. It seems someone from beyond the wall must have been supporting this. Makes sense. Hmm. So what should we do then? Do we go back to the Academia and search for leads there? If it was any other day, that would be your next logical step. But today, you've got me on your team so you get an extra tip. Didn't you say that the villager got his news from the tavern? Well, I also like to drink at the tavern, so I know a thing or two about these radicals he mentioned. If Paimon remembers correctly, the leader of the radicals is some guy called Delavar. Ah, yeah. Delavar, the scar-riddled bandit, Enger, the wide-eyed butcher, and Jabari, the duck-tailed bearded crook. The whole lot of them are known around these parts. These guys have one thing in common, and that's being broke. The rougher life gets, the more they want to believe in the Scarlet King. The way they see it, the Scarlet King's resurrection is their only chance at overthrowing the Academia. 
Throwing all of Sumeru into chaos is the only way to change the way of life here in the desert. Anyway, that's my guess why they've chosen to become radicals. Tia! You're amazing! You really know this place inside and out! <laughs> no Merc can afford to slack off on gathering intelligence. Every more I've spent in the tavern has been a valuable investment. Let's head out. Now hold on, you're staying right here, Sino. Why? Aru Village is not a big place. Outsiders stand out here like a sore thumb. I'd bet word about you has already gotten out. The desert is unforgiving, so the way of life here is also a lot tougher than on the outside of the wall. You survive on making connections out here. T compared to you, mercs like me are just third-rate amateurs. I've got no actual fighting skills to speak of. But that also makes it a whole lot easier for me to gain the locals' trust. I need to go around and ask some questions. But it'll be difficult if you're with me. <sighs> Fine. Good. Then we've got a plan. The Traveler and Paimon will go to Caravan Rebot with me, and we'll try our best to figure out where the Mad Scholars have been taken. Sino, you'll have to stay in the village and continue investigating on your own. Alright! Sounds like a plan! Well, here we are again! Sounds like you're starting to get familiar with the area. Paimon's amazed! Every time we see the wall of Samuel, how can a wall this tall even exist? It's almost unreal. I know what you mean. I had the same question every time I walked this way when I was a kid. Also, why is this high wall here? And can a wall really block sandstorms? It was only after I grew up that I realized. The Wall of Samiel isn't just there to keep out the sandstorms. It serves a more important purpose, keeping out people like us. Sumeru is run by wise and mighty sages. To them, us desert dwellers are nothing but tools that can be used and discarded at their whim. We're cheap labor, like livestock, but easier to control. Nothing more. Even if a child from the desert got the chance to obtain an Akasha terminal, Almost all their requests for knowledge would be denied. The Academia believes we're underserving. Geniuses like Sataria are one in a million. The other children never get a single chance to try and rewrite their fate. Even though the Academia knows very well that we're humans, just as they are. I would tear down this wall with my own hands if I could. Hey, Dia. Uh, you're not thinking about doing anything scary, are you? Uh, no, not at all. This place just gets me thinking, that's all. And besides, we're here to procure information, aren't we? Yep! Caravan Rebot is crawling with people, so be careful what you say. We don't want anyone to find out what we're here for. Our mission started the moment we arrived here. Let's go check out the tavern. Maybe we'll find someone I know. Just our luck. None of them are here today. You mean, you don't see anyone you know? Dia, is that you? <laughs> what a coincidence. You here for a drink too? Hmm? Zaki? <laughs> Finally, a friendly face. Oh, and who do you have with you here? Guests from another land? Hello, hello. I'm Zaki. Dia's, uh, how would you put it? Drinking buddy? <laughs> We've had drinks together a few times. You could say we go back a ways. Anyway, as far as my friends here, they aren't too shabby, are they? 
You rarely see any outlanders so friendly and respectful nowadays. Absolutely. <laughs> Much better than those people on the other side of the wall. So, Dia, are you looking for someone? Yeah. Have you seen Enger, Delavar, or Jabari recently? Of course I have. Matter of fact, we were all here drinking together just a few days ago. I've got a spice trading deal from another nation. I thought maybe Delavar and his friends might be interested. Know where I could find him? Ah, how thoughtful of you. Then I assume you also know that Delavar's been having a hard time making ends meet these days, so you came here to help him out? Hey, keep it down. Let's just say I prefer to keep this deal a secret. Y'all at Caravan Rebot are like family. If there's more to be made, why not do it together? Besides, Delavar and his friends have muscle. They'd be a good fit for escorting the goods. <laughs> yes, how considerate of you. Delavar's my friend too, so of course I can take you to him. Come with me. Are we there yet? Yep, this is the place. This place is practically deserted. What are they doing in a place like this? <laughs> Why don't you take a guess? Go on, a wild stab in the dark. <laughs> You're like lambs to the slaughter. Uh. Oh no! It's an ambush! Uh, what's this all about, Zaki? Come on, Dia. You really think we didn't hear about what you said back in Aru village? The boys have kept a close eye on you from the moment you set foot there. Not only do I know that you're looking for Delavar, I also know that you've teamed up with people from the Academia to look for the missing scholars. So, you've been watching us from the very beginning? Uh-oh. I'm a new leaving Sino behind was a mistake! <laughs> And you left the strongest one in the village, didn't you? Who do you think you are? You really thought we'd fall for your little business deal nonsense? So you and Delavar have been partners all along. <laughs> Dia, I guess it's only natural for a traveling mercenary like you to be out of the loop. Those of us who hang around the tavern have stronger bonds than you think. But you got one thing right. We're all looking forward to an uprising in Sumeru. There's nothing more we'd like to see than the desert folk overthrowing the Academia. If that's the case, then I'm sure Delavar wouldn't miss a second of it. I'll be honest with you. If it weren't for what you said in the village, your little monologue about the Wall of Samuel would have convinced me that you're one of us. Delavar. And Enger. You're here too, huh? Long time no see, Miss Mercenary. You should have known the traitors are what us followers of the Scarlet King despise the most. Dia, I thought that you, a fellow desert dweller, would understand that the Scarlet King is greater than the Dendro Archon. Little did I know, you don't deserve to join us. <laughs> yeah, gee, what a missed opportunity. Adopting radical views and kidnapping innocent scholars, all because of some baseless rumors. <laughs> Anything else I'm missing out on? See? There you have it. Mercenaries are just a bunch of faithless scum with only one thing on their minds. Mora. Pathetic. You're all like a pack of street rats. You're not wrong. Mercenaries are driven by Mora, and my faith lies with whoever's paying me. As long as there's a profit to be made, anyone can become my friend. Enough talking! Get him! <laughs> Just as I expected. Let's teach him a lesson, Traveler. Following order. A new punching bag. One with nature. Impossible. 
possible? How could you? So, what do you think about your meticulous network now, Zaki? How did you say it? It's only natural for a traveling mercenary like me to be out of the loop. I'm guessing your informant told you that I'm just an incompetent merc with no real fighting skills, correct? I mean, that is what I said after all. And of course you would believe everything he reported. The only thing you know about me is that I'm a mercenary, but you've never seen me in action. Even though you heard we went to handle monsters together, you believed that Candace was the only one doing all the real fighting. That so-called Flame Mane is just a fraud. She admitted it herself. She just uses her connections to gain the trust of others. That's what you thought, right? Ugh. You lied in the village because you figured that we'd have people watching you. And you were stupid enough to fall for it. I figured as much the first time we drank together. You all thought you were so smart. Pathetic. Okay, that should be all of them. Whoa! So you've been planning this since we were in Aru Village? No task can be done without preparation. I just happened to notice a couple suspicious looking people while you were out investigating. Oh, but instead of catching them right away, you let them report back! Those two who were snooping around were just a couple small fries. If we want to get the real catch, we have to be patient and give it some time. Oh, you mean the funny name she mentioned back in Uncle Ampu's house? The Wide-Eyed Butcher, Scarlet Old Bandit, uh, um, Paimon can't remember them all. That's just a bunch of drunk talk. Enger and Delavar like to talk themselves up when they're drinking. Enger the Wide-Eyed Butcher and Delavar the Scar-Riddled Bandit are the nicknames they came up with for themselves. Alcohol has a way of making people share what they really think. So Enger and Delavar are always rambling in the tavern about how the Scarlet King is a superior deity. What about Zaki? He's just a numbskull who fell right into our trap. Zaki was probably the best hidden of them all. My initial plan was to find Delavar first and then try to track him down. That's what you wanted to ask when we were at Uncle Anpu's house, right? Jabari is one of the villagers you talked to. You know. The one who wanted to treat Isak and his grandpa to some food. Wait, so he's a radical too? No, he isn't. I just needed to tack on a random villager name to make the eavesdropper think that I was making some wild guesses based on my impressions. Wow, what a genius idea! Well, that's an expert mercenary for ya! Ah, you're too kind. It was straight from the usual playbook, if I'm honest. So... That thing you were saying before, is it really true? Hmm? About what? About how mercenaries only care about Mora, and that anyone's a friend as long as there's a profit. Does that bother you? What makes you so sure? Uh... Dia, do you dislike the Dendro Archon like the other desert folk? <laughs> you two are pretty sharp. No, I don't have anything against the Dendro Archon. I've heard a lot of nice things about the Lesser Lord from Dunyarzad. I can understand her devotion and gratitude. Dunyarzad's just an ordinary person. There's no way a god would be so involved in the lives of everyday people, unless they were truly compassionate. I've begun to realize that the Sages are behind everything that's happened recently. The Radical's blind belief in the Scarlet King, making the Dendro Archon out to be an enemy. It's all the Academia's trickery. But I see through it all. And unlike them, I can never be hostile towards anyone who's never done anything wrong. Dia. Anyway, looks like we're done with business here. Traveler, lend me a hand. Let's tie him up and bring him to the village. This should be all of them. I'll let you take it from here. All right. I'll be in touch. 
Until then, please stand by. Candace, do you need any help? Candace will be okay on her own. I trust her, so you can too. She's been guarding Aru Village for quite some time now. If anyone is qualified to question the offenders, it's her. While I'm questioning them, why don't you pass some time by exploring the area? I'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, Traveler. As for these idiots, let's just hope they live to see another day. Right on time. <laughs> we'll know any moment now. Paimon's been wondering. You seem to know Candace pretty well. Have you been friends for a long time? We've known each other for some time now. She's a pretty interesting person. Even though she's an extremely strong warrior, she never misuses her powers against others. Oh, Paimon knows what you mean. Like a lot of martial artists say, never take the fight outside the ring. Yep, I guess you can put it that way. It takes strong convictions to be as dedicated as she is, and shoulder that kind of responsibility. Us mercs, on the other hand, we pretty much live from one day to the next. Well, Paimon thinks you're great, too. Really? Thanks for that. And he's pretty early, too. Yes. I was here yesterday to help out a little. To help out? By doing what? Sharing some interrogation techniques. Oh! Um, you mean you taught Candace some more... persuasive methods? Right. Come on in, everyone. Come on. Let's go inside. Do I? Huh. What gave it away? Oh, there's no mask that can hide true bloodlust. Cover up your eyes, and it'll still show itself at the corners of your mouth. Perhaps I need to work on my composure. Still, it's perfectly understandable why I'm angry. I'm sure everyone present would agree. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Please, don't be this anymore. <laughs> We're gonna die. Well, looks like Sino taught her well. <laughs> you fear death yourselves, yet you do not hesitate to place the lives of others at risk. <laughs> the absurdity is mind-boggling. The ones you call mad scholars are known to us as the village keepers. They are vital members of our community, and some even count them as family. You come here, to my village, and you treat my people as nothing more than stepping stones towards your goal. Tell me, what would you do to you in my position? Uh, mercy! Please have mercy! You've made your bed. We may both be desert dwellers, but there is one thing that I understand better than you. The resurrection of the Scarlet King will only result in war. And war serves no one. The people of Aru Village care little about which god is in power. Life may be tough and tiring, but we wish to preserve our way of life. A war would only cause us to lose all that we have. And that is not a responsibility that you can afford to shoulder. Uh, we understand. We're sorry! I'll tell you everything I know, please, just... 
Let us go. I'm listening. Uh, you might not believe this, but it wasn't us who came up with this idea. Someone was spreading rumors in the tavern. That's how we ended up hearing about the Scarlet King's resurrection. Some mystery man told us that mad scholars will make the perfect sacrifice to usher in the Scarlet King's resurrection. They give their lives, and we can get anything we wish for. They're called village keepers. Slip up again, and you'll regret it. Uh, yes, sorry! It was all that mystery man's doing. He told us to spread word about the Scarlet King's resurrection and talked us into helping him. In return, he said he'll help facilitate the resurrection process. I'm not sure. That's one. Huh? One what? Strike. You get a total of three. Then, you die by my hand. Wait, I'm telling the truth! We don't know anything! It was all him! <sighs> Two. He got us to lure them out of their houses in the night with some kind of incense. We take them to a junction outside the village, then the mystery guy takes them from there! <sighs> you gotta believe me, please. I'm telling the truth, I swear. Just ask them if you don't believe me! That was indeed the truth. Traveler, go on. You have to believe me. If I knew that, I would have told you his name right away. I'm not risking another beating to keep his secrets. No way! He, um, that guy, he wears a cloak, and he's always careful to cover his face. Uh, he calls himself the Scarlet King's envoy. I believe I may know what's going on. Uncle Anpu? What do you mean? <laughs> Smooth. Okay, speak. If my suspicions are correct, this mystery man they speak of could be from the Academia. Hmm. Some time ago, people from the Academia attempted to take the Village Keepers away. I refused, insisting that they are part of our community. It strikes me now that this secretive character shares the same goal they had. Which means it's highly likely that the Academia was purposely spreading a false rumor to trick the Radicals into delivering the Village Keepers right into their hands. <laughs> They were the ones who brought them here to begin with. Now they're trying to take them back? We aren't gonna let that happen. Not the Academia again. Just as I thought. But what could they want with the Village Keepers? People are nothing but tools in the eyes of the Academia. A change in their plans likely means they found another way to exploit the Scholars. <sighs> Regardless, our top priority now is locating the Village Keepers. You're right. Isaka's still waiting for news on his grandpa. Time to go. Let's leave the village and try to track them down. Yes. Pack up and get ready to leave. You got it. Candace, I'll let you deal with the Radicals. Leave everything outside the village to us. All right. Let's meet back here once everyone's ready! Let's get some food in us and then we'll... Whoa! Where did you come from? Well, as you can see... I am merely sitting here and reviewing what we have deduced thus far. You were gone for ages! And now you're suddenly sitting here musing to yourself? Where have you been anyway? Hey! What's with the silence? You never think things through before asking questions. I'm giving you some time to make up for that. Uh, uh, Paimon's so mad! Paimon's gonna give 
you an ugly nickname. Uh, um, <laughs> never mind. Paimon's got nothing. There's just nothing super obvious to pick with this guy. It makes it so hard. Well, you've heard nothing to suggest I left this whole time. So clearly, I stayed in the village to investigate. Anyway, you plan to leave Aru village and keep searching for the truth of this matter, yes? <sighs> yep. We're not gonna find out anything more by staying here, so we thought that we might as well take the search elsewhere. No. I'm just surprised that you decided to team up with him. All Haytham. You haven't helped us out at all ever since we arrived at Aru Village. Bold of you to question our choices. Yeah, you're all talk! While you were investigating, I had my own work to do, which I've now finished. Really? Paimon doesn't believe you. To be honest, we aren't really a team, so I have no obligation to inform you of my whereabouts. Not to mention that going separate ways allowed me to find some important information that you all had missed. Huh? Right here in the village? Correct. What did you learn? I'm going to take you to someone. But before that... You need to understand where she's coming from. What does that mean? How do you think the residents of Aru Village feel about what we're doing? In other words, do you truly believe every single word the villagers tell us? You mean, some of them lied to us? Hiding the truth does not necessarily equate to lying. Again, these people have their reasons. Remember what Gandis said? Most people in Aru Village don't necessarily care which deity is in charge of Sumeru. That's because whether the Scarlet King or the Dendro Archon has power is of little significance to them. By contrast, the perils of their daily lives are ever-present concerns. They won't simply share everything they know with you without good reason. That's why you believed there was no further information to be found in this village. Glad you're following along. Among those you have talked to, there's someone who was consciously keeping you out of the loop. In fact, she's been observing your every move since you arrived. The reason being, to someone who only wants to live their life in peace, any external factors introduce unpredictability into the equation. <gasps> those eyes, those fierce eyes, you, you look like a real fighter. Don't change the subject. It's quite obvious that she's intimidated by Sino's authority and strength. R right, you were asking about the vi I mean, the mad scholars. She corrected herself mid-sentence because she's aware that there are Scarlet King fanatics in the village. If she sounds too friendly towards the village keepers, she could easily make herself the Radical's next target. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. Remember? She made a point of denying her involvement in anything that occurs at night. But honestly... I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, they've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. After speaking to the village chief, it became clear that the village keepers had protected Aru village at night. In other words, the young miss was very much awake during that time. Then why would she lie? By getting involved with an outsider, she risks drawing unwanted attention to herself. As for why she might be so wary about all this, <laughs> maybe you should ask her. I'll pass on this one. You said that she is afraid of me. 
If so, it's best if I stay out of this. We're on it! Miss Shawnee, as we discussed earlier, I've brought someone with me. <laughs> Mr. Alhatham, I'm aware of where you stand, but how can I make sure that your friends think the same as you? Huh? What do you mean? We need to clarify our stance or something? Go ahead and talk to her. You'll get the answers you want. Go on. Earn her trust. Is it really that simple? Uh, may I call you Traveler? Uh, hi, Traveler. I want to ask you something. Do you think the resurrection of the Scarlet King can truly change Sumeru for the better? Why's that? Hmm, that's very similar to what Miss Candace says. I know you two are friends. That's why I'm willing to talk to you, even though I do have some reservations. Before, I wouldn't even have the courage to ask something like this. Traveler, do you believe our lives will get better? Yeah! We came here from another nation, so it isn't wrong of you to be weary. And we aren't really residents of any one nation. But even so, we've met lots of people from different places, and we've always fought for what we believed in. We have friends in Sumeru, and we want to help them. That's why we decided to stay here for a while. I want to trust you. My apologies for posing my questions like that. To be honest, I didn't expect you to come back for more information. Oh, hey, them told us you have your reasons. It's okay. We understand. The fact is that I'm... Only one side of my family is desert folk. I don't really fit in anywhere in Sumeru. Some believe in the Dendro Archon, while others believe in the Scarlet King. I don't belong to either side. And neither side would want me. Speaking of which, the Radicals mentioned that they despise traitors. Do they just think that anyone who's different from them is a traitor? Yeah. Some people can be so narrow-minded when it comes to bloodline and beliefs. It makes no difference what I say or how I behave. I'll always be suspected of having ulterior motives. Slowly, I just stopped talking to people. I pretended not to hear or see anything. All I want is to live my life in peace. And then it happened. The village keepers who had helped me disappeared with no explanation, and I didn't dare breathe a word about it to anyone. Until now. You can tell them. I'm sure she'll keep your secret. <laughs> Alright. I'll tell you what I told Alhatham. I actually have a sharper sense of hearing than most. Sometimes, I hear strange crying sounds in the night. <gasps> there are ghosts? Perhaps. I'm not sure. It's faint, but it's definitely the sound of crying. It comes from far away in the distance, and always carries very raw emotion. It used to be louder and more frequent. But ever since you arrived in the village, it doesn't seem to happen as often. And when it does, it's much quieter. I have to focus really hard to make it out. I confirmed this with the guards on night duty. They also have someone with a good ear, and he's heard similar sounds at night. But, because we're in the middle of a desert, he would rather believe that they are the cries of beasts than ghosts. There's really nothing around these parts. 
except for an old hospital not far from the village. I think they used to use it for treating Elazar, but it's been abandoned for years. Yeah, let's go! to hide people. one. <laughs> Let's go in and take a look. Patience. Shawnee says she only hears the crying at night. We have time to burn. Until then... I'm taking a break. <sighs> and just like that, he sits down. Wait, he even brought a book to read? What are you reading? Let Paimon see! Okay, sure. that? Oh, Paimon gives up! You keep reading your book! See ya! How is he so relaxed? Look at him! Reading an impossible book in a creepy place like this! Hey! Paimon's your Tibet travel guide! Paimon knows plenty of useful stuff already! And anyway, is that Paimon's fault that the books people read in Sumeru are so complicated? There it is. It's coming from that direction. Is the sound coming from 
same here? Huh. Paimon's not seeing anything. Hmm? It's from below. Uh, but there's no way we can get down there. Something is off about the interior here. Hmm. As I thought, there's a hidden structure. Wow. It's like they tucked another hospital into this one. Oh, it looks like there are other mechanisms around here. Let's keep exploring. We may leave at any time. Let's go. I... I can do it. I won't hold you back. Much. Stay close and you will live. Justice. I'll ensure your safety. Expect to see him here. You know him? He's Razak, a senior of mine at the Academia. He's a scholar too? Is he the kind that holds up in a forest and mumbles stuff about training? 
No. And that's the problem. Razak was never involved in any of those things. He never trained in the forest, let alone reach Satyavada life. Leaving that question aside for the moment, him being here alone means that we might be too late. Looks like they've already taken everyone away. For whatever reason, they left Razak here. Perhaps they simply didn't have time to come back for him. Hmm. There are drag marks on the ground. They're clearer by the doorway. Someone was forcefully drawing a cart that was loaded with something heavy. Loaded? With... people? That is one possibility. Hmm. It looks like they were in a hurry, as if they were afraid of being caught. In their haste, they failed to notice Razak hiding in a corner. The symptoms are identical. Looks like we found living proof. Huh? Why do you say that? Allow me to jog your memory. Recall your time at Port Ormos. Don't you think his symptoms look familiar? Correct. The Academia is behind all of this. It isn't difficult to deduce their rationale. First, the Academia spread a false rumor of the Scarlet King's resurrection, emphasizing the role of the village keepers, the mad scholars who were exiled to Aru village. These rumors were all the persuasion that the radicals needed, and those based in Aru village leapt into action. Unbeknownst to them, of course, through rounding up the scholars, they were actually helping the academia. As well as being able to exploit the radicals for their own ends, this scheme has one further advantage to the academia. All the risks and responsibilities are offloaded onto the Scarlet King's followers. Life for the Desert Dwellers has been brutal ever since the Scarlet King's death all those years ago. Beneath the surface, feelings of desperation are widespread. Many would give everything they have for the prospect of something better. Anyone looking to exploit that for their own ends simply needs to make a few empty promises. Even if complications arise, people will see that those involved are all followers of the Scarlet King and look for no further explanation than differences of belief. A deep-seated mistrust of the desert and everyone in it by the rest of Sumeru will make sure of that. The notion of an academia plot wouldn't even cross their minds. It may seem like a simple strategy, but it is able to work wonders under Sumeru's current circumstances. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's in line with the village chief's theory, too. But there's still one very important question. Wasn't it the academia that brought the scholars to Aru village in the first place? Why does it want them back now? Throughout this process, one thing has changed. The scholars' identity. First, they were scholars. Then, they became lunatics. After that, they were exiles. And finally, they become missing persons. An exile is still patently a living, breathing human being. But when someone becomes a missing person, that is brought into question. If you can't find someone, you have no way of knowing what exactly happened to them. That makes missing people an ideal resource. Resource? For what exactly? One possibility is that the information in their brains could be extracted into knowledge capsules. Extracted? You mean, canned knowledge comes from people's brains? With the technology of the Sumeru Academia, it's entirely possible. Perhaps the process caused them great suffering which is why they cry out in the dead of night, when no one is watching them. So... the human brain... No! Nah! -uh. Hyman doesn't want to think about this! I'm the Academia Scribe, after all. I'm familiar with their projects. Anyway, judging by Razak's state, 
The contents of a divine knowledge capsule were extracted from his mind, but something went wrong in the process. Or perhaps his curiosity got the better of him, and he used such a capsule for himself. But uh, Paimon's a little confused. Can they just use anyone's brain? The look on your face tells me you've realized the answer. That's right. To some scholars, gaining knowledge about the gods is their entire life's pursuit. Extracting canned knowledge is just one of the extreme measures they turn to. However, I can't help but wonder. What do they seek to gain from divine knowledge? The Academia is going out of their way to look for forbidden knowledge, but what is their ultimate goal? I've spent quite some time trying to analyze the contents of the Divine Knowledge Capsule, but to no avail. It seems like my way of thinking is too different from theirs. You mean, you're not even slightly interested in getting your hands on this forbidden stuff? All scholars seek to expand the horizons of knowledge, but I'm not particularly interested in gods so I don't share their degree of zealotry. Extracting information from people as if they were lifeless objects? <laughs> if this is the direction of academic progress, then the academia may as well shut its doors. Sounds like you're really against all this. Of course. The academia's actions run contrary to their rules. Whether it be academics or knowledge, everything has its boundaries. If those lines are crossed, the rules and order that govern everything in the world will be destroyed. This matter needs to be corrected, just like fixing a typo in a book. Wait, didn't you step in to help because you felt sympathy for those poor people? Not to be callous, but no. My criteria are a little more restrictive than that. There is no shortage of suffering in Sumeru, and the same can be said for the rest of Tevat as well. What do you plan to do about that? Save every last person? Um, probably not. Uh, Paimon's not sure. You can say that. Simply put, I don't blindly place my faith into strength or heroism. I do what I want. The Divine Knowledge Capsule is something I want to investigate in full. That doesn't mean I'm willing to take action for the sake of a few strangers. Paimon's been wanting to say this for a while. There are a lot of bad guys in the Academia, but you're not one of them. You're their weirdo. <laughs> you're probably right. Though I must say, I quite enjoy this feeling of being the odd one out. Uniqueness is also an asset, is it not? Wow, that's a great way to think about it. Paimon's really impressed. If only Miss Shani had a similar mindset, her life would definitely be a lot easier. I'm just a more likable person than her in general. There's nothing more to it than that. <sighs> he won't last long if we leave him here. Let's take him with us. We'll work out our next step after we return to Aru Village. You must be tired. You should rest and take some water. What's the situation? Hmm? Who's this? Unfortunately, somebody who's too young to take on the role of Isak's grandfather. Nevertheless, he's one of the people we're trying to find.
So, at one point in time, the abandoned Elazar Hospital served as the Academia's site for extracting Divine Cant knowledge. Yep, pretty much! Their plan must have been implemented at some point before we arrived at Aru Village, since Divine Cant knowledge has been in circulation for a while now. Yet, they fled once we were headed to the village, almost as if they knew we were on their trail. Why is that? We may have a mole in our midst. One of us could be secretly revealing our whereabouts to the Academia. Huh? Are our friendships that shallow? Hmm. <sighs> Looks like none of you have realized wherein lies the issue. Sino, you're the reason why they can predict our movements. Choose your next words very carefully. It is simply a logical inference. I have my reasons. So what you're saying is... Sino's the mole. Interesting. And here I thought you were the most suspicious one, I'll hate them, since you were always acting alone. I know. You have a point. But I realized something as we were returning from the hospital. Sino isn't like any of us. What are you trying to say? Do you still remember who you are, General Mahamatra? <laughs> As a Matra, you are no doubt privy to certain kinds of information. Before you can take action against someone, you are required to have all the facts available, including the less than savory details. Simply put, the Academia has traditionally allowed you access to a wealth of sensitive information. Knowing their modus operandi, wouldn't you expect them to take precautions against you? If you want to raise a vicious wolf, you need to make sure that you can avoid its bite. The Academia is monitoring me? It's not that simple. The Academia has eyes all over Sumeru, but they have a special protocol for dealing with you. Every so often comes a Nyagarbaha day. On this day, the Academia enters new information into the Akasha through knowledge capsules. I remember seeing the thick notebook next to the control panel once. Its contents were all about the General Mahamatra, his activities throughout the day, preferred methods of enacting judgment, everything. You're saying that the Academia entered my information into the Akasha too? But what's the point in doing that? My actions aren't important enough to be added into the Akasha. The Akasha is capable of computation. <sighs> the Akasha's algorithms are entirely capable of predicting your movements using the data entered. When you would depart, the route you would follow, your destination. It knew all of this. It predicted my every move. The Academia has been watching you longer than you think. So that's how it is. Sino adheres to his principles so strongly that he's actually a thorn in their side. Tenacity of will and steadfast faith are worthless to the Academia. They need scholars who are easily pliable and mindlessly go after anything they can profit from. Sino, don't take it to heart. This just proves how much of a trustworthy ally you are. <sighs> they escaped because of me. Don't blame yourself. It's not like any of us would have known. I have an idea. If they predicted my movements, then I might be able to guess where they went. Whoa, you bounced back fast. There is always an opportunity for safety after danger passes. Oh, so that's how it is! Paimon gets it now! If the Academia is trying to avoid Sino, then the safest place would be... Yep, that's right! They'll want to proceed in the direction opposite of where I'm going. I 
I must go. There's also something I want to investigate. Let's go, guys! After him! Please, wait! I want to go, too! Hmm... You want to go, too? If so... You have to promise you'll stay safe. I want to find Grandpa! I promise I'll be careful and not cause any trouble! Everyone, I leave him in your hands. Yay! Let's go! Remember to pack some food with you! Paimon feels like we're missing someone, though. Hmm... So, where do we go from here? Yes. After leaving the village, we should head straight toward the desert. I know the desert like the back of my hand. Is that because you play here a lot? Yep. One time, Grandpa almost got lost in the desert. But I was the one who brought him back. There's something here. What's this? It's buried in the sand. Hmm. Looks like we'll need to roll up our sleeves and do some work. Ugh. And Paimon thought running around everywhere was already enough work. Okay, okay. So, we have to dig it out? Whatever's down there, it looks like it's buried really deep. These are likely fragments of an academia-developed device, something akin to a headset. Looks like there were more than one village keeper. They must have been escorted this way because there are device fragments scattered around here. Let's split up and search the area. Chances are that we'll find other things nearby. Is this what we're searching for? Looks kind of scary. This is definitely a device used to extract divine knowledge. How did it end up buried in the sand? That can't have been part of the plan. They must have been attacked along the way. Wait, what? Grandpa, I hope you're okay. Don't worry, your grandpa's gonna be fine. Razak didn't display any signs of starvation or dehydration which means that they left fairly recently. We should be able to catch up. One more thing. Given that the device had been entirely covered by sand, I believe the attack must have happened prior to the sandstorm. Let's keep going. They can't have gone far. You're flying, aren't you, Paimon? Is flying over sand tiring, too? Ugh, of course it is! Voices, over there. Hmm. It sounds like an argument. Whoa, you have really good ears! Don't get any closer. They'll notice us. Dia's talking with the Aramites? Hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. Let's listen in. If you had informed me sooner, there'd be plenty of room for us to... You're one of us. We would never lie. Scholars. You don't know as much as I do. Need me to... <laughs> I knew it. That's our Dia. Dia? Why would you... Dia! Hey! What are you doing? Huh? Didn't you say you'd help me find Grandpa? Why... Why are you on their side? <laughs> well, look who's here. Ain't that something? Ugh, this complicates things. You've betrayed Aru Village? So, this is the great General Mahamantra. 
Dear, you'd be better off as my assistant than hanging around with this motley crew. Seen for yourself, I have the means and methods, and my ideals are far more admirable than theirs. I'm not the type that's easily swayed, Raman. You of all people should know that. Wait, what's going on, Dia? Whose side are you on here? Shut it, Paimon. It doesn't matter. Whichever side you pick, nothing could deter us from the grand mission of resurrecting the Scarlet King. Once our Lord of Old returns to this land, we will have a new beginning. Face the facts, Raman. It's not gonna happen. You should understand that more than anyone. Have all your years as a merc taught you nothing about placing hopes in a ruler? I'm a desert dweller and a proud follower of the Scarlet King. Whether I live by the edge of the sword or in peaceful comfort, my soul will always carry this conviction. It's not too late yet. The village keep- <laughs> Mad scholars aren't gonna bring the Scarlet King back to life. You don't understand, my dear lady. Pursuing our faith is our purpose in life. Even if the chance of success is one in a million, we must be willing to give everything we have. Even if it'll expose you to the Academia? Even if they end up disbanding the Aramites? Your Aramites, which you've worked so hard for all these years? Yes. We've waited a long time for this day to come. The sun and the moon no longer shine here. All you see now is cracks in this desiccated land. But fate has finally dealt me a hand to play against the Academia. With these scholars in our custody, we'll stomp the Academia's forces and fight our way beyond the wall of Samuel. <sighs> Ridiculous. Think about it. The Academia controls the entirety of Sumeru. Your powers are negligible in comparison. If you still don't believe me, then try asking these two men. They're also against the Academia, but neither of them are as arrogant as you are. <laughs> they look more like pawns of the Academia to me. Why would I listen to anything the people of Greater Lord Ruka Devada have to say? Filthy traitors. Your god abandoned all honor and betrayed the Scarlet King. We desert dwellers will never trust the likes of you. It's impossible to communicate with someone so hostile. Perhaps we should. Do you really believe that by kidnapping the scholars, you'll be able to negotiate with the Academia? These people have no value as bargaining chips but I could be persuaded to take their place as your next hostage. These scholars were exiled from the Academia. I, on the other hand, am their current scribe, and will be a much greater asset to you. Wait, you can't be serious. So, you want to trade places with the hostages, do you? Precisely. Any wise person would gladly accept my offer. Well, that would be bad luck for me. However, I'd get the chance to observe the scholars, perhaps even find out the truth. <sighs> Think you can talk me over with that confident look of yours? I'm not trying to persuade you. I'm using this as a means of joining forces against the Academia. You are the scribe. What do you have against the Academia? Not all Desert Dwellers believe in the Scarlet King, and the same applies to the Academia. Why must all Knowledge Seekers approve of the Academia's way of doing things? <laughs> you Academia scum! Every last one of you is nothing but a hypocrite, just like everyone else on the other side of that wall. I've made myself clear enough. I won't listen to another word from the Dendro Archon's people. Not so fast. I'll hate them. Do you stand by everything you just said? <laughs> I never make empty promises. You know you're making a dangerous decision, right? I do. Good. Raman, hear me out. These people are my friends. Maybe you can't take the followers of the Dendro Archon at their word, but what about me? Do you trust me? <sighs> We've known each other for years. 
Of course I do. In that case, I'm willing to vouch for their honesty with my right arm. <sighs> Come on, Raman, don't be a coward. If you're serious about taking on the Academia, you need to steal yourself. You can't be afraid. <laughs> An arm from the Flame Mane. You've piqued my interest. But what if you refuse to oblige? What should I do then? No one's a fool here, dear. We're mercs. And mercs don't tend to live long unless they have their wits about them. You're not wrong, but this is different. I promised my friends that we'd bring back the village keepers together. <laughs> Let's do it right here then! Give me your right arm as proof of your resolve. Uh. Don't listen to him! He's not even trying to negotiate! He just wants to make things more difficult! That's fine. Are you crazy? We came here to save lives. One arm for that many people is still a pretty good deal, if you ask me. Raman, I'm holding up my end of the deal here. You'd better not let me down. Sure. Go ahead and cut off her right arm. No! Dia! What are you gonna do? Think of something! You don't have to go this far. That's not for you to decide. Do it! Stop! What's wrong? Can't do it? Flame Mane, you and I are both desert folk. Cutting off your arm is no different than cutting off my own fingers. Where's the sense in cutting my own kin to pieces? <sighs> You've shown me that you're serious. Go on now, take your friends and leave. Meet me in the desert at noon tomorrow. Phew. I was really counting on him not going through with it. I just have to hold my claymore with my left arm. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. But sometimes when you're out on a limb, you gotta double down to seal the deal, you know? Don't ever make a promise like that again. I can deal with the likes of them. If it came down to it, you would not lose to them either. I don't doubt it, Sino. But this is about more than me and them. There's a lot more where they came from. Even if we got rid of one bunch of radicals, there are others out there. Wiping them out would do more harm than good. <sighs> As you wish. I'm sorry, Dia. I should have stayed put and listened. I should have trusted you. It's okay. I promised you I'd help find your grandpa, so I'll do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes? <laughs> You just might be scholar material. Huh? Are you serious? The Eremites once said that I was a lunatic. Perhaps a little madness is essential to be successful in research. Why does it feel like he's using his praise for me as an excuse to brag about himself? Okay, let's get moving. We should head back to the village and rest up. Today was just a trial run. Noon tomorrow is going to be the hard part. You're all here so early! Looks like we have everyone here. Isak, are you sure you want to come with us? 
I'll watch from a safe distance. Dia, I want to be there to bring Grandpa home. Okay, let's go then. Dia, wait. What's the matter? I heard that you were quite reckless yesterday. No more of that today, understood? Or I'll be very upset with you. <sighs> Fine. Huh. They got here before us. Uh-oh. Is it because Paimon overslept by five minutes and held everyone up? Is everything ready? Absolutely. Although... You brought fewer people than I imagined. Bring him over. Grandpa! Why is there only one of them? Raman, I've always thought of you as a man of his word. What's this about? It's a one-for-one one exchange. Sounds fair, don't you think? But let me put it this way. Agreeing to any kind of deal with the Dendro Archon's people is already a huge compromise on my part. Don't you think you've asked enough? Uh-uh. <sighs> you stay right there! Shaking. Wait a second. It's a earthquake. This day's going just great. <laughs> what a nuisance. The sand dune collapsed. I saw an energy field. The village keeper protected us. It glowed green with Dentro. <laughs> just like you said, it may well have been the remains of Lesser Lord Kusanali's power inside the scholar's body. Dendro Archon. The present one. Grandpa? Grandpa? Oh no. He's getting confused again. Hey, look around you. Did there used to be a temple here? It seems that when the sand dune collapsed, it exposed these underground structures. The symbols on the gate belong to the Scarlet King's civilization. This structure must be ancient. Over time, the sandstorms completely buried it and left it in the state we see now. It could have been an underground palace in the distant past. Oh, a miracle. Praise the Scarlet King! What's he doing here? And his men too? They must have fallen down here with us. Pretty lucky, if you ask me. Most of them seem in really bad shape. Except for him. He got off lightly. <laughs> Mind your head. No, no, this isn't the time for conflict. Our exalted lord has shown us the way to his sacred palace. Uh, he's not actually gonna go in there, is he? 
As it happens, I want to take a look inside too. What are you doing? Don't you think it's curious? One minute Lesser Lord Kusanali's power protects us from harm, and the next, remnants of the Scarlet King's civilization appear. Two major deities are vying to showcase their power to us. It would be a shame not to witness them both. Paimon thought you weren't interested in gods. Indeed. In my view, gods are just a higher form of living being. Or creature, you could say. New discoveries are always worth investigating. Whether they have anything to do with gods is neither here nor there. Raman, what are you gonna do about your men? I'll just let them lay here. The Scarlet King will take care of his people. Right now, I'm going inside. It's full of life here. This defies comprehension. It looked completely desolate from the outside. Yet, it flows with energy inside. Yeah! And there's so many plants! It's so pretty! Sir Rahman. W huh? Me? <laughs> Do you see another Rahman here? Are you mocking me? What do you mean, sir? Interpret it however you want, but there's something I'd like to draw your attention to. While this structure is clearly left over from the Scarlet King civilization, the energy that flows in here is that of the Dendro Archon. <sighs> Whatever you say, it's not like I have a vision. There's nothing to be angry about. Think of this as an academic journey. It does seem kind of strange. If that's true, then we might have to explore this whole area to find an explanation. Oh, now that's a sight to see. The Scarlet King's splendor surrounds us. There's so much vegetation here. It's different than what I expected. Sure are a lot of plants for a desert. <laughs> That's what I call divine providence of the Scarlet King. something behind. Hmm. Yes. It's an elegy written in an ancient script. What does it say? Here lies our faithful priest Kasala. His wisdom is a miracle among the people, deserving of high praise and admiration. You can read ancient Scarlet King script? Of course. Every student needs to master at least 20 languages before they graduate. He's not serious, right? There's still something off about this place. The elemental energy here is too concentrated. The scent of life. Is it trying to tell us something? Hmm. Is this it? Analyzing. Hmm. There seems to be a hidden message among these skeletal remains. Excellent. There's a device from the Scarlet King's civilization in this gravesite. I'll transmit the information over and project it for everyone to see. Isn't sharing knowledge against the Academia's rules? Yes. However, under the circumstances, I'd prefer you to see this for yourself. 
You'll understand after watching it. Civilization is born of knowledge, but so too can knowledge be its demise. A disaster caught us unaware. It was knowledge that did not belong to this world. The Scarlet King brought this forbidden knowledge into our world, and it quickly spread like a plague. People's minds were filled with crazed whispers, Dark gray scales spread across their bodies. Even the land was stripped of its vigor. Only a desperate, deathly silence remained. Were it not for greater Lord Ruka Devata from the forests, the damage would have been irreversible. She summoned the priests to build temples and infused into them the divine power of life. The disaster was miraculously tempered, and the embers of our civilization were preserved in Aru village. Alas, the miracle could not last. As long as forbidden knowledge continued to exist, it would forever blight this world. In the end, the proud king of the desert, my eternal lord, chose to sacrifice himself. I have spent my whole life since guarding one of these many temples. But now, my duty is coming to an end. As I close my eyes for the final time, the sight of that noble deity will appear in my vision once more. In helping the Scarlet King to eradicate forbidden knowledge, she exhausted her strength, and her form became that of a small child. How strange. Now that I think of her, I no longer have any fear of death, for I sense that the spirit of life will abide with me during my eternal sleep. Children of the desert, cling no longer to past grievances, but hold tight to the memory of this act of benevolence. What was that? The priest's memories. No. No! Impossible! Greater Lord Ruka Devata. So the former Dendro Archon and the Scarlet King were never enemies at all. Uh, but... This doesn't make any sense. The Dendro Archon's followers... They're clearly... Was that... the former Dendro Archon? He became so tiny in the end. You might be distrustful of the Akasha, but there's no reason for you to doubt the Scarlet King's technology. You've just witnessed his priest's last words. I've never heard about any of this before. The surviving followers of the Scarlet King all gathered in Aru village. Our god did not make mistakes. We refused to believe any of the rumors. The Scarlet King's death the all but total annihilation of our civilization. It was all Greater Lord Ruka Devata's doing. We saw her as nothing more than a traitor. Who stabbed us in the back in our moment of crisis. <laughs> Just like us humans. Fighting. Feuding. Double-crossing each other to survive in the desert. You were blinded by your prejudice. <laughs> if I hadn't seen this for myself, if I hadn't witnessed his last words with my own eyes, ears, and heart, how could I ever begin to accept this? 
The truth is so far from what I've always known. Am I really supposed to believe that after all these years, all this time seeking revenge, suddenly now my enemy is my savior? Raman, that's enough. Give it a rest. You're starting to make a fool of yourself. <laughs> Dia, tell me. My Aramites and I, what are we even fighting for? Hey, how you doing? Eh, I'll live. <laughs> Thanks. I should probably go. Can't just stay here forever. What's your next move gonna be? Oh, I know what you're going to ask. I feel deeply ashamed of everything I've done. You'll get everything you're asking for. But please, uh, give me some time. After everything that's happened here today, somehow I need to explain it to the others. It's not gonna be easy. Well, I guess that's for me to deal with. Dia, uh, this is where our camp's located. Make a note of it. When would be a good time for us to go? Tomorrow. I'll convince everyone that we're all on the same side. And I'll return every last one of your mad, uh, sorry, your village keepers. We'll share our other resources with you, too. You seem to finally understand that our true enemy is the Sages. Yes. The gods never gave up on anyone. It's the people responsible for all of this that need to face the consequences of their actions. That must have been rough, but he seems to have figured things out now. <sighs> Rahman's no fool. Being the leader of your own faction in the desert is no easy feat. It's too bad he was held back by his belief in the Scarlet King. But now that that's changed, I guess we have a few more people on our side. The outcome, at least, is favorable. We should get going, too. Let's head back, have a proper meal, and a nice... long sleep. We'll need all our energy tomorrow. Hmm... Sino, we're leaving! Stop yelling. Raman, we're here. Everything's been arranged. Someone will bring the village keepers back to Aru village shortly. I guess all I can say now is... Thanks for agreeing to help. Ah, don't mention it. I think we can both agree you went to hell and back for it. But we share a common cause now. From here on out, we're allies. Where are the perpetrators? I'll bring you to them. Follow me. So these are the people who kidnapped the village keepers. Oh no, it's the scribe! There's no need to yell. No one can help you now. We've been all over the desert trying to find you! That's right. General Mahamatra? No, no. Make it quick, please. Swift and painless. Whoa. The moment they set eyes on Sino, they turned pale like they've seen a ghost. You should have known that I would be coming for you. Wait, we were just following orders. You know what I'm talking about, right? There's no way we could have done all this by ourselves. No, not Sino. He's gonna tear us limb from limb. I could do worse. Please have mercy. Start talking. Otherwise, I'll have to resort to other methods. So, your superiors have kept you quite busy recently. Why? What are they trying to accomplish? Uh, they, um, wanted to extract canned knowledge. 
Don't play dumb. You know what I'm really asking. They extract divine canned knowledge. Then what? I... I, I don't, really don't know how to explain it. Well, you better start talking or you'll be sorry! You don't want to make things any more difficult for yourself, do ya? Be my guest. Huh? Huh? Uh-huh. That sure didn't sound like a fancy metaphor or anything. You're serious, aren't you? How did you know? There's no use hiding it now. Yes, you're right. The Academia is working on an important and potentially world-changing project. They are creating a new god. A god that will belong to them and to the people of Sumeru. It may seem as if Sumeru's academics are thriving, but ever since the death of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, scholarly breakthroughs have been few and far between. The withering of Ermin's soul has been getting worse recently. The sages have tried everything they could think of, but nothing's worked. I'm always hearing them say things like, if only Greater Lord Ruka Devata was still with us. Continue. And then, someone from the Fatui showed up. They called him the Doctor. He brought a, a, a gnosis and said he wanted to borrow the Academia's research facilities. The doctor was previously expelled from the Academia. At first, the sages looked down at him in disdain. But when he said those words, everyone's expression changed. He asked them, do you wish to create a god? This is what the arrogant ignorance at the extreme end of Academia looks like. First... The Academia spent a long time constructing a divine vessel, which was based on an exquisite humanoid puppet. After that, they harvested dreams via the Seb Zerus Festival Samsara, maximizing the Akasha's output. With the Doctor's help, and the Akasha now functioning at maximum efficiency, they were able to use it to extract the power from the Gnosis and convert it into a divine core. Next, they decided that their new god needed to possess divine wisdom. For that to happen, they needed a huge quantity of divine canned knowledge. It adds up. But how do you determine whether the knowledge extracted is of divine origin? Call it an educated guess? The Academia has been trying to figure out the exact source of the Scholar's Madness for centuries, but to no avail. Nobody can explain the cause of this phenomenon. Uh, surely you can see what that implies, Scribe Al-Haytham. If it's knowledge no mortal can comprehend, then it must be something only gods are able to decipher. In other words, it's the source of the God of Wisdom's omniscience and omnipotence. Hmm. You must have noticed by now. The Academia doesn't care about who their god is. It's the ability to exercise control over knowledge and wisdom that matters. It is as if they are cursed with a desire for omniscience and omnipotence that burns in their blood. Some organisms demonstrate phototaxis, and thus orient their entire lives in respect to sources of light. For the sages, their only source of hope is the existence of a deity who embodies the acme of wisdom. This is but a form of phototaxis. For many scholars, the absence of a god of wisdom means stumbling in the darkness for the duration of their lives. Then what does Lesser Lord Kusanali mean to you? Is she not a true god present in this world? If you already have a new god, why try to create another one? From the beginning, the Academia has never treated her as a god. When the Academia first discovered Lesser Lord Kusanali, the newborn god of wisdom, the sages hoped that she would be as wise as Greater Lord Ruka Devada, but upon evaluation, they found that at the time she possessed no more intelligence than any ordinary human child. The sages never had a ruder awakening. This forced them to accept that Greater Lord Ruka Devada had indeed passed away. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali's Gnosis had been used to power the Akasha this entire time. By herself, she has neither an Archon's raw power nor the spectacular insight expected of a god of wisdom. Slowly but surely, people began to forget about her existence. So, this is the path the sages have chosen. Uh, 
All right, let's try to keep our cool. If everyone's in a bad mood, then let's change up our scenery. Raman, give me a few men to help us escort the village keepers back to the village. And these two scholars, they're coming too. Sure, as you wish. The village keepers you've found have all been returned to their homes, and each one has a dedicated caregiver to look after them. The two new scholars are being kept under close supervision, too. Really great work, everyone. Uh, the atmosphere is so heavy. Hey, say something! Stop spacing out! Come on, is there nothing left to talk about? In that case, let's all get some water and try to think about something else. Or I can go fetch some snacks. Oh, Paimon's so coming with you! Do you have any plans, Traveler? Gods above, you're not talking about work, are you? Hmm. So you were still withholding some information? to hear you talk about it again. What a whirlwind of a story. I felt like I was holding my breath the whole time. It seems like there will be more issues to face in the days ahead than I had anticipated. Hmm. Still, now's a good time to make our next move. Now that Raman's joined us, we'll be an even stronger team. It's time to make a plan. Indeed. These events are a flagrant transgression of the rules in every sense. We cannot allow it to continue. So, everyone, are we on the same page? Crush the sages and rescue our god. That is our ultimate goal. Well, let's brainstorm a little more about what other resources we can draw on. The next time we gather here, we must have a solid plan. Yep, it'll work out for sure. What should I do now? <sighs> if only Sino was still around. Uh, excuse us. Has something happened? Oh, I appreciate the concern, but who are you? Ah, friends of Sino. Well, I suppose it's not a secret or anything. Since you two are interested, I'll just lay it out for you. My name is Nabil. I'm a Matra in the Academia. A case involving the smuggling of canned knowledge has come to our attention recently, but unfortunately, we don't have the people to handle it at the moment. Huh? You mean the Academia is short on Matra right now? Well, not exactly. I suppose the main problem is that the case suddenly came up after General Mahamatra Sino left to go somewhere. It would be a real headache for us to tackle the case ourselves. Given the large scope of the issue, we talked things over internally and decided that we should find further assistance from outside the Matra. If you two have some time, would you lend us your strength? Hmm. All right. Since you asked so nicely, we'll help. Yes. Large amounts of canned knowledge from unknown origins have been appearing on the market recently. We suspect there's a secret route being used to move the capsules. According to some research, 
Using large amounts of canned knowledge could lead to some serious consequences. And, unfortunately, most people have yet to realize that. Rumors also have it that some particularly dangerous canned knowledge has made its way into the market. Regardless of whether the rumors are true or not, this case calls for urgent action. According to our current leads, it's highly likely that there are dealers selling canned knowledge outside the city, even as we speak. If you two could, please help us investigate the area. You can count on us! Let's go! Huh? It's Sino! Uh, what are you doing here? Ah, it's you two. I knew I sensed a familiar presence. I'm currently in the middle of an investigation here. We'll have to chat some other time. There's been a recent case of canned knowledge smuggling. It seems that the smugglers are following an elaborate and dangerous scheme. I just happened to acquire some intel which led me here. Hey, what do you know? We're also here to investigate that! I see. Well, the situation might be more problematic than you anticipated. I've already questioned several people, but gained very little information. Long story short, I was able to learn of the secret location where the canned knowledge is being sold. You're welcome to accompany me if you're interested. Whoa, that sounds pretty complicated. But having Sino around will definitely make things easier. Alright, let's go round up those bad guys! Is this all you got? Hmm... Seems even less than last time. What difference does it make? If you see something you like, buy it. If not, then keep walking. They've been cracking down on us lately, so we don't have much on hand. If you see something that catches your eye, then now's your chance. There's no telling when we'll have more. <sighs> what does the Academia think they're doing? Alright, I'll take these here. Let me see what else you have. Now, I don't see any real gems in this batch. It's all pretty ordinary stuff. Whatever, how much do I owe you? 150k. Show us the Mora, and you'll get the goods. Put the Mora down and your hands up. Huh, it it's Sino! <sighs> When's he ever gonna let up? Hey, forget the goods! Let's split! But don't forget the Mora! Done, done! Not so fast! You can't escape with Paimon on the case! What is this? He's got backup now? Doesn't everyone say Sino works alone? Ugh, I don't like the looks of this. Either way, it's gonna be a tough fight. Any ideas? It's over. It's not like we're making a big cut anyway. I'm not losing my life here. Huh? Did they really just give up like that? Just like the others I've caught. They're not deep in the circle, just dealers at the bottom of the chain. All right. I have one question and one question only. Where did you get this canned knowledge? Uh, well, uh, the pickup location is different every time. The boss tells us where it's gonna be and that's it. We don't get a say in it. He sends someone every five days to bring us the goods. And when is the next batch coming? I, I, I don't know. He's telling the truth, honest. Normally, we should have received a shipment three days ago, but we didn't get anything. The stock we have right now is from eight days ago, which is why there isn't much left. I know exactly why they didn't receive their last batch. Three days ago is exactly when I started my investigation. I suspect who's ever running this whole thing knew that I was coming. So they cut all contact with these dealers. When you were trying to escape, you said something about me working alone. Where did you hear that from? Are you kidding? We've known your name since day one in this business. 
The boss warned us to watch out and even gave us info about you. But here we are. I guess we never stood a chance. <laughs> they already knew all about me and were trying to avoid being detected from the very beginning. These small fries are the only ones they leave out in the open. And no matter how many we catch, it won't further our investigation. If only we had another lead. Like a merchant who sells large amounts of canned knowledge. Hmm. Do you have a potential suspect? You'd better bring them to me for judgment. Uh, whoa! Judgment? That's right. I won't turn a blind eye on any dangerous suspect. Oh! Uh, sounds like we shouldn't ever let Sino meet Dory. I see. Anyway, I'll think of a way to deal with these two and then continue gathering information. If you manage to learn anything, you can find me a Caravan Rebot. And as for you, I don't ever want to catch you buying canned knowledge again. If you possess any unused knowledge capsules, then you should submit them to the authorities immediately. Okay, okay, I got it. Just keep your nose out of my business. Hey! What's with the attitude, mister? What, you got a problem with that too? Listen, buying canned knowledge is a deal between two people. The buyer and the seller. We don't need people like you buttoning in on our business here. Think about it. If the academia is hoarding something as convenient and useful like canned knowledge, then they must have been planning only to use it for themselves. Am I right? The Academia has clearly published the potential dangers of canned knowledge. I don't like having to repeat things. And besides, I'm sure you wouldn't listen anyway. I just hope you understand that your actions are what fuels the smuggling of canned knowledge. If I ever catch you again, I will personally see to it that you are punished. Alright, Traveler. I need to go now. You... you think you can scare me? <sighs> Traveler, why don't we go talk to Dory? She's got loads of connections and might be able to tell us something about all this. Hmm, if Paimon remembers correctly, she's usually at the Palace of Alcazar's Array. Let's go! I see, I see. So that's the latest scoop. <laughs> Good thing you didn't rat me out. Otherwise, who knows where I'd have to be hiding to avoid attention. No idea. Sorry. I've already cashed out of the canned knowledge business. Huh? You mean you stopped selling it? That's right. With so much canned knowledge flooding the market, it was becoming impossible to fetch decent prices anymore. Besides, it seems that group of smugglers has practically taken over the market. It's a little rule of mine to never fight for a share of someone else's market. If I'm gonna make Mora, it's gonna be the lion's share. Plus, with regulations getting as tight as they are now, I figured I might as well just hang it up. Aw, oh, sounds like we came all this way for nothing! Well, not completely. Granted, I don't know who's behind all the smuggling activity, but since you didn't sell me out, I'll let you in on what I do know. After all, those smugglers have really crossed the line, butting their way into the market like that. I hope their luck runs out soon so that I can take over. <clears throat> I mean, so that the industry can become more fairly regulated. Hey, you just want to make more business for yourself. <laughs> Don't underestimate its value. Think about it. You can gain all sorts of knowledge while bypassing the troublesome process of studying. Naturally, that makes it a product worth a high price. Of course, not everyone needs that kind of knowledge, but in a market as big as Sumeru, there is plenty of demand. 
Plus, the cost of production is relatively low, so even if dealers have to cover transportation costs, there's still an enormous profit to be made. Then why does the Academia prohibit selling canned knowledge? <laughs> Being able to gain complex knowledge and become a scholar with the snap of your fingers does sound like a dream, doesn't it? But everything in the world comes at a price, right? Gaining knowledge is a complicated process. It requires learning, thinking, and practice. Even when it comes to my own business, I have to go through a lot of preparation before I put anything out for sale. But with canned knowledge, one may simply skip all the hassle and get whatever they need to know immediately. That inherently leads to at least two potential problems. First, you'll accept the knowledge as factual without a second thought, and you'll find it very hard to forget. This means that if the knowledge is flawed, then it'll be very difficult to correct. And second, excess use of knowledge capsules over an extended time diminishes your ability to think. You'll end up becoming like a library that can only store knowledge. Oh, that does sound pretty dangerous. Traveler, you used canned knowledge before. Did you feel any negative effects? Of course, using it sparingly is not an issue, which is exactly why I used to sell it. It's just like how medicine can be used to cure diseases, but can also do harm when overused. It all comes down to balancing the right amount. <clears throat> anyway, back to the point. There'll be consequences if the sale of canned knowledge by those smugglers is left unchecked. And what's worse, you're playing right into their hands by focusing only on the canned knowledge that's made its way into the market. As far as I know, their real purpose is to distribute information about the Court of Desolation. That's where the real business opportunity is. The Court of Desolation? What's that? Rumor has it that it's a site of ruins from the age of the Scarlet King. It's said that with the treasures inside, one can see beyond life and death. But any research of the ruins is strictly banned by the Academia. Word on the street is that there'll be an auction taking place in the desert. They're auctioning rare canned knowledge, some of which is related to the Court of Desolation. Once I heard about the auction, I began to suspect that all the canned knowledge popping up on the market is just a diversion. I'd wager that their real target is the Court of Desolation. Because studying those ruins is not just a simple matter. It requires knowledge spanning several fields. So, if they're aiming to quickly assemble a research team, can knowledge would be the best solution. As for the auction, chances are they're trying to attract and scout out anyone with interest or expertise on the subject. On the other hand, no one can say for sure that they will ever succeed in finding the Court of Desolation. So, they might as well just make a fortune while they're at it, by hyping up the related canned knowledge at the auction. Hmm. Sounds to Paimon like we better head to the desert and see the auction. Who knows, we might find some leads there. That's right. And now that I've shared all that valuable info with you, it's time to introduce our limited edition desert travel kit. It comes complete with a map straight to the auction location. As I said, I also have to make preparations before I sell things, right? Now, let me consider how much I should sell this for. I've got it! 500,000 more per kit! That's quite the bargain. We'll even offer a 50% discount for Little Paimon's travel kit. Only 250,000 Mora. What? That's super expensive! No need to worry, little one. Sino's the one heading this investigation, isn't he? I'll be sure to bill all the expenses to him. All you'll need to do is tell him to go to the Merchant's Guild and pay the bill once the mission is completed. Just, uh, be sure to not send him directly here, though, okay? That would leave me completely in the open. I'm sure the former General Mahamatra of the Academia would never leave any debt unpaid. Oh, the Mora. I can see it already. Loads of shiny Mora coming Dory's way. Uh, we'd better get going. If Dory keeps at it, we'll be out of Mora. Sino! We got 
bad news for you. What the smugglers are really after is a chance to research the Court of Desolation. They are hosting an auction in the desert to sell canned knowledge about those ruins. The Court of Desolation. I won't ask how you came by this intel, but is it reliable? We also heard that the Court of Desolation contains treasures from the time of the Scarlet King. Is that true? Partially. It was a secret place built by a dark sect from the age of the Scarlet King. The ruins do contain treasures, but the place is also rife with unknown dangers. According to past research, one must forfeit their life as the price of entering. They are not some ordinary ruins, so the Academia has strictly prohibited any related research. However, if they are using the Kant knowledge as a way to move information and recruit researchers, then I suppose your conclusion does hold some validity. <sighs> Regardless, less in recent years, but there are always those who attempt to do so, both inside and outside the Academia. After all, legends claim that whoever obtains the treasures inside can see beyond life and death, or even resurrect the dead. Death is often the greatest grievance for many people. Though they're fully aware that the chance of these rumors being true are slim, they hold tight to such fantasies and pursue them regardless. That's why some continue to research it, regardless of it being a restricted subject. On top of that, it's hard to track the source of information contained in canned knowledge. Do you know where the auction is taking place? Good. We'll go investigate. But before that, we'll have to get rid of these people tailing us. People tailing us? That's right. Let's begin to leave town and see what happens. I'm sure they'll reveal themselves as soon as we make a move. Don't worry. I'll make short work of them. That's Sino for ya. But we can lend a hand too, you know! Hold it right there. Heading to the desert, are we? I would think twice if I were you. That doesn't matter. All you need to know is that someone wishes to inform you that it's not too late to turn back. Ah, uh, you must be Sainu. I've heard a lot about you. You've got quite a reputation. But this time you're in over your head. Unless you turn around right now, I'm afraid that even you won't return unscathed. And as for you two, why bother sticking your noses in trouble that doesn't even concern you, hmm? Ha! <laughs> Have you really thought it through? You're not just doing this for recognition, are you, Sino? My employer said that he's willing to compromise as long as you just walk away. He could, for example, reduce the amount of canned knowledge on the market. I'm sure that would help your investigation appear to be successful enough. On top of that, he's willing to give you a cut of the profit. So you see, you get both Mora and a boost to your reputation. I can't think of a reason why you would pass that up. Is that so? Well, I can't think of a reason why I'd accept. I've heard enough. Get out of my way. Sorry, no can do. We're getting paid to ensure you disappear. Since you won't turn back willingly, then we're gonna have to make you go back. Yeah! Amateur wind strider! Yeah! Regret. Ugh! This doesn't change anything! You're in over your head, Sino! There will be others coming for you! You'll regret it! Let's get out of here! <sighs> no need. Even if we apprehend them, there'll be little information to gain. Besides, 
it might also be a trap. I apologize for bringing you into this dangerous mess. Just being associated with me will inevitably cause you to become targets as well. You should be careful from now on. Sleep with one eye open. Wait, hold on! There's no way anyone could sleep without closing their eyes! Uh, right? You'd be surprised. Anyway, just be careful. Mercenaries are never quick to forget. In their line of work, even a single failure is bad for reputation. They may even stay hidden in some dark corner for a very long time. Waiting for the right moment to ambush you. They'll do anything to keep their prestige intact. Yes. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was carrying out a mission with one of my superiors. I didn't have much experience at the time. And I let my guard down after we had closed the case. We ended up being attacked by the remainder of the mercenaries. My superior was injured while protecting me. And we struggled to gain control of the situation. <sighs> I've become more vigilant ever since. Staying alert even while I sleep. Was he okay? He survived with a fractured wrist. It took two months for him to recover. But luckily, there weren't any further complications. Last year, he transferred to an administrative role for personal reasons, and no longer participates in live missions. His name is Taj Ratkani, a very well-respected Matra. You'll have the chance to meet him someday. Anyway, our mission will be dangerous. I'm already used to such grueling conditions, but I don't want to see you two get hurt. Don't worry, I'm almost stay alert. We'll see danger coming a mile away! Good. Don't worry, it won't be long till we're at the bottom of this. And once this is all over, I'll sweep away any other hidden dangers. We still have a long way to go, so you'll need to hang in there for a while longer. This is not a good place to rest anyway. Uh, okay, but don't you feel hot too, Sino? Of course, but I'm accustomed to these conditions. Care to share any tips? Paimon's about to melt away. Just try to stay focused. Use your willpower to support your mind. The moment you start to give in is when you'll feel more tired. Take one step after another. Don't let your mind perceive your body's limitations. We must get somewhere safe before we can relax. Uh, okay, if you say so. But where would be a more safe place to rest? Paimon thinks this is a perfectly safe place to stop. Just look around, it's just sand and desert. There aren't any monsters for miles around. Whoa! Where did these scorpions come from? Watch out. Something's not right about them. One with nature. Those weren't just normal scorpions. See? There are marked numbers on their pincers. They were raised by someone. Someone doesn't want us to show up at the auction. These scorpions were sent to keep us away. We are surrounded by desert as far as the eye can see. If we were killed out here, nobody would ever know. This place is super dangerous! Good thing we didn't let our guard down! Something's not right. There are no roads in the desert, so how could they know where we are? Stay still. 
Here's the answer. It must have planted this on you. Huh? What is it? A miniature tracking device made by the Kasharawar. They can use this to discern your approximate location. But this device wasn't licensed for mass production. <laughs> Where did they get it? Could someone from the Kasharawar also be involved? Hmm. <laughs> but that doesn't seem right. Why would it be on her? They probably planted it on the Traveler during our fight with the mercenaries earlier. It was a frantic fight. It's only natural you didn't notice the device. <sighs> well, good thing you were able to find it, Sino. Now let's get rid of it. Hmm. No. Hold on to it for now. It might still be useful for us. Let's keep heading to the auction. It would be dangerous to linger here any longer. Weird. Is this where the auction is? Yeah. Not a single soul. Maybe they're on break right now or something. They didn't waste any time getting here after we defeated those mercenaries. They shouldn't have been able to give any warning of our arrival. But even so, they still knew we were coming. Someone here must have been watching the tracker, and warned everyone to clear out. Aww, what should we do now? We searched the area. They couldn't have moved all the knowledge capsules so quickly. There might still be something left for us to find. All right, let's take a good look around the area. Did you find anything? No, nothing in particular. It's possible there weren't many knowledge capsules containing info about the Court of Desolation, so they carried those off. But don't worry, I have another idea. You two start heading back the way we came. I will remain hidden here. Come back and meet me here after some time has passed. I'm sure something will come up by then. They packed up in a hurry and didn't have time to carry off all their goods. They won't just leave them here. Once they think we've left the premises, they'll be back to pick up their belongings. We just need to make sure the tracker goes far enough from here to make them assume that it's safe to come back. That's it. We'll lure them out because they'll think we've left. Okay, we'll start heading away and leave this place to you. Yes, and don't worry. If they dare to return, I'll make sure they stay. Ugh, so tired. We've probably gone far enough now, right? Further? But Paimon can't go another step. How about we rest here for a while? Hmm. It's probably about time for us to head back to the auction. Let's go. Maybe Sino's finally found some leads. Oh, looks like Sino caught someone. So you're the bad guy behind all this, aren't ya? All right, tell Paimon everything you know! I didn't act immediately when he showed up. Rather, I would laid low and observed for a while instead. He is not the primary instigator, but he is most likely one of the more important dealers here. Am I right? Yes, impressive. You certainly live up to your reputation, Sino. If I had any idea you were still around, I wouldn't have gotten so greedy. Huh? Greedy? What do you mean by that? Once everyone knew you were coming, all the canned knowledge dealers abandoned their goods and fled at once. Obviously, there wasn't time to pack up everything. Since all the goods were just left here unsupervised, I thought I'd use the opportunity to come back and take what I could. You know, free merchandise is good business, but... I suppose there's no use explaining it now. 
You must know who's manufacturing and selling the Kant knowledge, correct? Will you tell us willingly? Or do I need to make you talk? No, no. I'll talk. But before that, perhaps we can take the conversation elsewhere? If we stay here, chances are that someone will see me with you. That would put both me and my family in danger. All right. Where do you suggest we go? How about my home in Aru Village? It should be safe there. Fine. Let's head out. You can throw away the tracker now, Traveler. Listen, buddy, you better not try to trick us! Come on now. Do you really think I'd try to pull anything under Sino's watch? Seriously, what can I even do? Follow the wind. Dad, you're back. Oh, we have guests. Uh, hi there. This is my daughter, Seeming. She can be a little shy of strangers. Why don't you run along now, dear? Dad needs to talk with our guests. Oh. Okay. Everyone knows Sino in our business, but let me ask, who are you two? Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler! To be honest, I really didn't expect to see Sino, the lone operator, working with any partners. When I saw the tracker start moving away, I assumed you had decided to just go back empty-handed. But even though you caught me, I'd still urge you to stop while you still can. You should abandon this investigation. Why is that? Everything from the manufacturing of canned knowledge to the sales and even splitting the profits. Every step of the process involves dozens, if not hundreds of people. Massive profits have brought everyone together in this business. Everyone will try their best to defend this industry that we've worked to build. It will be a long and difficult fight, even for you, Sino. And even if you manage to win in the end, no one will thank you. If anything, you yourself might even feel remorse. Why are you so bent on putting us out of business? Everyone has their own reasons for what they do. I don't have to explain mine. <sighs> Here's some tea, Dad. And for the guests, too. Uh, right. I forgot to offer tea to our guests. <laughs> Thank you. Don't mention it. And, uh, I should tell you that our tea tastes kind of bitter, but I put some sugar in to make it a little tastier. That's my girl. Do we still have any sugar left? If not, I'll buy some more next time. Yes, we do. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go have a rest now. Didn't you say that everyone's in it for the massive profits? That sure doesn't seem to be the case for you. <clears throat> Actually, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I... was hoping to ask you for a favor. My daughter was born with a chronic disease, so she has a relatively weak heart and lungs. Even slightly strenuous exercise can cause her to faint and prove to be a life-threatening risk. That's why she never really had any friends to play with, and why she locks herself up in her room most of the time. She has to take lots of medicine, and it doesn't come cheap. As for me, I was just an average merchant, I would wake up early and travel all around to make a profit. But the mora was still nowhere near enough. I could only watch my daughter's health deteriorate day by day. Until one day, someone reached out and showed me a way to really make a profit. 
selling canned knowledge. That's right. With all the mora I made, I could finally afford medical treatment for my daughter. Nothing made me happier than seeing her get better. There are many others like me. Smuggling canned knowledge might seem like an unforgivable crime to you, but to us, it's a means of survival. I wanted to tell you all this so that maybe you could understand and change your mind. Please, stay out of this, Sino. Give us a way to survive. Oh no. That means that if we prevent the sale of canned knowledge, his daughter will... <laughs> I must get to the truth. I can find someone to help treat your child, but I cannot turn a blind eye to the smuggling. These are two completely different issues. <sighs> I somehow knew you would say that. But having your word to help my daughter is enough for me. Since you insist on continuing the investigation, you should have a look around the back of my home. You'll find some goods I received just recently. I think everything will become clear to you once you see them. Yes, all neatly packed away and organized in boxes. To think that this is only one dealer's worth. Small producers could impossibly support such a large quantity of goods. Hmm. Could the academia have a hand in this? But such a volume of goods wouldn't be able to slip through inspection. Huh? Look! These seem different from the other knowledge capsules we've seen. Maybe they contain knowledge about the Court of Desolation. Yes, that would make sense. Wait, what's this? Yes, it's a Matra seal, indicating that the goods have passed Matra inspection. I started to suspect that someone in the Academia might be involved when I found the tracker earlier. But how they could ship so much canned knowledge out of the Academia was still a mystery. The pieces have now all fallen into place. With this Matra seal, goods can leave the Academia without undergoing a second inspection. <laughs> no wonder they don't want me to investigate. It turns out that a Matra is behind this. Even I find it hard to believe. Could I ask you for a favor, Traveler? Since all this canned knowledge came from the Academia, then it's highly likely that the knowledge regarding the Court of Desolation originated from research files stored within the Academia. If we can enter the repository, we can find out who accessed these files. But, considering my current status, if I suddenly show up at the Academia now, it will only draw unnecessary attention. You'll need to be the one who checks the records. I'll write a letter to Nabil, and he'll take you there. Sure thing! Leave it to us! I'll also keep working here in the meantime. Although our leads are all currently pointing to someone within the Academia, it's obvious that they also have power outside of it. We can get more information on other dealers from Bahari. I'll stay here and make some preparations. You can come find me any time if you uncover more info. Hello, we meet again. How's the investigation going? Oh, so you were able to find Sino after all. I hope he's doing all right. I read the letter and must admit that I hadn't expected things to be so serious. Sorry, had I known it would be so dangerous, I never would have gotten you two involved. It's alright, we wanted to help Sino too! <laughs> I can tell that he really trusts you. The research files stored away in the restricted repository are far from ordinary. Everything there is essentially about dangerous research that's forbidden by the Academia. Even I don't usually have authorization to enter. But with this letter from Sino, it shouldn't be a problem. 
That's right. Granted, the academia is very supportive when it comes to research. They encourage scholars to conduct all kinds of studies. However, some forms of research have proven to be so dangerous that the Matra have to step in and put a stop to them. Normally, after some particular research becomes prohibited, the majority of the related files will be destroyed. But some information may be retained as a record to warn later researchers. Such information is kept in the restricted repository, which is heavily guarded. Follow me, I'll show you. Hopefully, we'll find the answers that Sino is looking for. The restricted repository? Uh, sounds kinda dangerous. We'd better keep an eye out. Okay, I understand. Since Sino is vouching for you, I suppose we can trust you. You may browse the information regarding the Court of Desolation. Ask me if you have any questions. But I'd suggest avoiding any other research files. Sometimes the less you know, the better. Huh. So this is the restricted repository. I never thought I'd see the inside of it. This is a first for both you and me. There are many who do not openly converse with others within the Academia. But even so, there are very few who I feel could be trusted with a real secret. Sino happens to be one of them. Even though he's no longer in the Academia, I still trust him. And that goes for anyone he trusts as well. The files are over there. Just make it quick. His former partner? That would be Taj Radkani. But you're not far off. Mortada Radkani was Taj's only son. What? Taj's son went to prison for researching the Court of Desolation? Why do you sound so surprised? You're a Matra, aren't you? It's just that... They arrested him in secret, so it was never publicly known. All I knew was that Taj's son was taken to prison. It's not just me. I, I bet even Sino didn't know about it. No. Unfortunately, there isn't. He took his own life not long after he went to prison. You've heard about Taj, right? I know Nabil has. Every Matra knows him. I would say he's probably pushing 50 this year, which makes him one of the most experienced Matra. He is a man of integrity and honesty and has made countless achievements. His reputation goes back a long way now. He used to be Sino's only partner. Taj is also skilled with a polearm, so the two of them used to practice together when they weren't out on a mission. Ah, right. I heard Sino mention that before. But one day, Taj suddenly decided to retire from active duty and transfer to an administrative position. I wonder if it had anything to do with the Mortada incident. Taj was already very well known by the time Mortada was born. So when Mortada came to study at the Academia, everyone had high expectations of him. He had to face a lot of pressure. Then he had an unpleasant dispute with his father, but they were eventually able to work things out. Not long after they had reconciled, Mortada was caught studying the Court of Desolation, which is in violation of Academia rules. Taj arrested his son and put him behind bars. He begged for leniency, but Taj wouldn't agree. Shortly after, Mortada slit his own throat with the pieces of a broken bowl. By the time Taj arrived at the scene, it was already too late. He never had a last chance to see his son. Since then, Taj has been periodically coming to the repository. He'll hold the files from his son's research with a remorseful look on his face. I guess that's why he chose to move to administrative work. I had no idea that happened. That must be really hard for Taj. 
I've never heard him mention that to anyone. Oh, that's awful. Paimon feels terrible now. Are you okay, Traveler? Wait, don't tell me you're starting to suspect Taj now. Impossible. Taj would never do that. I mean, yes, he does have a big reputation and has access to such research, but this is Taj we're talking about. He would never do anything against regulations. Never. But if you claim that the canned knowledge was originating from the academia, then Taj is indeed a suspect. Because he was the only one who could have recently gone through research files about the Court of Desolation. There are so many files about those ruins that it would be difficult to restart any research, since the seven original researchers were put behind bars. It's hard enough just trying to make sense of these files. However, if the files were made into canned knowledge, they could be understood immediately. By doing so, one could restart the research outside the academia without anyone ever noticing. But even so... According to the legends, the treasures inside the Court of Desolation could allow someone to see beyond life and death. Or even bring the dead back to life, right? So maybe Taj is trying to bring Mortada back. Though I don't really believe Taj would ever try to do something like that. I'm just telling you what I know. It's the job of the Matra to find the truth and track down criminals. Do you have any questions? If not, it'd be best if you would leave now. Uh, Paimon's kinda confused. What should we do from here? Oh, now that I think about it, Sino suspected that the canned knowledge was coming from within the academia, right? There's no way so many boxes could ever get through without drawing any attention. Maybe we could try asking people around the gate of the academia and see what we can find. Don't worry, Tosh. I won't let your reputation be tarnished. Alrighty then, let's go ask around. Excuse me, have you seen any large shipments of goods leaving the academia recently? Huh, well, yes, but... Isn't that pretty normal? The academia consumes so many resources each day, everything from cooking ingredients, raw materials, even equipment for experiments. It's normal for goods to be coming in and out. Right, but we're looking for shipments with a matra seal. Have you seen any like that? That I'm not too sure of. I normally wouldn't notice whether the goods have any seals or not. Maybe you should ask someone else. Excuse me. Have you seen any large shipments of goods leaving the Academia recently? Huh? Why do you ask? I'm just checking to ensure nothing unusual has happened. Well, I can't say it's unusual, but I did notice something. There's a Kashar Rar researcher who's been making frequent shipments recently. A dozen of large boxes each time, if not more. When I asked him about it, he said they just contained a bunch of old worn-out machines. The Kashar Rawar used to often sell scrap machines to traveling merchants, so I didn't really think anything of it. But he's been making a lot of shipments lately. There weren't ever so many outdated machines before. And you didn't find that suspicious? Why didn't you report it for inspection? Well, the boxes were stamped with a Matra seal. Why should I bother? Hmm, of course, I did start to wonder about the seal once thinking that maybe they forged it or something. But you know what happened? A man named Taj came here and told me that he'd already inspected the goods personally and ordered me to leave the researcher alone. I couldn't question his word, could I? Possible. There must be some sort of mistake. There's no way Taj would ever... No, I won't believe it. Taj is an honorable man. Someone must be trying to frame him. Wait, I know another Matra who works with Taj. I can ask him to let us speak with Taj. <sighs> As I've already told you, I don't have any way to contact Taj. A few Aramites showed up looking for Taj yesterday, and he met with them in his office. 
I was standing outside of the door and I vaguely heard them say, found it. Before I realized it, the door opened and Taj left with the group of them. I noticed that he had also changed into Aramite attire. But Taj didn't come to work today, so I've also started to feel a little concerned about the whole thing. If you'd like to speak with him, uh, maybe you can try visiting his home. He lives just on the outskirts of Sumeru City. A group of Aramites? Could Taj really be the one making all the canned knowledge? N no way. Taj is just like Sino. They're considered heroes among the Matra. There is no way that he would... Fine. Looks like there's no other choice. Hey, don't let it get to you just yet. We'll get to the bottom of this once and for all. So, this is Taj's place. Hmm. There doesn't seem to be anyone here. Well, what should we do then? Do we break in? No, no. Wait, the door's unlocked. It did Tosh leave in a hurry? Well, anyway, we're still not sure if he's the real culprit. Probably not a good idea to go in without permission. <sighs> You're right. Even if we apply for a warrant now, we won't be able to do anything until tomorrow at the earliest. This is an emergency. I just hope Tosh doesn't mind. What's this? It's a paper full of names written on it. Oh, and a map! Uh, Nabil, can you make any sense of this? Uh, yes. This is definitely Taj's handwriting. These papers look like records. These are the transactions between Taj and some other people. From the look of the numbers, the scale of this smuggling case is absolutely massive. The whole operation involves more than 300 people, including dozens of celebrities. These are famous scholars, merchants, mercenaries. I have a feeling that Sino might be unaware of what he's up against. There's no way anyone could face such a large organization on their own. You're right, that's just who he is. As for the map, it appears to indicate the location of the Court of Desolation. Let's take it to Sino and let him decide how to proceed. If Taj really has turned on his honor and committed these terrible acts, then I suspect that he might already be at the Court of Desolation as we speak. I don't want to suspect him, but I also don't know him very well. Maybe Sino will know what to do. Alright, we'll give these to Sino and see. Let's go! Well, Sino, what do you make of it? <sighs> Taj. It's been a while since I last saw him. From what I remember, he is a straight-laced man. Although he would resort to extreme measures from time to time, he would never do anything against his beliefs. So do you think he's the one behind all this? I'm still not sure. I cannot imagine how devastating the incident with Mortada was for him. Nor can I deny the possibility that people can change. Whether it's out of love for his son or for other reasons, we have to see for ourselves to judge him. Or rather, the person he's become. That's right. It's clear that he had a hand in this case, yet he made no report of it. There's no doubting that. That's also why I need to see him. I must ask his reasoning and judge him myself. Time is ticking. Let's go. So this is the Court of Desolation. Are there really any treasures buried here? Oh, Paimon's kind of nervous. Could it be dangerous? Don't worry. You'll be safe with me. Look! These 
these walls have definitely seen better days. Was there some sort of fight here? Let's keep going and see what we can find. I know. It's been some time since I've seen you last. I trust you are doing well. Seeing that you've made it all the way here, you must be on the cusp of wrapping up your investigation, I presume. Hmm. <laughs> Even faster than I expected. Is it because you have some new partners now? That's right. This case is nearly closed. But the most important answer still eludes me. Was it all your doing? Smuggling the can to knowledge? The research of the Court of Desolation? <sighs> yes. It was me. Then explain why. That's the difficult part. Let's just say I've changed. I've become a selfish coward who only wants to pursue his own interests. I find that hard to believe. Oh, really? Way I see it, Every person will end up like me sooner or later. When you're young, you press forward, unattached, living solely for the justice in your heart. But as you begin to age, you start to become more cautious. You know many things are wrong, but still turn a blind eye to them. I was the same. I never questioned my actions until Murtada died. I could feel the justice that I once strived to uphold slowly crumbling in my heart. I was completely dedicated to all that I did, but as I grew older, I found myself feeling alone, miserable. Can you imagine what it feels like to not have the will to live, but not be able to die? <sighs> Murtada was sent to prison by my own hands. I set myself on this painful path. My son hated me till the day he died, and now I must live with that pain and regret. I failed him as a father. But now, now I have a chance to make it right. A chance to reunite with him. The Court of Desolation. Here lies the key to overcoming life and death. The power to even bring the dead back to life. So, did you already find what you needed here? <laughs> See this door behind me? Behind it lies the treasures that I seek. I'm so close, Sino. If only you hadn't arrived now, I could already have... Enough conjecture. What has happened is already part of the past. You cannot bring the dead back to life. In the end, the treasures you seek are nothing but myths and legend. Since you're so sure, why don't you just let me open the door and see then? No. I sense danger behind that door. There will be dire consequences the moment you open it. I beg you, as an old partner, can you let me fulfill my last wish just this once? Surely you get it by now. Doing your job without mercy will only drive people away from you. I'm the prime example. I don't overthink things. If there is only one way for me to defend my principles, then that is the path I will take. Seems there's no convincing you. All right then. Let's see if your polearm skills have improved at all.
This power is mine. There is no escape. <laughs> Let me weave you a verse. Rain outlines your the things right no Hear me. Judgment is upon you. <laughs> Illusion That's shattered. Your strength. You feel it, don't you? I'm stronger than you remember. I gained new power when I entered the Chord of Desolation. This is only a taste of it. Once I open the door behind me, this power will be complete. Even life and death will have no grip on me. Uh-oh. We have to stop this guy! I won't let you open that door. I wouldn't be so sure. I'm afraid it won't be easy to stop me now that you're injured. Or are you ready to sacrifice your life for this? I'll do what I have to. <laughs> I still remember when we first became partners. You were always charging forward and putting your life on the line, just like now. Even after all this time, you still haven't changed. You haven't changed either. You left that list of names and map in your house on purpose, didn't you? You wanted me to be able to find you here. All of this was just part of the act you were putting on. What happened just now was also part of your plan. You might have fooled those on the list. But... you will not fool me. I had my suspicions from the beginning. But I couldn't be sure until we fought. If you really had changed... your fighting style wouldn't be as it was before. Huh? What do you mean, Sino? He never planned on opening the door. His true intention was... Uh, what's happening? Seems our time is running short. Let me make this quick then. After Mortada died, my spirit was crushed. For a long time, I was hoping this reality was just some terrible nightmare. I hoped I would just wake up and be able to see his smiling face again. That is when I was approached by someone who wished to collaborate and find the Court of Desolation together. I did some investigation of my own and discovered they were part of a massive organization. People from every walk of life are involved. They are relentless in their search, pouring countless mora into secret research, even sacrificing lives in hopes that the Court of Desolation would appear. No wonder banning the research wasn't enough. A full-scale operation was already in motion. I'm a flesh-and-blood human like anyone else, so I obviously hesitated and considered it. The thought of bringing my son back tugged at my heart, but in the end, <laughs> I came to my senses. I knew that I could not let myself go down that path. I suddenly came to a realization amidst my suffering. The Cord of Desolation, a place that once drove people to tragedy, was still doing so even centuries later. As long as this place exists, people will recklessly seek it out, just as Mortada did, generation after generation. Regardless of the cost, let it be buried beneath the sand forever. Once the Court of Desolation is gone, there will no longer be anyone obsessed with seeking it out. That's right. I acted as if I had abandoned my convictions just so that they would cooperate without raising any suspicion. This was the only way I could find and destroy this place. But that wasn't enough. I needed someone I could trust to bring the organization to justice. The Academia forbids the research of the Court of Desolation, so they would never approve my plan in the first place. To add to the problem, the organization is so powerful that they even have members working within the Academia. If I wish to destroy the organization, 
I couldn't just count on the Academia alone. So, you pretended to be the one behind all this as a test for me. <sighs> yes. I'm sorry, but now I am assured. You haven't changed at all. You are still as you always were, fearless, and making no compromise. Anyway, this place is collapsing. You must leave now. Wait! Aren't you leaving too? There are still loads of bad guys to catch outside! His fate is already sealed. There is no life left inside him. He is like a candle with no more wick to burn. You planned it all from the very beginning, didn't you? Risking being treated as a traitor to collaborate with them. Sacrificing your own life to open and destroy the Court of Desolation. Hmm. Regardless, I made a grave mistake by allowing the smuggling and the research of this place. Let this be the final judgment on myself. I was always so busy with work that I never made time to fulfill Mortada's wishes. <sighs> Finding this place was his biggest wish. Since I'll be reuniting with him here, I can only hope he won't have anything more to hold against me. I'll leave all those people on the list to you. Sorry for all the trouble I've caused. There's nothing to be sorry for. We are partners. If you see Mortada, send him my greetings. Goodbye, old friend. Dad, why are they so strict with me? I'm always the only one who gets in trouble. Just leave me alone! Don't worry, I won't damage your precious reputation. Alright, Dad. Let's start over. By the way, I finally found an area of research I wish to pursue. Why can't you show even a little leniency? Why? Because... We are Matra. Huh? The Court of Desolation has... Just as Taj said, that place had caused too many disasters and tragedies. Being buried in quicksand is its rightful end. To them, as long as there's Mora to be made, they will disregard the Academia's rules, whether it's the Court of Desolation or anything else. Their only goal is to make massive profits off of dangerous research. Taj may have set them back with the Court of Desolation, but it won't be long before they continue searching for another target. That's an opportunity that I will not let them have. We'll help too. Thank you, but you've already done enough. Just leave the rest to me. I will bring them to justice myself. Besides, I promised you that I would sweep away any potential danger. So, that's what I'm going to do. Wait for me a Caravan Rebob four days from now. We meet again. Thank you so much for all your help. Nabil, what are you doing here? Convicts from the desert are being escorted through Caravan Rebot, so I'm here to keep an eye on things. This should be the last group of them, so I'll be heading back to the Academia once they're cleared. The last few days have been quite the ride, but fortunately, I can say with confidence that this case is finally coming to an end. At first, the mercenary groups on the list were putting up quite a fight. They made several desperate attempts to cover up the truth. However, word is that someone crossed the desert and took out their main camp overnight. After that, people on the list started to put pressure on the higher-ups within the Academia. 
everyone was on edge and the case came to a standstill. And? Then what happened? Well, then we received word that Taj Rudkani had sacrificed himself on the case. The news really stirred up the members of our ranks. The Matra then moved together against the enemy. We cleared out the traitors from within the academia and arrested all the researchers on the list. Some of them managed to get out of the academia, but still failed to escape. The scattered criminals were captured all across Sumeru by the mysterious person who had defeated the mercenary groups. I even heard that someone was about to escape to Fontaine, but was still apprehended just at the border. Having more than 300 prisoners apprehended for interrogation has definitely shaken things up recently. So that's the end of it! Catching everyone on the list means no more smuggling can knowledge and no more victims! Oh, it was a lot of work, but Paimon thinks we accomplished something big! That's right. Thanks again for your assistance. As for the mysterious person who hit the mercenary camp, that must be Sino, right? He's the only one I can think of who could accomplish such a feat. Speaking of which, have you been in touch with Sino these days? I think I just saw him when I was on watch nearby. He was walking with someone I didn't recognize, and then before I knew it, they were nowhere to be seen. If you happen to see him, please send my regards. Sure thing, Nibiel. You be careful too. Don't let any of those bad guys escape. Don't worry about me. If anything happens, you can find me at the Academia anytime. Farewell, then. Trying to single-handedly bring 300 people to justice must feel pretty exhilarating. But I can assure you this is certainly not the best solution. I'm aware. However, I learned something unexpected during interrogation. Apparently, someone had enticed Mortada Ratkani into becoming interested in researching the Court of Desolation. Mortada had lived in his father's shadow all his life. Naturally, he wanted to conduct research that would seem groundbreaking and significant. After Mortada died, the organization tried to use Taja's shame regarding his son to add him to their ranks, toying with others' minds treating lives like dirt, and doing anything for their own interests. <sighs> this makes me angry. Fine, I understand. This is a type of trap I've been working on which uses plants. Here, take some just in case you need them next time. If thrown into the mud, the trap will grow rapidly and disperse a pollen that has a paralyzing effect. I don't have much use for the traps these days, but maybe you will and can help me collect more testing data. Sino! Tainari! Oh, so Tainari must be who Nabil saw earlier! Are you also here to see Sino? That's right. Sino asked me to collect some medicinal herbs to treat a girl named Simin. I also dropped by just to check for any injuries. He seems to be fine physically, but he looks a little more lonely than I remember. And Sino, relax. You don't always have to look so serious, you know. Why don't you play more Genius Invocation TCG? Kale has always been a little wary of you, and your stern expression certainly isn't helping. How is Kale these days? She's grown a bit taller, but her grades could use some improvement. She still made many mistakes on her last test, even after I had marked all the important content in the book for her. Her condition seems to be improving lately, so I plan on having her go outside more. It just so happens that I have something she can help me with. Huh? You mean Kale is leaving a video forest? What happened? I've asked her to host some ad hoc lectures to teach the dangers of canned knowledge, as well as how to use it safely. Although we've apprehended all the criminals behind the recent smuggling case, there are many people who are still curious and seek after canned knowledge. So I decided to ask her to work on increasing knowledge and awareness on the topic. Please be sure to keep an eye on her. I will. If anything else happens, the three of you can find me in the Avidya Forest. Take care. I've already caught those who were preparing to attack you in secret. Even if some criminals did slip through our fingers, they wouldn't know that you were involved in the case. So you can relax. But what about you, Sino? 
It's still not time for me to rest yet. Those who died have fulfilled their wishes, but those who are alive must continue pressing forward. I've been thinking about what Taj said in the Court of Desolation these last few days. His words were not empty. People do change, and no belief can completely resist the erosion of time. I just hope my own change will come slowly, so that I can press on a little further. That way, those who see me as their superior, and those who are following in my footsteps, will learn courage from my example, just as I gained courage from my own superiors, and my partner. I'll be fine. I'm also enjoying my chat with you right now, you know. There are many things I feel better about once I start to talk about them. Many people want to go to the desert to offer condolences for Tosh, but I didn't share details with anyone. I'd prefer to avoid revealing the location of the Court of Desolation. One day, I'll gather some flowers that grow in arid desert conditions. And then, I was hoping you'd join me in planting them on the remains of the Court of Desolation. By the way, something strange happened a few days ago. A merchant approached me and requested that I cover the cost of a desert travel kit. One million two hundred and fifty thousand mora. I didn't remember owing anyone mora, especially not that kind of amount. So I arrested the merchant, on charges of provocation and disturbing the peace. Do you know anything about this? Uh, nope. Paimon has no idea what that could be. <laughs> Let me just confirm. Yes, all tasks on the checklist are complete. Traveler, Paimon, we are grateful for your assistance. Thank goodness you were able to come as soon as we contacted you. Who knows how we would have coped with all these commissions otherwise. Uh, it was nothing. The last couple of days have been pretty busy, but it was all super easy stuff, like delivering and escorting goods. When we heard that you were short on people, we thought we were going to be in for another long and drawn-out adventure. Being the seasoned adventurers that you are, it's true that you are suited to work of a much higher caliber than your recent assignments. However, this situation is unavoidable in Mondstadt at this time of year. Huh? Why is that? That's right. This is the ideal season for harvesting crops and fruits. And for the wine capital of Tavat, it's also the all-important winemaking season. Farmers are anxious to sell off their fresh produce, and all the major wine merchants are seeking to purchase top-quality ingredients to make new product. Ah, well no wonder we keep hearing people talking about wine these days. Huh? What do you mean? Seriously? Yes, I swear I'm not making this up. The acting grandmaster wants everyone to gather at headquarters in the main hall. Hurry! We need to leave right now or we'll be late! Hey! W wait up! Uh, why do those two knights look so... flustered? Well, hello there. If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon. What a rare pleasure. Kaya! Just the person we need! Um, why is everyone running off to the Knights of Favonius headquarters all of a sudden? Don't worry. This isn't one of those occasions where you need to come to everyone's rescue. All that's happened is that the Knights of Favonius have just received a letter from the Grand Master. Acting Grand Master Jean will be convening a meeting in the main hall shortly to go through it. Whew. Well, that's a relief. Wait, hold on a second. What did you say again? Grand Master of the Knights of Favonius? That's... isn't that Varka? The leader of that legendary expedition? So, what did Varka say in the letter? How's the expedition going? When are they getting back? Oh, 
So interested in our Grand Master all of a sudden? Never knew you were such a gossip. It's only normal, isn't it? That you'd be curious too if there was someone you'd heard loads about but never met. Even Master Jean says he's a living legend. Oh, pretty hard not to get hyped up after hearing that. Besides, the expedition has been going on for ages. And we still never heard a single thing about what they're up to. <laughs> the acting Grandmaster is very gracious in her appraisal. Varka brought quite a bit of trouble to those around him on the road to becoming a legend. I'll have to tell you about it sometime. Anyway, since this has piqued your interest, why don't you join me at headquarters? And we'll see what the letter says. We do miss our honorary night, after all. It's been quite a long time since your last visit. Sure! Let's go and see what it's all about. Bye, Catherine! See you soon! All right. Take care now. Hmm. It looks like just about everyone's here. Hey there, cutie. Paimon. I didn't know you two would be coming. So you heard about the letter? Yep. We ran into Kaya near the Adventurer's Guild. Oh, wow. Paimon's never seen so many people in the main hall at once before. Oh, Paimon's getting kind of nervous now. <laughs> Don't get too carried away, all right? If I know the Grand Master, the fact that he has the time to be writing letters means it's probably nothing serious. It certainly won't be bad news. Kaya's exaggerating a little, but otherwise I agree. After all, Mika's not the kind of person who'd be able to keep it hidden if something were the matter. The truth would be written all over his face. Over there, look. The kid standing next to Jean in front of the staircase? He used to be a land surveyor in Eula's team. He's very talented in what he does, and a very reliable person. When the expedition team set out, the Grand Master appointed him to be the core member of the frontline team. He's the one that brought back the letter. Please, may I have your attention, everyone? Now that we're all here, let's begin reading out the letter from the Grand Master. <clears throat> Mika... Please, go ahead. Y yes master Jean. Uh, right. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I am Mika, surveyor of the Reconnaissance Company. Uh, recently, I have been taking part in an assignment with the expedition team. I will now be reading Grandmaster Varka's letter aloud for you all. <clears throat> to the Knights of Favonius. Greetings, everyone. This is Varka. The first thing I want to say to you all is please put your minds at ease. The expedition is safe, and all of its members are accounted for. Oh, that's fantastic news. <sighs> My palms are sweating. <sighs> um, may I continue? Go ahead, Mika. All right. Now that your fears are allayed, I trust you'll be ready to listen to the rest of my letter. I'm writing to you from the northernmost reaches of Tevat by the light of a stove. The expedition forces are stationed here while we restock. I once told you that the purpose of this expedition was related to a dangerous secret from days long past. I am still unable to disclose more than this, but suffice to say that you needn't worry about how our mission is progressing. In the past couple of months, we received an unexpected visitor. The Fatui Harbinger known as the captain. Uh, the captain? I am fully aware of the Fatui's outrageous actions in Mondstadt in recent history. Nevertheless, 
the captain was not hostile towards us on this occasion. Open parenthesis. I rather suspect that's because this time, Snezhnaya and we are in the same boat. Close parenthesis. The man hides everything under the mask he wears, so no one can know his past or his origins. However, one thing is for sure. He is as hard as iron for having the courage to challenge gods as an ordinary mortal. I don't doubt that he could even take out a ruin guard by stabbing it in its big, glowing eye with one of Klee's crayons. Open parenthesis, don't get any ideas. Close parenthesis. Our scouts have confirmed that the captain received orders to head for Natlon three days ago. We'll be able to sleep much better now that we don't need to worry about him anymore. I will admit that some of his actions have helped us, but even then, he owed us at least that much. This year's Vineleza Fest must be kicking off in Mondstadt any day now. What a great pity that this year, once again, we will be unable to spend the festival together. Everyone here is always thinking back fondly upon the fine wines of Mondstadt, as well as the happy times we have spent with each and every one of you. I hope that you and all the citizens of Mondstadt enjoy the festival to the fullest. Have a few drinks on our behalf. The Dawn Winery's limited edition Vine Laser Fest seasonal special will do nicely. May Lord Barbados bless Mondstadt, and may the wind carry our sentiments back to your side. Varka. P.S. If you're wondering who's tougher between me and the captain, well, I'm the Grand Master. There are ten captains in the Knights of Favonius, but only one Grand Master. Ah ha 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 ha. His left, not mine. The letter ends here. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. Thank you, Mika. Master Jean, um, I just noticed that there's something else written on the back of the last page. <clears throat> P.P.S. I ran out of paper, so I'll add this here. Lisa, the following is a message for you. Uh, oh, uh, this part seems to be from the Grand Master to Miss Lisa. Oh, for me? Uh, seeing that it's a special message, Lisa, we'll discuss this in private. Everyone, as the Grand Master mentioned in his letter, the Vine Lisa Fest is in just a few days. And how fortunate we are at this time to receive word that all is well with the expedition. Though they are unable to return to Mondstadt and spend the festival with us, the Vinlesa Fest will nonetheless be a major event that all of Mondstadt is looking forward to. I hope that everyone will guard your stations and perform your duties, both for our far-flung colleagues involved in the expedition, and also for the hard-working people of Mondstadt. And of course, during your time off, I hope you will be able to rest, relax, and enjoy this long-awaited festival. That brings our meeting to a close. Dismissed. Did Paimon hear that right? They ran into the Fatui's captain? Hmm... Who knows what that was about? But it must have been important. But eh... Uh, Fatui Shmatui! The real big deal here is the Vine Lisa Fest. Sounds like there'll be loads of free food and drink! Paima wants to hear more! Hey cuties, how about we go and chat with Jean? You didn't get a chance to say a proper hello with so many people here. Lisa, the Grandmaster's letter is just on the table. 
Traveler, Paimon, it's been a long time. Apologies, I didn't get the chance to talk with you during the meeting just now. If you don't have any plans in the immediate future, why not stay in Mondstadt for a while? We'll be celebrating the Vine Lesa Fest very soon. Don't be deceived. Jean may appear very composed, but she's been missing you both terribly recently. <sighs> Lisa... <laughs> I'll leave you to catch up. I'm going to read my letter. Yeah! Mondstadt's where our journey began, after all. We have a lot of fond memories here. Um... Master Jean, neither of us really knows anything about this Vine Lysa Fest. Could you tell us more about it? Yes, of course. The Vine Lysa Fest is an ancient Mondstadt festival just like Ludi Harpastum and Windbloom. In addition, it's the most important part of the fall. Each fall, the west wind blows in Mondstadt. Legend has it that the wonderful scent of Mondstadt's winemaking during the harvest season entices even the Animo Archon into attendance, being the great wine lover that he is. No matter where he is, he will transform into a soft breeze and return to his homeland. <sighs> yeah, that sounds like the Animo Archon, all right. For this reason, Mondstatters call the western wind the returning wind. The Vine Lesa Fest originally began as a celebration to welcome Lord Barbados on his return. In the past, every household would brew fresh wine around this time of year and keep it sealed at least until wind coming day during the following year's Vine Lesa Fest. Uncasking the sealed wine is a symbolic way of inviting the Animo Archon to share a drink. Legend holds that if the Animo Archon is satisfied with the taste of the wine, he will summon a gentle breeze to richly bless the people. Knowing him, it was probably blessing them with more good wine the next year. That's a good question. Huh. But there's really no way of knowing. These are very old stories. Many of the details have been lost to time. Yep, that'll happen. Some stories change completely as they get passed down. Hence why these days, Mondstatters will get into endless arguments over what kind of flower a wind bloom is. Hmm, all part of how cultural heritage is created. Indeed, but for the time being, at least, the tradition of paying tribute to the Animo Archon on Windcoming Day is still alive and well, and the Vine Lesa Fest remains a time for Mondstatters to share the joy of the harvest with one another as they partake of fine wines. This is a time of the year when many Mondstatters living away from Mondstadt return to their hometown, for those unable to return, Vine Lesa Fest is the period when they miss their family and friends most keenly. Oh, so that's why the Grandmaster wrote, May the wind carry our sentiments back to your side. For this year, we've joined forces with the Church of Favonius and the Adventurers Guild to host a celebration on the banks of Cider Lake, just outside of Springvale. There will also be a traditional wine market during the festival period. Wine market? Well, originally, it was simply a place where winemakers and farmers would come to trade in raw ingredients for winemaking. These days, it is a much grander affair. Not only will you find a range of choice wines, but seasonal fruit beverages and food items for everyone to enjoy too. A lot of people also sell secondhand goods and handicrafts at the market. The Knights of Favonius plan to use this as an opportunity to do some fundraising for needy children and elderly people in the city. Wow, sounds pretty cool! If you have the time, I encourage you to take a look around. I hope you'll find it a worthwhile experience. Um, now, Lisa, what was the Grand Master's message to you about? I was just about to bring that up. The Grand Master says he wants me to handle something for him. Something to do with Razor's past. Razor told us that he was raised by a pack of wolves in Wolvingdom. He never knew his parents. In his own words, the wolf pack is his lupico, which means family. Yes, that was as much as I knew as well. 
But in his letter, the Grand Master says that in the cabinet above the third bookshelf, to the right of the grandfather clock in Jean's office, there's a wooden box containing some items that Razor's parents left for him. He says it's time to give the box to Razor. Does this mean the Grand Master knew Razor's parents? It would seem so. The Grand Master didn't simply run into Razor one day in Wolvendom and teach him how to use a sword. No, the connection between them goes back much further. Wow! Well, come on! Let's go find Razor! He'll be pretty excited to find out something about his true parents! Hmm... Oh, cutie. Nothing escapes your eyes, does it? For the child who never met their biological parents, this kind of conversation is always a difficult one, even for the most well-adjusted. By contrast, Razor grew up in Wolvendom and has had very limited contact with human society. Who knows whether he's ready for this or not? I'm sure the Grand Master will have given due consideration to Razor's circumstances. Perhaps he felt that now would be the most appropriate time. Hmm, that's a good point. Okay, cuties, can I leave you to break the news to Razor? He thinks of me as his teacher, so he might not open up to me if he gets upset. But you are his trusted friends. I think it makes more sense for him to hear about this from you. Thank you, sweetie. Try to be as encouraging as you can. Someone his age needs all the love and support they can get. Hey, look! It's a hunting trap. Hmm. It looks like the ones that the hunters from Springvale use. Huh? What is it? Electro energy? Hmm. Paimon wonders if it could be Razor. But Paimon thought he was pretty good at avoiding the hunters. Well, anyway, let's follow the traces of Electro and see where they lead. Last trap has been set. Razor, thanks for coming with me all this way. It's okay. My legs are strong. Hmm? What is it, Razor? It smells familiar. Friend. From far away. hunting together? Yes, it's almost harvest season, and the boars are venturing into the towns and wineries looking for food. They're trampling crops and destroying the vineyards. Someone could get seriously hurt. The Knights of Favonius came to us asking for help, keeping the boars a safe distance away from the population. I and Uncle Browncat catch boars, protect everyone. Wow, Razor, this is a big step for you. Paimon remembers you used to hide away from the hunters. <laughs> you can say that again. Razor was the star of the show this time. He let the wolves know we'd be coming, so we were able to get through Wolvendome without anyone getting hurt. Helping everyone, helping Lupacall, makes me happy. <sighs> but much talking. Very tired now. But, um, actually, we came here today because we have some really important news. 
Oh, I don't know. Razor, do you mean you don't want to know about your real parents? I want to know, but don't want to know. Uh, so you do want to know, but at the same time you don't want to know? Ugh, sounds complicated. Traveler, come and take a look at the trap I just placed. Let's give Razor some space to process things. Uh, yes, I have some thoughts about this after seeing how Razor reacted. We've been hunting together a lot recently. The kid might not talk much, but still, I feel like I've come to understand him a little over the time we've spent together. Here's what I think. He definitely wants to find out about his parents. It's just that his fear of the unknown is overwhelming everything else he's feeling. I'm a father myself, so I know a thing or two about kids. You know, when Diana was little, if I got back late from a hunt one night, she'd be watching me like a hawk for days afterwards, as if she was worried that I might abandon her. Do you mean Razor's worried that he was abandoned by his own parents? Exactly. I think that's the heart of it. And if it turns out they did, well, I don't think there's anything we could say to console him. That's not my only concern, though. Razor is developing at his own pace. There are lots of issues that can't be solved all in one go, but he's making progress, one step at a time. But now this thing with his parents is added into the mix. It might push him to want to figure out once and for all where he comes from and where he's going. Seems like a similar take to Lisa's. Hmm. Maybe all mature adults think like this, huh? Wait, but then again, Master Jean had a different view. She said it's more about trusting other people and in your own instincts. Oh, what do you think? Gotcha. Well, knowing that he's got a friend like you to rely on makes me feel much better about this whole thing. to keep him waiting. Hey, Razor. So, what are your thoughts? Still thinking. My heart, it feels strange. Like being stabbed by a wolf hook. Varka? Hmm. Tall. Very strong. Likes to laugh. Yes, trust. He's very good to me. Give me a name. Teach me to fight. But now, busy with important work, I miss him. You know, Razor, Farka used up all the paper writing this letter, but he still made sure he found room on the back to add a note for Lisa. He specifically told her to give you the things that your parents left for you. That means that he thinks the items have a special meaning for you. But more importantly than that, whatever happens, the Traveler, Paimon, Lisa, and all your other friends will always be here for you. That's right. And old Uncle Brown Cat's here to support you as well. Okay. Thank you. I decide... I want to go with you. To see teacher. <laughs> That's the spirit, kiddo. Well, you folks better be heading off then. I'm just about finished here, so I'll be heading home very shortly myself. <sighs> I'd better try and get plenty of father-daughter time in before the uh, fine laser fest starts. <laughs> Bye, Draft. See you again next time. Lisa, we brought Razor. Hello, teacher. I'm here to see the box. Ah, oh, my little wolf cub's in a good mood. I'm assuming they've discussed the whole story with you already? Here, this is it. The wooden box. I haven't touched it, except for taking it out of the cabinet. When you're sure you're ready, you can open it yourself. Yes, I am sure. Oh, this is just...
just a pile of junk. Paimon thought there'd at least be a letter or something. Uh-oh. You don't think that, after all this time, Varka might be getting mixed up between different boxes? <laughs> there is a scent. A scent? What kind? A scent I remember from a long, long time ago. It's their scent. Human scent. Father and mother scent. Oh, incredible. You still remember scents from all the way back in your childhood. Wow. You have a really good sense of smell, Razor. Guess being wild by nature has its advantages. Oh, let's see what other leads we can find. Hmm, this woolen hand puppet looks kind of wonky. Guess it must be handmade, huh? Is this a part from a ruin guard? Wait, hey, look, this wine bottle is still half full. And there's a note stuck on it. Thousand, uh, thousand wind wine. Oh, so it's a bottle of thousand wind wine? Teacher. You know? Of course. Thousand Wind Wine was the first kind of wine that Mondstadters ever learned to make, or so they say. As to how it got its name, some say it's a reference to the numerous ingredients used to make it, while others say it's because every bottle tastes slightly different. I remember reading somewhere that there are all sorts of weird and wonderful ways of brewing it, and that it's very difficult to ensure it comes out tasting the same each time. This all makes it impractical to commercialize. Wine merchants are much more comfortable working with reliable, consistent tasting products. That's why you'll almost never see Thousand Win wine in the markets or taverns. Huh. In fact, it looks like your parents brewed this bottle themselves. That must mean there's something pretty important about it. <gasps> oh, Paimon has an idea! Razor, you got a good nose. Why don't you open it up and take a whiff? Maybe it'll tell you something. Okay. <laughs> huh. He seems really in the zone. And is that a smile? Find anything? Sweet. Cold. A little bitter. I like. Many things all mixed together. Ugh, but things in wine smell different. Even you can't tell what it is, Razor? I will try again. <sighs> <sighs> it's okay, Razor. Don't push yourself too hard. What do we do when we try something and it doesn't work? Try another way. That's right. You still remember what I taught you. Oh, it's almost the Vine Lisa Fest. Everyone who knows anything worth knowing about wine will be gathering in Mondstadt. Surely someone will know a thing or two about Thousand Wind Wine. Oh, great idea! Make sure you don't miss the opening ceremony, cutie. Everyone will be there. Razor, you should go too. It'll be a good opportunity to ask around. Okay. Ask many people. I will try. Don't worry. We'll be right there with you. We can be your go-betweens. You know, like you were with the wolves for draft. Okay. Then I will go back now. I need to tell Lupacall about human mother and human father. Great! See you at the opening ceremony! Thank you, everyone, for your patience. I am pleased to announce that this year's Vinlesa Fest has officially begun. We hope the residents of Mondstadt and visitors from all over will enjoy the magnificent wines and experience the joy of the harvest. When Wind Coming Day arrives, we will hold a grand toasting ceremony to welcome the Animo Archon Barbados back home. Let the wind lead! Let the wind lead! Razor, you're here already! Hmm, so many people. Come on, 
Let's sneak out of here. There's someone we gotta find. Find? Uh, who? Just some tone deaf bard. But he's also a know it all and loves nothing more than drinking, so he might actually be able to help. Traveler, Paimon, how do you do? <laughs> I had a feeling I'd run into you soon, during this most enchanting of festivals. Spoken like a true poet. Hmm, but reading between the lines here, if one bottle is tipsy and two is merry, just how many is enchanting exactly? <laughs> oh, don't say that. This festival has so much more to offer than just drinking. Anyway, hey, Razor. How have you been? All right. I have a question. Yeah, Razor has something he wants to ask you about. Know anything about Thousand Wind Wine? Ooh, now there's a name that takes me back. <laughs> Let me think. How long has it been since I last heard someone mention Thousand Wind Wine? Razor's parents left him a box with a half bottle of wine inside. And there's a label on it that says Thousand Wind Wine. We heard there's a lot of history behind this type of wine, and the brewing methods go way, way back. So we figured you'd be a good person to ask. It smells good, but don't know what's inside. I see, I see. So you want to know how Thousand Wind wine is made? Well, you came to the right person. I happen to know a little rhyme called, well, as it happens, Thousand Wind wine. I was going to save it for wind coming day, but far be it from me to deny an early serenade to a friend in need. How about it? Shall I recite it for you? A song. Not easy to understand, but still one to hear. Excellent answer. Then, uh, hear it you shall. Fill up the barrels and store them away. Then wait, wait for a windier day. Wax the bottles, seal them tight, for the south wind that soothes, for the north wind that bites. How does this fine wine taste to the tongue? As Mondstadt to the ear, like a sweet dream of freedom. And what are the fruits that went into the brew? An explorer's courage, a love tender and true. A defender's will, strong as yesteryear, Joining the thousand winds in a song of good cheer. Turning sour into sweet, bitter notes fade away. As we wait, wait for a windier day. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the applause. <laughs> uh, was the rhyme of help to you? Like wine. A little sweet, but now head spinning. Don't understand. Don't worry, it's not just you. That was supposed to be about winemaking, but it didn't give a single detail about the process. <laughs> well, maybe it's a little abstract and romanticized, but that's one of the defining features of Mondstadt poetry. Okay, so let's try to pin this down. What did the poem say the ingredients are? Hmm... Um... An explorer's courage, a love tender and true, a defender's will, and... The Thousand Winds? Song of Good Cheer? Nope! Paimon has absolutely no idea what any of these refer to. Look, Tone Deaf Bard, you clearly know what the whole thing means, so could you do us a favor and at least give us a hint? You misunderstand me. I'm not trying to make you work for it or anything, but the lyrics are what they are. If there's anything they left out, even I can't fill in the blanks. If you want to know the secret behind this sweet scent, you might have to start by rolling up your sleeves. Rolling up 
up our sleeves. You mean we need to go and make this wine for ourselves? And somehow that'll teach us everything we want to know? Uh, this better not be a prank! We've known each other for so long, and you still don't trust my intentions? Oh, oh the pain. Uh, I trust. I want to try. I want to make wine and find answers. If I know how to make wine, then I know what is in father and mother's wine. Right. I want to know about them. Well, if you say so, Razor, guess we'll have to take Tone Deaf Bard's word on this one. We'll give it a try, and as first-time winemakers, there's no shame if it turns out bad. Don't worry, really. Freedom is the key here. It's not as hard as you might think. As long as you add ingredients to the mix in a spirit of joy and sincerity, I promise you will reap the rewards you wish for. Hmm. I will tell Poem to teach her. Then I need to think alone. That's the spirit. So how about we meet again in two days? Let's say same place right here? Okay. I will remember. See you then. Time to go. Let's go and browse while we still have the chance. Wait! Honorary Knight! And Paimon, the best guide in Tevat. I humbly beg for your assistance. Whoa! Did Paimon hear that right? Is Paimon finally starting to make a name for herself? Oh, wait. Haven't we met? That's right. I am Bernhard, a member of the logistics company under Captain Hertha. Normally, I would hope to become better acquainted before asking for a favor like this, but time's running out, so I really have no choice. Please help me rescue the charity event. The charity event? Oh, right! Master Jean mentioned that. So, what's happened? Well, the Knights of Favonius wants to run a stall during the festival. The idea is for all profits from the sales to go to charity. Specifically, the funds will provide support to disadvantaged children and elderly citizens. We drew lots to decide whose job it would be, and as it happened... I was the lucky winner. I really didn't want to screw this up, so I asked all around for advice, but... My experience is in inventory and shipping. Now I'm supposed to run a whole shop, but it took me forever just to think of what to sell. I'm already completely out of my depth. And that is why I humbly beseech you to render your assistance. Yeah! Also, no need to be so formal. So, you said this is to help out the kids and old folks of Mondstadt, right? Sounds like a great cause! She's an honorary knight, and Paimon's a longtime friend of Avonius! We'll be more than happy to do our part! Oh, I can't thank you enough. Right, let me get down to brass tacks. Before we can open shop, we need to amass a supply of fair brew jellies. This is the basic currency that we will use when running the stall. The wine merchants in the area are in dire need of raw ingredients for winemaking. Sell them raw ingredients, and they will pay you generously in fair brew jellies. Also, there are some international customers looking to purchase beverages in bulk during the Vine Lace Fest period. They're on the market for an agent to handle their purchase orders. In the interest of establishing a long-term business relationship, these customers are usually willing to offer a generous price. And there's also room for negotiation with the wine merchants. The price difference is ours to keep as commission, and you can cash that amount in for fair brew jellies. So to sum up, our job is to sell ingredients to the wine merchants and place orders for the international customers, making sure to negotiate the price, right? Huh, 
Sounds much easier than Paimon imagined. R really Well, that's wonderful. I have one order here with me already. Uh, Mr. Shavirme from Sumeru wishes to purchase 50 crates of Fruits of the Festival. These beverages can be bought from the Angel's share stand. Uh, the shopkeeper's name is Georg. He's a very nice man, but he won't be pushed around. Please consider the price carefully and try to reach a good deal with Georg. I should carry on setting up the stall now. Once you've gathered enough fair brew jellies, come back here and we'll take it from there. You won't need to worry about supplies for the shop. I'm already in contact with the suppliers, and they'll send everything over once the funds are in place. All right, sounds good. We'll find the funds and you sort out the shop. This is an enormous help. Thank you both ever so much. Hi there, Georg. We're Shafirme's agents. He's asked us to order 50 crates of fruits of the festival for him. Oh? Did you say Shaverme? He's a regular customer of mine. Always orders around the same amount each time. But I digress. What price are you offering this year? Hmm, a little lower than I was hoping for, but he's a reliable customer. I think I can make it work. As usual, I will arrange for someone to deliver the goods directly to Shaverme's place of business. You won't have to worry about a thing. Just make sure you keep hold of this receipt. All right, let's keep bringing the funds in. We gotta work quickly if we want to gather all these fair brewed jellies in time. Bernard says we can approach this however we want, just as long as we raise all the funds we need. We get a commission for every order we help place for an international customer, so maybe it's not worth trying to sell loads of ingredients to the wine merchants. Still, just to make sure we've covered everything, let's take a look at the other wine merchants. Traveler! Paimon! You're here! Hey! It's Barbara! Thanks, and happy Vine Lisa Fest to you, too! This festival is one of the most popular ones in Mondstadt. I'm so happy I ran into you guys here. I hope you have a great time. Oh, also, I heard from Bernhard that you're collecting Fairbrew jellies. I'm just curious, are you helping out with the Knights of Favonia's charity event? We sure are! Everybody's gotta do their part, right? The stall isn't up and running yet. We're busy raising funds so they can open for business. There's sure to be a bunch of other problems to deal with once it's open, but whatever comes up, we'll deal with it. Wonderful! <laughs> They're lucky to have you. Now that you've joined the team, I just know it'll be a huge success. I helped out a small charity sale for the Knights once too. Although, my only contribution was standing out front and singing. Oh, and I also met the bard, Venti, there. He even persuaded me to perform an impromptu song with him. The music he plays is quite refined and elegant. At first, I didn't want to sing too loudly in case I ruined the style he was going for. But he sang a harmony to guide me in, and before long, we were sounding great. In the end, the audience loved it, and we sold a lot at the event. So Barbara's worked with the Tone Deaf Bard before? Yeah. Too bad we couldn't fit it into the schedule this year. The Church of Favonius wants to hold a sung poetry event somewhere with a nice view during the festival, which means I have to go to rehearsal. Sounds like we've each got our own important work to do. Let's give it our all! Oh, thank you both. Well, maybe I can't stay here and sing, but I still want to do a little something to contribute. I can... um... I can help promote your stall. Hmm. Should I make some big posters? 
Or maybe some flyers to hand out. I'll have to pick a memorable slogan, too. And maybe it'll seem more sincere if I sign them. Oh, then again, maybe telling people in person would be more effective. Wow! With Barbara helping out on the marketing side, this charity event will get loads more attention! It's fine, really. It won't take me too long. Oh, now I feel a little embarrassed. <laughs> Let me think about it a little more and talk to some other people about their marketing experience. Traveler, Paimon, I'll see you later. And, um, the Knights and the Church of Pavonius are really proud of you. Aw, thanks! We'll do our best! Paimon's even more motivated than ever now. We gotta make sure we do a really great job here! It's almost... Huh? Where the heck's Razor? Paimon thought he would've been here by now. Hmm... He had a pretty big day when we last saw him. Do you think he fell asleep when he got back and is still snoozing away now? Fair enough. You're right. Let's keep waiting. Well, since we've got some time on our hands, let's put our heads together and try to figure out that poem. Tone Deaf Bard mentioned some ingredients, but they all sounded super abstract. An explorer's courage, a love tender and true, a defender's will, and the thousand winds song of good cheer. Do you have any ideas? Yeesh, that's even more abstract! How do we go about looking for this wine's character? Where do we start? Huh? Are you saying that it has something to do with Mondstadt's institutions? Wow, that actually makes a surprising amount of sense. So the poem wasn't talking about any specific ingredients after all. More like the general gist. Now that you mention it, it just so happens that all the institutions you mentioned are organizers of the Von Laser Fest. Wait, this is way too big of a coincidence. That tone deaf bard, did he just make all this up on the spot? In that case, the last part about the thousand wind song of cheer must be code for the toasting ceremony. Oh, now we're cooking! We'll crack your riddle recipe yet, Tone Deaf Bard! When Razor gets here, let's visit all the places you mentioned and talk to some people we know there. We definitely should be able to find some more clues that way. Miss Honorary Knight, Paimon! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm late. That's alright. We were just chatting. The Traveler's pretty smart, so thanks to her, we're finally on to something! Hi. I was on my way, then I saw Klee. They let me out for a Vine Lisa Fest. Albedo is super busy helping Timaeus fix his recipe for an extra strong sobriety potion, so he doesn't have time to come play with me right now. I'm just playing by myself instead. But it's so cool! All the grown-ups in Mondstadt are out to celebrate the festival! Everyone's smiling and having loads of fun! I wanted to join in too, so I made a whole bunch of stuff so I can celebrate with everyone in my very own way. Very own way? Uh-oh, this does not bode well coming from Glee. And that's when I bumped into Razor! Razor was acting kind of different than usual, like he was thinking about something. So I asked him what happened. And then Razor said that he was looking for his mommy! <laughs> I did not say mommy. Oh, it's okay, silly. Mommies are important people, so finding your mommy is a super important job. That's why Klee's gonna come help. <sighs> Razor! Razor! Finally, I found you. Bennett? Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> look who's here. Hey, everyone. Here, this is for you. Uh, a small lampgrass? Yep, that's right. I tripped up on it this morning and took a little tumble. I did a full face plant, but somehow, this little thing came out completely unscathed. That's when I knew it was destined to go into your wine mix. Bennett, how did you manage to trip up on a small lampgrass? Huh, that's true. They do glow after all. No, no. I wasn't talking about the glowing. What I meant was, they're really big and easy to spot. So, I don't get how you didn't see it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was just running too fast and got careless, I guess. Okay, I guess maybe I won't tell them about the other face plants that came after that. Anyway, I've been all over the place trying to find Razor this morning. Everyone I asked told me I just missed him. Good thing I've caught up now. I can finally catch my breath. Thanks. How did you know? I need ingredients. Oh, that? Yeah, interesting story. This lady came to see Master Cyrus, asking for the Adventurer Guild support with the Vine Lace Fest. She said she was a librarian. Anyway, she mentioned your situation too, and asked if we could help. Whoa, Lisa is doing some real work for once? Oh, so that was Lisa? People say she's crazy intelligent, but just doesn't go out much. First time I've ever seen her. I thought long and hard about what ingredients to pick, and came up with a load of suggestions that I was going to discuss with you. But then I realized that small lampgrass was clearly the best. It shines a light to guide the way for explorers in the dark. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful thing? Oh, apologies for the trouble. Ah, don't give me that. I get how you must be feeling about all of this. Besides, you gotta help out your friends, right? If my family, uh, well, my dad's ever needed help one day, I know you'd be there for me too. Yes. Can I help too? Please, take me with you, please. I want to join in. Lee's in high spirits today. She seems more excited by this festival than anyone. Bennett, before now, you never talk about your family. Uh, <laughs> well, that's because I never met my parents. I was raised by some of the older adventurers in the guild, so we're not exactly a typical family. But if you do want to hear about them, I can tell you some of my dad's stories. Hmm. Okay, I'll start with the most awesome one. Oh, Bennett. You can be Mommy's kid, just like Clee. My mom is super nice. She'll take great care of you. Huh? Hmm. I really appreciate the thought, Clee. But I'm afraid I can't accept your offer. I already have my dads and all my friends. And let's not forget that I'm the leader of Benny's adventure team. You don't need to worry about me. Oh, okay. I got it. Um, then have this. A jumpy dumpy? Yeah, it's a lazy dopey jumpy dumpy that always dozes and never explodes. I hope you guys can be best friends. Are you sure? Yep. Jumpy dumpy will be happy to make a new friend too. I'm also happy for you. Yeah, maybe Clee will bring Bennett some good luck, and the adventure will go smoothly. And you might just find some treasures you'd never noticed before. Of course, it's also highly possible that Clee will be the only one who gets lucky. Still, on the flip side, Clee won't be getting into any trouble with Bennett there, and this way she'll still get to enjoy the Violaza Fest. Cool, don't worry about a thing. We'll look after each other. Yay! Adventure! Treasure! Vine Lisa Fest! Let's go! 
Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Razor needs looking after. Honorary Knight, Paimon, you'd better take care of Razor, okay? Make sure he finds his mommy. <laughs> Good luck. See you later, folks. Good mood. Oh, Paimon almost forgot the whole reason we came here. Razor, the Traveler and Paimon were just chatting about the ingredients Venti mentioned in his poem. We think that they're actually a description of the wine's characteristics. Plus, it seems like each of them means something special to one of the three big institutions in Mondstadt. So, if we talk to some people we know at each place, maybe we'll find what you're looking for. <sighs> What's wrong? Something on your mind? Do you want to talk about it? Yes. These days, I think a lot. I am not smart. Not like teacher. Not like traveler. But I still have to think. Everyone is ready to help, but some things I must do myself. I don't understand human father and mother, but I must find a way to understand. Maybe I can learn about other people's father and mother first, then think about my own father and mother. That's why I want to ask questions. That's great! Keep at it, and you'll definitely find the answer eventually. Never knew Bennett is... like me. When he talks about dads, his scent changes. Warm, like a bed of straw in the sun. Yeah! We should head back into the city. Let's find a friendly face at the Church of Favonius. Hmm... Now... Razor no best at the church. Excuse me? I couldn't help but overhear you're about to head back into the city. Is that right? I'm waiting on a fruit cart from the city. It should be here now, but I'm getting worried that something may have happened on the way. But I can't leave the festival to check up on it. Would you be able to do me a huge favor and keep an eye out for the cart on your way back? Um, well, if it's on the way... Okay, we go. I go too. Everyone helps me. Now I have chance to help everyone. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> this way. Oh, Paimon sees the cart, but what are these hilly trails doing here? Do they want some fresh fruit now too? To the rescue! Run with nature! Go! Time to go! their own good. But never mind that. Are you okay? Did they hurt you? Phew. I'm fine, thanks to you. You were just in time. Any later and all you found here is a pile of pulp. And I don't think there'd be much left of the fruit either. Got it. Well, thanks again. I'd better not delay this delivery any longer. So, goodbye and happy Vine Lace Fest. Thanks to you too, kiddo. <sighs> Enemy 
following. Enemy? <laughs> I think we're a little closer than that. On some level, you could even say that we're brother and sister. Rosaria! What the heck are you doing here? Uh, wait. Actually, turning up at random places is pretty normal for you. Okay, next question. What the heck do you mean, brother and sister? Varka taught you how to use that sword, I take it. Swift, but powerful. <laughs> I can spot that old-timer style anywhere. Uh, huh? I see you're not much of a talker. <laughs> well, there's something else you could learn from Varka. Never lost for words, even when he has nothing to say. It'd be good conversation practice for you. Just a shame we have no idea when I'll be back. It's okay. I will wait. Brother and sister? Varka? Oh, Paimon gets it. Varka is a father figure to both of them, so that makes them family. Just not by blood. Well, blood relations are overrated anyway, don't you think? Oh, I almost forgot. You have a brother. Cold, dark, grown-up. You also don't remember what your real mother and real father look like? Huh. So you're helping him dig up some info on his biological parents. And trying to help him build a concept of family along the way. Alright, you got me. I barely have any memories of my birth parents. The last time I saw them was long before I had any understanding of the world around me. But that seems pretty common. Even in this day and age, there are plenty of people in the world who can't stop thinking about their families, but will never get to see them. Anyway, if you're never gonna meet someone, it's not worth spending mental energy on them. It's more important to focus on the kind of person you want to become. No, you are wrong about this. Lupacol protect each other. Human family also important. Must care about them. Fine. So let's say you do find out who your parents were and they were saints. Or the opposite, they were complete monsters. What then? How would that affect your life choices? What would you do about it? Um... Whew, Rosaria's take is a little on the nose. That's a hard one for Razor to answer. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to make this any more difficult than it already is. But Razor's feeling lost and confused right now, and all the other Mondstatters we know are too sunny and bright to tell it like it really is. The sun nurtures many good things, but it can't do anything about the problems lurking in the shadows. Wow, Rosaria. All right, I'll leave it there. <laughs> Take this flower. It's icy cold, just like me. Barbara's busy preparing the sung poetry event for the Vine Lisa Fest. She couldn't get away, so I picked an ingredient out on behalf of the church. But can we really use a mist flower? Won't it freeze the entire barrel? No, not now that I've dealt with it. The bard did say to think freedom, didn't he? So go on, take it. It won't be a problem. Aww, Rosaria! You're more thoughtful than Paimon realized! <laughs> Thank you. Don't mention it. It's nothing. Varka's been a big help to me in the past, so just consider it returning a favor. Besides, if I'm your older sister, I might as well act like it.
Good luck finding your answers. Now you see her, now you don't. I'm on slowly getting used to her style. Oh, oh well, as love tender and true goes, that was pretty awkward, but still counts, right? Now that's left is the Knights of Avonius. <sighs> Razor, are you still thinking about what Rosaria said? Her words are like mist flower. They are cold and they sting. But cold also good for wounds, like wolf hook. I need to think about it. Maybe then I will understand. Okay. I will come with you. I think while we walk. So you see, you're the best person for this. Oh, -ho, just in time. Lisa and I were just talking about Razor's situation. Where were we? Ah, yes. The barrel. Huh? But uh, obviously the next part is supposed to be a defender's will. But what kind of ingredient is a barrel? Is your brain half asleep or something? It doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> oh, Paimon, don't worry. You'll get your ingredient. I've already tasked someone with sorting it out. The person is very conscientious and wants to properly research their contribution, so it may take some time, but hopefully it'll be worth the wait. As for the barrel, how else were you planning on mixing all the ingredients? Surely not in the giant cooking pot at Dada Upa Gorge. After much deliberation, I realized this was a job for the most sociable and savviest member in our ranks, the Cavalry Captain. So I asked him to take a trip to the Dawn Winery and somehow bring back a wine barrel. Uh, all right, spare me the flattery, Lisa. We're all friends here, and I know you're only trying to help your student. But I haven't been back there in a long time. This could be quite difficult to accomplish in just a single trip. Difficult? For you? Don't be silly. Negotiating is your biggest strength. Fine Lisa Fest is one of the most important festivals in Mondstadt, and you know how Diluc thinks better than anyone. Just drop a few little hints, like how this is the first festival Mondstadt has had in a long time. We're short on much-needed supplies for a multitude of reasons. Oh, who can help us? When he hears that, I guarantee you he'll offer to help out with finances and sourcing goods. Lisa's literally trying to extort Master Diluc! Hmm. I suppose. Alright, I'll head out right away. Well, he didn't take much persuading. <sighs> and Paimon was just about to thank Lisa for the things she's been doing for Razor behind the scenes. Oh, Paimon doesn't even know whose side to be on anymore. <sighs> Traveler and teacher did a lot for me. A lot of work. But me... I still can't answer questions. So useless. Dear me, what's gotten you so upset, my little wolf cub? We can't have you being so down in the dumps. Ah, I see. Hmm, cutie, how about you keep Kaya company while I stay here and help Razor process his feelings? As his teacher, I owe him some tutelage anyway. Come and collect him in a few days' time. The last ingredient should be ready by then as well. Splendid. I was just thinking about how nice it would be to have some company on my trip. I don't know what is right, but I trust teacher. I accept. Run along now. 
And don't forget to tell Diluc that the Knights of Favonia send our regards. Kaya, you're fond of a good drink, aren't you? My Lacefest must be right up your alley! Uh... Kaya? Oh, I'm sorry. My mind was elsewhere. What was your question? Ugh. Never mind. Nothing that important. Hi there, Master D. Luke. Oh. I was just wondering who'd be coming all the way out here during the Vine Laser Fest. So, it's you two. <sighs> and you, too. Brr, so cold. Almost enough to make me feel unwelcome here, Master D. Luke. Don't forget that this is my home, too. I'm fairly certain that taking a trip home during festival season is a universal custom, common to all the cultures of Tevat. Please get to the point. The point is one that you've already raised yourself. The Vinlesa Fest. To celebrate this long-awaited festival, the Acting Grand Master has been coordinating with both the Church and the Adventurers Guild to host a series of events. Unfortunately, given the financial situation of the Knights of Favonius, well, I'm sure you can imagine. And the Knights of Favonius's woes have what exactly to do with me? Hey, no need to be so cruel. Even I'm not going to take that. Everyone's just doing the best they can for Mondstadt. Now, I can't remember the last time I tasted Don Winery's Fest special. And I'm sure the Mondstadt populace would echo this sentiment. Are you going to deny others the opportunity to drink to their heart's content just because you don't like to drink yourself? Check it out! Kaya's not so subtly asking for freebies! He's actually doing it! Anyway, speaking of the knights, everyone dearly hopes that you'll rejoin our ranks again one day. Then we'll be one big happy family again. If we were able to enjoy the sterling reputation of Master Diluc, my, I'm sure people would be queuing for our charity booth all the way to Falcon Coast. <sighs> Give that silver tongue of yours a rest. You might need it to maintain public order at the festival. Duly noted on the financial issues you raised. I'll have Elzer follow up with Hertha in more detail. And I just so happen to have a batch of wine that I can offer as a token of appreciation to everyone that has been working so hard for the festival. Shall I address it to you personally? That would be an absurd request, even for me. The words, with compliments from the Dawn Winery, ought never be preceded by, to the cavalry captain. Is that not the unwritten rule? You're better informed than I thought. In that case, I will leave this with Adeline and keep everything anonymous. I really can't thank you enough. Master Diluc is so generous! That's all Paimon needs to get that warm, fuzzy feeling. <sighs> Which is just as well since you won't be allowed to drink a drop. Huh. Are you two here regarding the Vine Lacer Fest too? Poor Razor. He grew up so fast, and he's still looking for his father. Master Diluc, we really ought to lend him a hand. How come Klee said he's looking for his mom, but Kaya says he's looking for his dad? It might make more sense to them, but it's gonna get confusing for everyone else. It's okay. I understand. We have a spare barrel in the winery. It's a little old. But it's been specially treated for durability. You could leave it next to a flaming flower all day and there wouldn't be a scratch. I think that one should satisfy your needs. Sounds great! We'll take it! When can we come fetch it? No need. I'll have someone deliver it to the festival market. Just collect it from the Angel's share stand. Aww, you always make things so nice and easy for us, Master D. Luke. <laughs> Thanks a lot! Razor will really appreciate it. You're more than welcome. Helping each other is what friends do. Wonderful. Always eager to help, and never forgets to return a favor. That's the Master D. Luke I know. Oh, it's nearly dinner time. Uh, would you care to stay for a meal? How time flies. 
I'll be on my way then. <laughs> How did you put it? Ah, oh, yes. Taking a trip home during festival season is a universal custom, common to all the cultures of Tevat. Now that even Master Diluc has made an offer, are you quite sure you won't stay for a meal after coming all this way, Master Kaya? I couldn't possibly, Adeland. I wouldn't want to trouble you. Oh, don't say that. How often do I get a chance to indulge my dear Master Kaya, hmm? Tea for the cavalry captain when you visit in an official capacity doesn't count. I only get to spoil you if you let me cook for you. Oh, uh... Well then, what happened to your swagger? Lost for words? <laughs> D. Luke, you... Surely you wouldn't dream of disappointing Adeland. All right, then. I'll take you up on the offer. Adeland, one more set of cutlery, please, if you'd be so kind. Oh, Paimon's so full. Adeland's cooking is amazing. Everything looked and tasted so beautiful. Glad you liked it. You're welcome to join again anytime. Oh? Then I may have to tag along on the Traveler's Adventures more often in the future. Ugh, Kai is back to his usual ways. All right, now that our task is complete and our bellies are full, it's time for me to get back to work. Take care, Master Kaya. Have a safe trip back. We should get going as well. Lisa's taking care of Razor, but the Vileys of Fest can't do without us. See you next time, Master D. Luke. Indeed. Goodbye. Hmm. Paimon wonders how Razor's class has been going. Uh, Sucrose, wait! Uh, honorary Knight! Paimon, please stop her! Whoa! You scared Paimon! What's gotten the two of you so worked up? Sucrose and I agreed to present the wine ingredient to you together. But when she heard that Razor will be showing up, she insisted that she won't spend a moment longer here than she has to. I... I'm not good at dealing with strangers. Anyway, as long as the ingredient gets into the right hands, that's all that matters. Oh, that won't do. We worked on this together, and we should present it together. I can't take credit for what you did. It's not about the credit. Wait, so does this mean the Knights of Avonius's ingredient is a product of bioalchemy? Yes, it's a quadruple sweetness sunsetia. Quadruple sweetness? But aren't regular ones sweet enough as it is? Also, why a sunsetia? Okay, um, let me give you the full story. I love the scent of wine, and after reading up on the art of winemaking, I have grasped some of the key principles. In short, whatever ingredients you use, it's essential to include something sweet. In an attempt to select the most suitable ingredient, I gathered samples of all the sweet plants and fruits I could find in the Mondstadt area. Then, I tried them all in turn and took detailed notes. I also factored in the differences between the same ingredient grown in different locations, for instance, sweet flowers from Springvale are a little sweeter than those at Cape Oath. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. It was no problem at all. Just my duty as a maid of Favonius. The chance to source the Defender's will on behalf of the Knights of Favonius is a huge honor for me. Noelle, your eyes are sparkling. But Paimon thinks it could be because of Lisa's brainwashing. Um, anyway, I, I was worried that my evaluation would be too subjective if only I were involved. Thankfully, I ran into Sucrose the other day on her way out of the lab. Oh no! What is it, Sucrose? I just remembered why I left the lab that day. I was supposed to go and fetch some lab equipment we imported recently. Oh. Uh-oh. That 
look on your face seems to say you forgot all about it and have been in the lab this whole time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. <sighs> Don't worry about it. It's my fault, really. I'll go and see Marjorie about the equipment shortly. Carry on, Noelle. Oh, okay. Anyway, Sucrose is a true professional when it comes to this kind of research. I showed her my list, and she made some extremely valuable suggestions. Please, you don't need to go out of your way to compliment me. Noelle filled me in on the background of the whole situation. I was moved to see how seriously she took this task, even though she'd never even met Razor before. However, none of the potential ingredients she had identified were perfect candidates, in my opinion. What we needed was a fruit high in sugar and easily fermentable. After a final look at Noelle's list, I picked this Ansetia sample from near Cider Lake as a basis, with a view to improving it. Using bioalchemical techniques, we were able to amplify the sweetness, then conduct a few tests to compare the results against the benchmarks. Watching Sucrose work on an experiment when she's in the zone blew me away. Such focus and determination. I already said don't compliment me. Anyway, the result of our research is the Epsilon series Tetrasweet Sensetia, variation 63. And it's finally ready. The sweetness has been verified through rigorous testing, and the size and color are both optimal, too. Noel shortened the name to Quadruple Sweetness Sensetia. Unfortunately, it can't be produced on a very large scale under the current conditions. But as long as we have enough for Razor. Traveler, there's something else I'd like to share with you. Growing up, I was lucky. I was never the best at dealing with other people, but... My parents never placed any expectations on me. They never said to me, you need to be more sociable, or anything like that. They just said I should do what I enjoy. So, I'm well aware that I'm one of the lucky ones. I haven't lived Razor's life, and I can't pretend to imagine what it must have been like. So, I don't know how much it will mean coming from me, but I truly hope he can find happiness and spend his life doing what he loves. Oh, Sucrose. Sorry, I am late again. Teacher forgot about the time. I kept talking and talking. That's all right, we were just chatting. Whoa, deja vu. Paimon said the exact same thing two days ago. Uh, wait a sec. Where did Sucrose go? Wow, she disappeared the moment he opened the door. Hello, I'm Noelle, maid of the Knights of Favonius. Hi. Here's our ingredient for you. Oh, but I can't take full credit for it. I had help from an alchemist, but right now... She, um... Right, yes. It's a shame she couldn't be here to present it to you in person. <sighs> Smells like... Potion, nectar, and animal crystal fly, right? Wow, nothing gets past your nose, does it? This Sunsetia is sweeter than ones I have smelled before. Klee said alchemy is amazing. It can make things better. That's right. I hope that this sweet fruit will help you brew the sweetest wine. Thank you all. When she has time, I want to thank her also. Leave that to me. I'll figure out a way to persuade her to, uh, to not work so hard all the time so that I can introduce you to each other. <laughs> okay, I will wait. All right, now that we have all the ingredients, we can finally start making the wine. For that, we'll need a barrel. Which, if Paimon remembers correctly, is waiting for us at the Angel Share Stand. Bye, Noel. We're gonna head off now. Good luck with everything. See you next time. Honorary Knight Razor over here. Look who it is. Wow, it's Diana. Paimon was sure we'd 
run into you at the cat's tail stand sometime, but so far, we haven't seen you all festival. Ooh, traitors. Uh, um, what? Ah, I'm so mad! <sighs> Pre told me the whole story. So, this bright idea was the brainchild of you two? Hmm, how could you? Razor is Daddy's friend, and he was a good influence, right up until you got him interested in wine. <sighs> Razor, you better promise me that you won't turn into one of those old booze hounds that drinks themselves silly slums over the bar and bursts into tears. I, uh, I don't understand. Sounds like there's been some crossed wires here. Clee, what exactly did you say to Diona? Um, I told her that Razor is looking for his mommy with the honorary knight's help, and you both seemed really sad and said you needed some wine so maybe Diona could help. But before I finished, Diona said, Clee, say no more. I'm getting involved in this if it's the last thing I do. And then we came here. Uh... Uh, okay. Hyman doesn't even know where to start. Um, Diona, it sounds like Klee left out a few important details in the story. Let us set the record straight. So you're saying... Razor wants to make the same wine that his mother and father once made? So he can learn more about them? Hmm. You better not be making this up to try to pull the wool over my eyes. Sorry, Diona. It was all Clee's fault for not explaining it properly. So, are you still mad? Or can you help Razor make the wine? I caught a bunch of fish for us to eat. Um, and you can pet Dodoko, too, if you want. I... I wasn't that angry. We're just trying to help. I understand. I just don't want Razor being led astray, that's all. That's why I may have raised my voice a little bit just now. Mm. Well, since none of you plan on drinking it, then I suppose I can help you just this once, despite my reservations. But I need you to know that I'm a mixer, not a brewer. So I'm used to working with the finished product. If you really want me to start with a bunch of raw ingredients, eh, that's fine. But I can't make any promises about how it'll turn out. Yay! Diona is the best! <laughs> hm, bunch of flatterers. Now watch this. All done! That was quick! Now we just need to find a place to store it. We wait, wait for a windier day. Hmm. Does that mean we need to put it somewhere exposed to the wind? Maybe wind rise? Very windy. Yep. If you say the word windy, that's the first place on every monster's mind. Cool! I want to come, too. I have to keep an eye on my foolish father, so I won't be joining you. Klee, come and play again some other time. I will, I promise. Oh, what a curious coincidence meeting you here. Don't get fired. What are you doing here? Well, I awoke to the most magnificent aroma in the air. After following the sweet scent of fresh fruit to its source, this is where I ended up. Yeah! The fruit are super fresh and super duper sweet! I can smell it as well! <laughs> yes! Oh, uh, I remembered something important. Something that you have to do before sealing the barrel and burying it in the ground. What? We missed something? Razor. Do you still remember the scent of that half-bottle of Thousand Wind wine? 
I believe there was a hint of bitterness in there. Yes, there was. <laughs> and with very good reason, too. The source? This! Dandelion seeds? You're familiar with dandelion wine, right? Well, the people of Mondstadt believe that the wind can bring back the soul and also preserve memories. Dandelion seeds are like living gemstones formed from the first wisps of wind in the year. People add them to the mix at the last second as a way of capturing the wind in the very moment that the barrel is sealed. The memory of that moment is then stored in the wine for all time. So, Thousand Wind Wine is the original dandelion wine. Wow! That's so cool! So now our story will be made into wine, too! As for why it always has a different scent, well, that's because people have the freedom to include whatever ingredients they want. <laughs> hmm. What is it, Razor? What you thinking about? In Mother and Father's wine, I can smell dandelion seeds, but I don't know what else. In my wine, there is a lot of friendship. I still don't understand my mother and father, but I still have you and everyone else. Everyone has done so much for me. Farka, Teacher, Clee, Bennett, Uncle Brown Cat, Cold Lady, Grown Up with Fake Smile. Gray Tough Girl, Person That Smells Like Animal Crystal Fly, Uncle Brown Cat's Daughter. Green Bard, Paimon, and Traveler. I remember everyone. Making wine is hard work. Making this wine needed everyone working together. Hard work with friends? Not so hard after all. I'm... I'm so happy. Thank you. Friends are also Lupical. Whether I'm human or I'm wolf, it doesn't matter. From now on, all of us are together. When I grow up, we will come back here and we will open this wine together. <laughs> what a magnificent monologue. Even as a bard, I don't feel like there's anything else to add. All that remains now is to bury the barrel and wait, wait for the fruit to ferment. We're finally done! Paimon feels like a celebration is in order! Um, if Paimon remembers correctly, tomorrow should be wind coming day, right? Wow! The animal god is coming home! <laughs> <laughs> ah, that reminds me. I haven't memorized the song for the toasting ceremony yet. <laughs> I'd better get back. Friends, I shall see you all tomorrow. Get a good night's sleep tonight. Wait for the whisper of the gentle breeze to rouse you tomorrow morning. Then come and enjoy a performance by the greatest bard to ever grace the streets of Mondstadt. Wind's coming day is finally here! Let's get a move on or we'll miss the toasting ceremony! Wow. So many people have shown up to welcome the Animal Archon! Uh, huh? Why is everyone crowded around the Angel Share stand? Tradition holds that the finest wine of the Vinelesa Fest only goes on sale after the Animal Archon has tasted it at the toasting ceremony. Everyone's waiting in line for the big moment. Ugh. So welcoming the Animal Archon back is just a means to an end for them, huh? What about you, Lisa? Are you here for Razor? Yes, I was feeling a little concerned about him, but I just spoke with him, and he tells me that the winemaking went very smoothly. Ah, <sighs> such a relief. A glass of the festival's finest will go down smoothly now, too. Wow, you too, huh? <laughs> Razor and the others are over there. You should go say hi. Hey, hey! There you are! Whoa! What's with all these bottles? Selling your own homebrew now? 
<laughs> These are for Razor, from us. Mommy said that everyone's welcoming the animal god today, and we need to give him some wine. If the animal god likes the wine, he'll turn into the wind and bless everyone. We want the animal god to be happy, so he helps Razor. <laughs> oh, honorary knight! Look what Albedo let me borrow. This bottle is from my dad. Luckily, I managed not to break it on the way here. <laughs> uh, it's just for show, though. I have to give it back to them afterwards. Mommy said that the animal god can drink a lot of wine. She said if he wanted to, he could drink the whole of Cider Lake in one big gulp. So, do you think we'd have enough between these and the wine raiser's parents left behind? Ah, Green Bard. Ah. Uh -uh. Everyone, I am greatly honored to be able to be here today. I have been invited by Acting Grandmaster Jean of the Knights of Avonius to perform a piece for everyone. Thousand Wind Wine. It is some of the finest verse I know. I dedicate it to the wind and to everyone here with us today. Fill up the barrels and store them away Then wait, wait for a windier day Wax the bottles, seal them tight For the south wind that soothes, for the north wind that bites How does this fine wine taste to the tongue As Mondstadt to the ear like a sweet dream of freedom And what are the fruits that went into the brew An explorer's courage, a love tender and true a defender's will, strong as yesteryear Joining the thousand winds in a song of good cheer Turning sour into sweet, bitter notes fade away As we wait, wait for a windier day Pray tell, what treasure does this barrel hold? Tis wheat's greatest triumph, the true liquid gold. As it flows from the keg, what sound drifts by? Wind chimes in the boundless immemorial sky. We raise up our glasses and voices in song as we wait. Wait for the wind to sing along. Where do we turn once the thousand winds take flight? To the tales of the lyre, to the sweet dream of tonight. Dear friends, let us now open the wines. To the Animal Archon! To the Animal Archon. Um... There's no wind. Don't feel sad, Clee. But why didn't he come? If the animal god didn't come home, is it because he doesn't like the wine we brought for him? Of course not. You know, Clee, the wind isn't the only form that the animal archon can turn into. He can turn into anything. So today, he must have come back looking like something else. Huh? Really? Maybe he turned into a Jumpy Dumpty. Sure, Jumpy Dumpty it is. Hope you're listening, Animal Archon. <laughs> Racer, did the Animal Archon bring you a blessing? Yes. I talked a lot with you all, and I learned a lot. Now, I am not afraid. I think that is a blessing. Don't forget to save me a glass of your wine once it's finished fermenting. Yes, we share together and we remember together. Yay! <laughs> but now I'm getting thirsty. We've all done a lot of talking. Let's go get something to drink, shall we? I heard that the Angel Share is selling a new drink called Fruits of the Festival. Everyone's saying it's delicious. <gasps> I want some! I want some! Okay, everyone. Let's go. Listen. 
Take this, crush it, and place it on the fracture. Listen, Missy. Promise me you'll live on. This is where you must stay. You are our only hope. Forgive me, Kaya. Very good. That's my boy. I will always be proud of you. <sighs> After all the time we spent on it, the wine still isn't ready. <laughs> May as well leave it for our son. Razor. What do you think of that name? Oh, an adventurer's name. Yes. I like it. Razor! Razor! Come on! <laughs> hmm. <laughs>